It starts with this A person that you miss Mind draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have a doozy of an evening prepared for you. Absolutely beautiful matches in the South American region for the Dream League qualifiers. My name is DK Truman and Bowie. What match do we have first on the menu? Just probably one of the best matches of these entire qualifiers. Heroic versus Infinity. I am so hyped about this. You know, Heroic, they are the hope of SA for many. A team that you know they qualified to the other Dream League actually had 
very decent show, right? They were really close from going to the second groups, which for SA is what a really good showing even means because we've been, you know, we had such a good last year, this year, uh, or I guess this season has been a bit more shaky. Hopefully, you know, we're, we're going to see whatever team that actually qualifies looking really good. Oh, yeah. Uh, without a doubt, I think SA, you know, obviously when they lost a couple of those teams, um, well, all of them, <laughs> Uh, the entire <laughs> scene got swapped around and they're trying to figure out which combination works and currently the one that has been the most successful has been heroic uh obviously very solid core they've got you know, belgian off laner to, to mix it up a little bit but they are taking on a team that had to go through the second open qualifier but it's definitely not a team that you just scoff at i mean it is it's a parker team it's infinity I just always love watching Parker games. Oh, for sure. And I mean, even when you talk about Infinity, I think they they played this main card, whatever tournament. I think they took... Was it them that took downs? Or was it Starbex that took downs? Uh, let me double check here. Oh, Might have yeah, been the so, so Beast Coast, Infinity 2-0 Beast Coast... Oh yeah, a Starbucks beat Nouns, and then yeah. uh, Starbucks played Infinity. Infinity took the whole tournament at the end of the day, and you know there were some pretty big names there. So I do feel like even though Infinity, uh, you know they do have Parker, they actually have like a, a really stacked roster. I think the least popular player or the least famous one is Demon as their position four, but they, they have a stacked team. Uh, I would assume. I still feel like Heroic are the favorites, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Infinity at least take one game of this series. Oh yeah, without a doubt, there, there's huge upset potential uh, in yeah. the South America region. I think almost all of these teams can beat the other uh, on a good day. So yeah, I don't... I, Heroic has been looking the strongest, but it's not saying that they've been the only one that's been looking insanely good. The other teams have also been knocking at the gates the entire time. You've got the Brazilian roster now coming in with the Midas Club uh, team that has been creeping up. Looking forward to seeing what they can do. Hopefully we get lucky and we get to see them in the third series. Um, but yeah, uh, in general, uh, hopefully this will be another bit of a resurgence for the squad. Because they need to get some good uh, points for Dream League uh, and uh, possibly Riyad Masters. I think that's the main goal that everyone is currently uh, trying to uh, get towards. And obviously, you know, somewhere there's also a TI, which nobody really knows what exactly the qualifications are for it. So you probably just need to look good in the other tournaments. So uh, yeah, multiple goals to be achieved. Just play as many tournaments as you can, as many qualifiers as possible. I think that's the goal. And let's not forget, although underwhelming, there was a patch yesterday with a couple of changes, right? Yeah, a couple of changes. One of the best one, for obvious reasons, is the uh, change up in Revenant's Bruce that it does not oh, yeah. crit anymore. Thank the Lord, PA is not as insane as it was. <laughs> Still pretty good, yeah. but not as, uh, like, that was just busted. It's crazy how Floyd got nerfed for the seventh patch in a row. Still gonna uh, get picked. Yeah, still gonna get picked. But this hero has been, uh, you know, getting ruthless nerfs. And there's a lot of heroes that I think either didn't get touched and are honestly pretty good. And some heroes that did get, like, their third or fourth buffs that are looking promising. I think one of them is Drow Ranger. I think this hero has, to me, has been kind of a pretty decent hero that no one really touches. And once again, gets a couple of buffs. Uh, Bloodseeker, I think, also got a really decent one with Thirst and the changes. Because now Sanjin Yasha works alongside Thirst. So that healing can be... Like, you get so much healing sometimes, depending on the heroes that you kill. Um, I guess besides that, there's no, like, real big change, right? Maelstrom heroes are a bit worse. Uh, Battle Fury didn't really get changed. A little bit of a uh, buff to Scotty. Some changes to Divine Rapier. But in general, nothing like huge. I guess a slight nerf to Black King Bar. If that, <laughs> if it wasn't nerfed enough, they just want to make yeah, sure it's as garbage as possible. Yeah, I think it's yeah, still I mean, too, too, too good. It's, uh, it, 
it just does too much. In some team fights, the only way that you can win a fight is BKB, and that exactly shows you how strong the item is. But yeah, uh, the patch also did include something new, and that is the slight changes to the banning of the heroes, oh, which, uh, what are your initial thoughts on those changes? Well, it, it is a Dota Plus only thing, right? Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that, that part I'm a bit skeptical about, but at the same time, I guess I like it in the sense that since it's a test type thing, uh, you're able to get like a decent amount of data points without really like having everyone been having access to it. I, I think it, it has a lot of promising uh, features, but it can't help but feel like it could increase queue times for people. Hopefully, I think uh, there was a lot of people theorizing about it, like whether someone, the person that cancels the queue, if the other nine players are still going to be in the same queue, uh, or whether like it, it kind of restarts, right? Because let's say it's, it's like the most toxic game possible. In a way, it's always going to be not accepted, right? Like, because I yeah. guess there, there's a higher likelihood that no one's going to take them. So, even though that could happen, I also feel like uh, Valve maybe thought about it. And, and and if it is that way, the queue times are probably going to go up. Which, if you live in Europe, you probably don't care about it. You know, the queue times are so good there. I have a friend that lives in uh, Fortaleza, Brazil, so he can queue Europe and he's like 8k and the queue times are two minutes and and it feels like paradise well yeah it is paradise well i'm only 6k but it is paradise queue times are uh pretty fast i think they have yeah. i did have a match earlier today that was a slightly longer queue but i did play a couple of games with this new patch uh one thing that surprised me i think they already fixed it but oh. the first couple of games I played, because uh, normally you had the ban phase first and then the pick phase. But now they had, like, the pick phase immediately. Some people still accidentally tried to ban and then they accidentally pick a hero. Um, oh. <laughs> that, first of all, happened a couple of times. But also, uh, at the beginning, the first pick phase was only, like, five seconds long. Because, like, they... they Something was wrong with the timer. So you started, I tabbed back in into the game and I was like, okay, which heroes have been banned? Dick, dick, dick. Wait, what? <laughs> My money keeps <laughs> dropping. Why is this happening? And yeah, that luckily enough, that was already very quickly fixed. It was a little bit uh, annoying. It's also, I don't know. I get to play against too many pudges right now. Uh, the, I, I prefer, I think, the 50-50 ban, unless, of course, a lot of people have, like, Pudge in the list of heroes that they want to have banned. But, yeah, I believe, like, Meepo players and Arcborden players are now going to be able to play this uh, this game again. And then, like, the other two are maybe where people get a little bit more, uh, it gets a bit more uh, v variable, right? Which heroes you're going to pick. I feel like Meepo Arcborden is just a, a given. Yeah, like, I no, have No Meepo matter the bracket... Yeah, I also have it. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice. Let, let me double check mine. So I have Lone Druid, Meepo Arc Warden. I didn't choose my fourth one yet. I, I was thinking about it. I, I have sure. Meepo, Arc Warden, Slark, and Ricky. Oh, uh, Ricky. Yeah, Slark I am a Ricky is just player. a pain because I love playing Winter Wyvern and I can't play Winter Wyvern when the enemy is Slark because it just <laughs> sucks. Uh, and Ricky is. Same, I'm just a support player and I don't want to spend 3 million gold in sentries to place all over the map and dust and stuff and it just makes my game not fun. Okay, yeah, I, mean, I think that's fair. Yeah, looking at the other heroes, maybe... I think a lot of the other toxic heroes I play, so that's why I'm not sure <laughs> which one I want to choose. You know, I play OD, I play Viper, I play Husker. Uh, no one plays Tinker, so it doesn't really make sense to ban it. Um, yeah, what do you even... I guess Lycan. Lycan is the choice, actually. How Those many Lycan... Lycans Murphs? Dude, I it, actually it have pops seen up a from couple time of... to time. I, I've played against a couple of Lycans this last week. I think yeah. I've played with one and against two, probably. They are pretty obnoxious. They, they're just yeah, it's, it's so the good. They're so good. Yeah. And you can't do... It's... Well, normally I play Winter Wyvern, so, you know, there's a like and I throw Curse and they die. So that's the only big plus that I normally have. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but it feels like a lot of the times the Lycan is like by himself chasing you, so you... At best, you, you just ult the Lycan and hope that the creeps do enough damage. But it's hard to get the Lycan and other heroes like nearby, I feel like. He, he's always kind of playing. Like, yeah, he's chasing you while you're miles yeah. away from the fight and you're like, Why are you after me? Yep. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, so... We, of course, have Infinity versus Heroic. Obviously, we've been uh, talking for a little bit uh, on other subjects, but it is definitely going to be uh, a tough match, I think, for the side of Infinity. I don't think it's going to be necessarily easy for Heroic either. Uh, you are playing against Barker, and that's the scariest thing in the region. But I just saw, like, stats on the odds. They were... You know, just to see where everyone thinks that they're standing. I think mm -hmm. those odds are so skewed. Skewed. It's like one point one against six point six. Really? Yeah. That's, that's no way. No way. I would say like one two three is when I think it would be fair. I think that that's yeah. Decent -ish. I th I think six point six is like doing a six point six against Parker. Really? I mean, he is a he's a high variance player, right? He has yeah. games he looks like the best carry in the world. He has games where he is just like, "What? What are you? <laughs> what type? What did you eat this morning? Because uh, exactly. maybe you should eat, because uh, you're just playing totally uh, out of your mind." But yeah, we we do have a draft, and I do feel like Fire Infinity, even though. I think they are the underdogs. They've been playing more tournaments, right? I think the last tournament Heroic played was 21 days ago, maybe even more. They traveled a lot as well. So I feel like Heroic, they, they've been moving a lot, not necessarily as sharp. I do know that they were boot camping, but uh, sometimes I feel like playing tournaments might be even better than boot camping, depending on the level that uh, you're playing against. I'm also, I, I do know for a fact that Infinity uh, scrims European teams. So, I do feel like this this has potential to be in a very close game. I just feel like the support duo to me is the biggest Five difference. Like, remaining. I wouldn't say core-wise, Infinity is that far from Heroic, but I think strategically-wise and, and support-wise, there, there's definitely... I, I feel like that's where the biggest difference lies. Yeah, Infinity, of course, they have uh, Dark Demon and Yadomi. Yadomi is pretty much the... Uh, I mean, he's the, the wanderer of South America. He, he pops up in whatever team uh, every once in a while. I think Dark Demon is actually a very good player. Uh, he was really solid on Balrogs. Uh, his best hero was the Earth Spirit, but that one's dead. So that definitely does negate his patch significantly. But yeah, on the other side, you've got KJ and Schofield. I definitely have to agree with that's a little bit of a step up. I think the rest three cores, if you like line up core v core, they they're pretty close. I do think uh, analog might be have a li little bit of an advantage over PP, but Parker and K1 like they they're always on the top of the South American region. Davai Lama and Oscar. I think actually Davai Lama has been very impressive for me. Uh, he's Five seconds remaining. Just jumped in skill recently that uh, I did not expect him to go that fast. Yeah, he's definitely been grinding a lot. Uh, he he and Mangusu, which is the assistant coach for Heroic, have been they, they played together uh, for the D2 Hustlers uh, lineup for about a year, Radiant and they you know they've been grinding for a long time, and that's what I mean. Like uh, Liquipita doesn't even have a coach section here for infinity whereas heroic they have two coaches right <laughs> so i feel like the amount of research the amount of preparation that heroic can put out is definitely a bit uh, better but you know i think upsets happen all the time in south america like we were Five casting na yesterday and it's crazy like when you look at sa it feels like everyone is at the same level even if the highest really level in sa could be slightly lower than na Whereas on NA, there's such a big discrepancy that you can pretty much guess, like, almost all of the results. Yeah, sure, now it's got too old by Apex, but besides that, pretty much every other result is, you know, kind of easy to guess. I I feel like I say, especially as we move along, it's going to be, it's going to get trickier. Yeah, I say is, uh, 
is a very interesting one in that regard. Uh, Five seconds remaining. Ah, Nouns is going to be playing against Apex Genesis in the lower bracket final, so probably going to be a shop, shop five versus Nouns uh, rematch. Yeah, that one is kind of like guaranteed, but yeah. it, as you mentioned in SA, that's not the case. In this game, they could easily Hero could easily lose if they win this. They could still lose against the next team, and it keeps on going further and further. I mean, we haven't even seen Midas Club at their top either. Yeah, I feel like Midas Club has a big uh, variance as well. I feel like they can look really good. Uh, I was casting them on the RES tournament, and they they got I mean, they look place. solid. Yeah, they got second place. They lost to... Was it Akatsuki? Uh, they lost to uh, Invaders. Ten True. And Invaders were... like They, they changed name mid-tournament. I think they were... Are they? Why uh, are was... they not in disqualifiers? They, they just didn't qualify? Um, looking at it... I, it's hard to... Because they have a loan in Invaders and a dark... They had like a substitute where they put Parker yeah. in. And they had a substitute where they put... Dark Mago in. I don't think that's even like a real team. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They're not here. Like uh, Stinger, Michael, Sacred, right? Is we saw four. a lot get smacked in NA yesterday. So <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, Starbucks. For... Starbucks is that team. Remaining. Oh, MNC, is Dark Mago, for Sacred, two regions, Michel. Then? What? He's alone playing. No, no, no. It's oh, uh, okay. Dark so Mago. He, he got alone okay, and okay, Parker yeah. were substitutes. Yeah, that would that, that, make sense. That also, more sense. I just noticed Infinity is sponsored by Subway, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and Gillette. And Gillette? Uh, more. Yeah, if, if they're not there, they used to be there. Uh, oh, the best of man can Yeah, I, for some reason, they get a lot of big sponsorships. I'm not sure the inner workings of the team, but yeah, they, they definitely... They need definitely to know a couple their, of big uh, brands. Marketing uh, personnel, because... Uh... Seems to be a pretty interesting deal that they got going there, because I don't see anything for Heroic, which is surprisingly enough, even though Heroic is obviously a really big organization with their... Uh, I assume their origination was in CSGO. I'm not sure if they had anything before CSGO. Yeah, it's definitely the biggest, uh, you know, the, the game that they get the most uh, pull. But, you know, looking at this draft here, some heroes that we were just not seeing at all. Nyx being the first one. Dawnbreaker being the second one. This hero, Dawn, actually didn't get any changes. But uh, gets picked up here nonetheless. And against the Nyx Assassin, that's very sad for Dawn. That means you can't really use your ulti anymore this game unless you pre-BKB, which is terrible. So, yeah, I, I guess the plus side is you force the enemy to get Nyx Assassin. Which currently yeah, but you hasn't pick, been looking the best. You pick Lena into it though, right? That is very bold. Is this just Parker saying, I don't care. I'm a, I'm a great carry. Well, he is I a feel great like carry, so that's true. Lena is more of a Parker hero than PP. I feel like PP is more of a playmaker than a Lena player. It really depends uh, on exactly what hero they're going to pick. Because I definitely think that they can just is swap that one between the two. Uh, the Lena, obviously, Parker plays a lot of Lena safe lane, and with the Clockwork, it's a really good lane, especially against DP and Nyx Assassin. They should be just fine. But it, yeah. It depends also on what the mid matchup is going to be for uh, the possible Lena, even though I don't think there's any mid matchup that's really that scary for Lena. Is there Bowie? Well, maybe Sniper. Yeah, I think Sniper is one of the few ones. Uh, actually. Pretty sure Analog can play, you know, most heroes. But uh, looking at his Five recent games, remain. he has not played any Death Prophet. So I'm assuming it's going to be a Davai Llama hero. Probably with that Nyx Assassin. Uh, they're going to play a Faceless Void Gyro lane here with uh, KJ and K1. So Infinity. That's yeah, a either... dangerous lane, though. Like, against a Techies Dawn? I mean, do you think... Do you think the Void struggles that much? I think the Void might struggle the most in that lane. Gyrocopter, of course, has the damage to kill the Techies Dawn, but they, there's so much damage. Yeah, I mean, Void's definitely a weak carry, and they've been nerfing his laning stage more and more. The time dilation uh, is just a shadow of what he used to be. But I feel like... 
I feel like it should be dawn advantageous, but I would surprise if he like dies twice or or anything of that sort. Uh, there, there's a couple rotations possible, but clock's not the best back. hero at killing void, right? You need to make sure the time walk's already used. It can still be slowed down by the dilation. They are baning carries, or at least they did ban Naga, so still feel, feeling like that Lina could be PPs. I mean, you're playing a spark, you gotta get rid of the scary heroes like a Naga. It would have been a really good Naga game as well. Uh, Song of the Sign save against the Faces Void. Uh, pretty much that. That's the only thing that you really care about. Their AoE damage was Gyrocopter, but because they picked up the Faces Void, Gyrocopter is gonna be a support more than likely. I don't think they're playing off lane seconds, Gyro. Yeah. I also really like that they picked this clock. You know, the lane, as you said, is a good mat at lane with the clock. But Primo is one of Analog's best heroes, and it is not banned. Would be a pretty decent last pick for Heroic, I think. So I feel like this clock's going to dissuade it. Infinity don't have to ban it. They, they get to ban two other heroes. Pangolier would also be another good hero, but I am not sure whether Pangolier is even viable now. But they're going to go deep instead. Ew! They nerfed DK. Well, yeah, no, actually, they did nerf him. They nerfed him. <laughs> <laughs> they lose. Well, still, still good in the lane, right? It's it's gonna withstand the lane, and I think that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be Ten this. Uh, I mean, they can actually flex the DP if the lane is carry. You can actually just Five lane the DK there remaining. and lane DP against some melee hero if Infinity chooses that route. We'll see exactly. What do they lack? I think they lack reliable lockdown, right? Pretty, it's only the clock. Yeah, it's not the most reliable. Uh, most of them are skill shots to get the stun going. Hell, even yeah. the clockwork ones is a skill shot. So you could, I mean, mid lane, bring out the hero that you previously mentioned, get the OD, it's a save against Faces Void. It dumpsters the DK in lane. What about Void Spirit? Like, you did get a couple of buffs. I wonder if that is enough to bring the hero back. I don't think it's enough yet. Uh, hmm. Timber saw mid. Wait, oh, it's probably banned. Yeah, it's banned. So Kanka is banned. That could punch have been mid. a decent one. Ooh. I mean, it's like, honestly not not a bad punch game. I'm not sure if PP plays it, but it is a decent game. You know, your eggs against DP is great. Against DK is great. You have a save, save for the chrono. Yep. Big boy. Uh, what other hero? He's great against Gyro as well. Like a, a lot of DOT in between all those heroes. So the flash heap, like South American classic it. Underlord. He got massive buffs. Tiny is available actually. Uh, no, it's banned. Is it? Drow Ranger. Ooh, okay, that is dangerous because that means you have a Drow and a Lena. If this is physical damage, Lena, which. Probably going to be magic damage, but if this is physical damage, Lena, with the draw aura, you get uh, that extra attack speed. It could push down buildings very quick. Yeah, I just want to say, you know, if you just tuned in, I did talk about the draw buffs, so happy we get to see it. It used to be heavily countered by Void, but Void, right, getting nerfed more and more. Draw Ranger, getting lots of buffs. The shard is good. Uh... The fact that you ignore armor, right? Why buy Brooch when you can just play Drow Ranger, have that passive up? I honestly like this a lot. Two range cores, one and two, but you have this Dawnbreaker in the clock to protect them. Um, Five that said, I feel like Heroic's Draft is easier to play. The, the Nyx is the biggest uh, question mark for me. You know, whether it's going to be able to... Though. Yeah, and it's against the Lina. So it's against the Dawn as well. So I do like it. it it's techies. a close draft. I'll give it a 50-50. Um, hmm. I think I, I, I'll go with you on the 50-50. But I'm going to flip a coin. And it is <laughs> tail. So I'm going to go with infinity for game number one. I, I believe that they have the tools to actually push this game fast before... Face Void gets too big and DK gets, you know, he needs like six items before he actually does anything. Uh, so I'm hoping to see some fancy Drow game in with the Yagnum Scepter plus Shard combination and then just see everything splinter before his eyes. 
Okay, okay. They did nerf the Grove Ball, so not that great anymore, but still probably... I mean, still really good. Yeah, it, it is really good. Um, DP DK, though, they have a lot of tempo with uh, the other cards, which I like, right? As you said, Voids are here that takes pretty long time to uh, get ready and play Dokta. And they don't really have the most reliable lineup to kill this Void. Like, you have to smoke with a clock, and you still need... Like, I think the, the stun duration on clock doesn't set up for Dawn Zoti that well, right? Uh... No. So, yeah, it's not. not... Yeah, like, you can easily time walk away. So, if you don't have that, you need, like, a smoke where the clock hookshots in, but the techies has to be ready to blast off, or else, like... How do you really kill him? It is a bit awkward. Lina is not the hero that wants to be smoke ganking early, and they will break the smoke here. Good war, though. AJ, he's trying to bait them in. Nice two-man impale, but sidestep from Tiger. Continues forward to look for KJ. Analog also dropping very low. He's actually fighting a different battle and losing that battle. Gonna get taken down. Two kills secured here for infinity. And they're looking for a possible harass onto more. Actually, Devai Lama walks back underneath tower. LSA comes oh. out. He thought he could walk back towards his base, but that is a lie. It's all infinity in the beginning of the game. That is the power of clockwork being a nuisance. Who's actually going to see yeah. that? All right. Okay. Gets back to full HP. And now K1 could even be in some danger here. Can't contest the bounty. Infinity will get at least two. So I think it's going to be a 2-2 at the end of the day. But still, very good star here for Infinity. A thousand gold advantage, minute zero. I'm actually baffled that he suicided there on the clockwork. He had like 60% of his HP still. Just one tango, walk mm -hmm. to lane, and you'd have it. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, no. he does get a lot of the gold, right? Because the thing is, he... oh, Jim Park being... Body block here by Schofield, just trying to delay. And He's gonna miss a full wave, first right? Wave. Did they can he can they cancel his TP for some reason? He doesn't have a TP on Jim Park. Oh yeah. I got to see that. I missed that as well. But yeah, that's not fantastic. Just, all right. Okay, there's gonna be the harass on Taifai Lama. He went for Crypt Swarm level one. He doesn't have any of the healing required to just stay alive. Mm -hmm. Also, Nick's Assassin is terrible against Clockwork. The constant yeah, uh, yes. impill interrupt with the battery assault. I wonder if that's a game where you get two points in Carapace. It, it, it is kind of bad though, but uh, at least you get that enough time oh, to run away. Oh, there no. he is caught, and that should be. Oh, he actually does manage to get out. Probably gonna have to walk all the way back to base. Does have good region, twelve with the tango. So because the lane is pushed, he might. Oh, oh, close. Yeah, that lane is going to be pretty problematic for the radiant side. Luckily enough, the creep camp was blocked, but it's going to get removed right now. Bottom side, it's underneath the tower. K1 and KJ together. Uh, should be just even Stevens. And in mid, of course, it is a Lina versus a DK. DK tends to have some troubles in the first couple of levels until he gets two points in Dragon's Blood. And normally at that stage doesn't really care too much anymore. Uh -huh. He just got to that point. So should be should be having a good time. Uh, or at least, you know, as good as he gets when you're playing against Lina. Bottom. Surprised that K1 has the highest CS. We kind of talked about this lane being the hardest. And, you know, Faceless Void. Not the best last hitter. You don't have a way to secure range creeps. Jaro also doesn't have it. And I feel like it's quite impressive to be 14 and 2 uh, in this lane. And I think the big plus as well is that Jaro Gopti does so much damage with Rocket Barrage. Doesn't even have the homing missile leveled because he might need to get Flak Cannon in case he sees a kill possibility. Mm -hmm. It is definitely more damage overall. The Vailama is struggling though in this lane. 8 and 0 against the 12 and 3. 
Draw Ranger. Pretty weak laner, to be honest, but uh, still. I guess this Clockwork does enable her quite a bit. I do like Drow. So we, if you can't get on top of Drow, it's one of the strongest heroes you will ever face. Uh, yeah. Marksmanship is insanely potent. This is a great shard game for the Void, right? Just having that yeah. extra cost range on Time Walk. You're also going to need to get a Blink Dagger on DK. Might even consider one on the next Assassin. I actually have a question for you. Oh, okay. Jim Park in trouble now. There he's stuck underneath the tower. And they just dive him down quickly with the Rocket Barrage. And Obi Mist comes through. In response, it's Demon with the Blast off. Onto Divine Lama they go. And they're looking to kill off that DP who does have a Healing Lotus. But that should definitely not keep him alive. And indeed, Tiger just taps him on the behind to take him down great rotations coming through so in the end it was a two for one trade and Drow actually came out ahead in gold Burns, all right not too shabby we'll come back to the lane just going for a uh, standard threats he now has the raindrop so he started to be killed this is really well done by kj can demon get the suicide on oh! yes he can be you all right that was pretty good, but what was the question you're gonna ask again? Uh, yes. So, we have a Dawn versus a Nyx Assassin. How many yes. cancels of the Solar Guardian will we see this game? Hmm. Well, it is Oscar playing the Solar Gu Guardian, so a very seasoned, experienced player. Uh, we might... So, hmm. I feel like it really depends on whether... Infinity is going to be winning or not. I feel like if they're being pressured to cast the Solar Guardian on the Chronospheres, there's going to be a lot of cancels. If they're playing from ahead, though, then he's not going to use it unless he's sure where the Nyx is. So, hmm. I'm going to say... 3, honestly. It does feel like Infinity has a pretty decent grasp at this game right now. I don't think they're going to feel pressured to... And there's not even that much damage in the Chrono to begin with. You might not necessarily have to use Solar Guardian for the Chrono save as more of an aggressive play. A Tiger? Should be fine. K1 takes a lot of damage. They know he doesn't have time mark, but did have a pretty heavy magic wand, so it's just fine. But yeah, he's having Did a they change good something time. about Magic Wand in the patch, right? What was it? Uh, the cool, the, the use timer has been increased. Oh, uh, okay. Went, went from, yeah, the Magic Wand is two seconds late longer, Magic Stick is, I think, four. Right. Oh, Demon yeah. and PP both getting hit by the Impel. The big attention is towards PP who just picked up that Amplify damage. That I said the correct one, otherwise, uh, Daddy Bowie would uh, tap me and say, Bad DK. Wrong yeah. rune. Wrong rune, you gotta know the names, right? We're casters. That's uh, that's what the Twitch viewers want to know. It's not about the inside, it's about saying the right words as the Vai Lama, the word is scream, and he will be able to survive the aggression of Jim Park. And for the runes, though, can this clockwork steal it? I uh, doubt it. Scofus is waiting and the Valama might do. Oh, he might actually. He blocks them both out. Oh, TP the comes in and Tiger's gonna grab it and haha, <laughs> they get the double win. I'm, I'm mildly impressed. No, I'm actually pretty impressed. He yeah, had two hard. wisdoms here. This is huge for the supports on side of Infinity Clock. Relies a lot on his level 6. Techies, not as much. Uh, techies as but well. Like he can blow I think Nyx Assassin. Point, yeah. Nyx Assassin, Assassin is terrible biggest. without. Actually, no, Clockwork, I think, is the worst. Because Clockwork is kind of. Without Hookshot, at one point, you just do nothing. True. But it's honestly pretty bad for Schofield, so. Just oh, delaying the Vendetta is. Has a lot of healing. And the low to start him. Yeah. Uh, the big problem as well is that, like, well, his part is not that bad. Cancel. Oh, there you go. Cancelled, uh, Dalmoti. Okay, that's number one. For 
that's pretty early. But uh, number one, secure. PP taken down again. That's problematic for the Lina. Uh, what I was about to say was that, of course, Devar Lama is playing the DP. And DP is notorious for being a terrible farmer if the lane goes bad. Yeah, which is one of the reasons I am kind of a DP hater. I, I'm yet to be really impressed with this hero. Like, I feel like for every run one up. game, DP looks great. And uh, run. Dyer's middle tower yeah, PP TP'd in, so he had to dip out of there ASAP. Unfortunate Dyer's Chrono for K1. Uh, they are chasing Tiger here, or... Park, Gym Park, nice actually. 2 9 Gus, Schofield has the Impale. And in response, Demon comes here, there's the... Uh, Nice character's oh, coming wow. out, two man stun by Schofield. The miniature Ravage Tiger is trying to man fight them. Holds them in place knowing that, of course, nothing can be done in that position. There is no Dawn ulti for 50 seconds. And even if he had it, Spike Carapace is a scary. Dude, Schofield is so good. He had the stun for that entire chase. And he's like, nah, I'm not gonna use it. When Infinity thinks they can turn it around, he gets the Spike Carapace off. He he gets the stun on top of it. They find two kills. Sure, Parker die, but kind of crazy how he was able to do that much. And you know, that's a Nyx that was level four actually gets a full level out of that engagement. Not too shabby. Might still get his six at a you know ten minutes a thirty or something. Pretty decent if you lose both wisdoms. Yeah, definitely not too shabby. And uh, also got his first piece already for Dagon Gaming. Ooh. Jimmy Park though. Top side, KJ going in, but he is gonna drop dead. Nice rotations coming out. They didn't even use the Solar Guardian for that one. Now they're gonna drop it. Analog, is he gonna be able to get away? There is no mana on the Dawn. Analog tickling down. Last right click from PP is gonna get the job done. They find three kills top side infinity. And that is definitely a very worthwhile rotation. Yeah, they overcommit on the draw. The DK ends up out of position. And they do find that kill with Mr. PP. Schofield, though, just using that time to get his level 6. Very important. Should have it after this wave. So now that does allow Heroic to go for some deeper rotation. Since there's a couple of centers here in Infinity. But mostly one in the big jungle and one close to uh, those camps on the top side. They're not necessarily going to scout Nyx getting there. They still might be able to find an angle as Dabai Lum is dead. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a recurring segment right now. <laughs> Five deaths so far on the DP. Granted, his lane was already sacrificed from the very beginning with the draft. Drow, he, he, Lina beats his ass, and Drow beats his ass. So no matter which uh, hero they put in that safe lane, it would have been problematic. Schofield, he's got his level 6. Together with KJ, they're looking for Parker. But the smoke gets broken, so Tiger knows what's coming. But does Jim Park know that Schofield is still lurking about? Okay. I mean, that sentry does. That's a really good sentry for Infinity. It, it covers such a big area. A daytime like this, it's really hard to to invade. So, Schofield, though, he, he is kind of aware that like there could be a sentry exactly there. And he's just respecting the angle so beautifully. He's not going to be able to solo kill the Jim Park Drow alone, though. You need at least someone else here. Uh, if he manages to stand in front of a multi-shot, maybe. But yeah, Schofield's just going to walk away. Park walks back towards the tower. And there, Vendetta has ended 20 seconds until he has a new one available. I actually kind of need to try and bait out Spike Carapace so that Don can all be. That it requires a lot of communication there. Now, the big thing I feel for Heroic is that even though this Void was supposed to be against a hard lane, even though this Void, uh, like, sometimes takes a while to get online, they created so much space. Like, all of those deaths that Heroic had were top. K1 was never bothered. Like, all of the aggression was funneled to the top lane. Of aggression here. Skullfield is looking for someone, but uh, the sentry will get vision, but not fast enough. Chrono on to Oscar as well in the bottom lane, but Oscar will be just fine. Chrono was used, they did lose Tiger in towards mid. Mm -hmm. 
Not too much was lost. Dragon King Knight, by the way, went for the Mage Slayer. Still, the DKs tend to build that on pretty much all of the DKs. Even the Dawn is going for it this game. Yeah, I like it on her. I feel like you do have a lot of magic damage on Heroic, and you do have a way to apply it to multiple targets. It's, it's a decent item, to be fair, as they are also pressuring top here. Exo still ready. Yeah, but Jim Bar, I love this item build. He is going for Dragonlance into Aghanim Scepter. It is so strong to get the Aghanim Scepter that early on in the game. The Vailama gets taken down. It's also really good against both DK and the uh, Death Prophet because of the healing reduction that it adds in with the Frost Arrows. Page gets found. The mines! The mines! Infinity is playing really well together, even though I've seen some pretty nice rotations and moves from Heroic. They have been pretty much shut down most, if not all the time, by Infinity. Yeah, that Death Prophet pick, I think, will punish heavily. Six deaths on the Vailama. It's like, <laughs> the Vailama is 80% of the deaths on Heroic right now. Which is unfortunate, but it does mean that K1 is farming and he is... Uh, the counter to the Draw Ranger, right? Uh, might be a weaker hero than he used to be. Oh, once again, I mean, th that's Schofield. the thing uh, as well. Schofield finds PP, but there's no one to really do anything about it. Like, he's just sapping experience, I guess. He actually gets the Dagon recipe instead of the Voodoo Mask first. Huh. I guess he's so deep that he doesn't feel like he can send the Courier. But yeah, it's weird. <laughs> The, the spell life still when I hear this barely like even using spells, you know, I guess it doesn't matter that much. I mean, it matters more than nothing. <laughs> true. <laughs> Very true. And it looks like I'm gonna smoke here in K1. He's been unbothered, but this might be the first time. Nice dodge and weave. Schofield's nearby as well on the side looking for a start of the fight. Even Parker TPs towards bottom. Interestingly enough, the nerfs here force Void to go for a different build, right? In the past, it was always one point time dilation, just max stats. He has three points. That's pretty much unheard of uh, for, let, for the other patches. What was it? Slow your cooldown, increased. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, like you can see all the changes. They, they made the cooldown progression slower, then they increased the mana cost. Yes, but the slow gets way worse, so they feel forced to. Get it. Oh, Devai Lama, Laguna Blade at top, trying to heal himself up. That's not gonna happen. The PP gets the kill. And Devai did use his exorcism to get a grand total of zero damage on the tower. <laughs> He's level nine, so he is the same level as Demon right now. Demon, in fact, has more experience than him. And it's also the big problem that you're gonna face later down the line. Disgusting techies, placing mines all over the pla place, making sure that you can't, as an ex assassin, sneak in the enemy's base. Because, uh, good look. They're gonna be, yeah, this ex assassin just can't vendetta run around at one point because their mines everywhere. It's really weird. Like, yeah, he gets intel, but I wonder what the point of it is. It's just a ward. He's getting experience, right? And I wonder... I don't think Jim Park is calculating the experience he's supposed to get from those creeps. So he just got a level Oh, he there. will die, though. Jim Park will get caught out. Schofield yeah. gets the kill. And that is going to be his Dagon done. Now he has solo kill potential once it gets delivered. Yeah. Oh, the BM nice. tips as well by KJ. That's, uh, that's a bit early, dudes. <laughs> well, yeah. It's... Uh... You know how it works with SA players. You either make them play 100% better, or you tilt the hell out of them. There's no in-between. Day 1 gets a tower, and is finishing his Manta. Yeah, that is always nice to have against the silence from Gust. Wait, Gust does... Oh, no. He gets speed to draw now. He... Ah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, that's another one of the many buffs this hero kind of got, but he never fell to like was enough for people to start picking it. I guess Void, Mr. K1. Yeah, Clockwork is pretty good in the wombo combo himself. 
shot plus power cogs is a very lengthy sunderation he's going for his own agonim set KJ. kj is gonna get spotted out by oscar and will at least grab the bounty before he falls but falling indeed that's what he's gonna do team park still not done with the ags has slowed down significantly in his farming because of the threat of that nyx assassin lurking about yeah still uh Doing a bit worse than Network there, but not by much. Just Cofield. Oh, he gets the silence though. That is really well done by Parker, and uh, Schofield will get taken down. Nice sentry placement. And yeah, nice. The, uh, the sentries on Infinity have been on point. Like, that's the third or fourth sentry that is very well hidden. Just allows PP2, uh, Jim Park, to play really well against the Knicks. Uh, and does Lina going for right click, as you said, you know? Just works really well when you have a draw in your team. Yeah, double right click is pretty scary. I was thinking maybe they go for magic damage so that you can blow up the faceless void very quickly, but with just two wild right clickers in the fight, uh, even if you chrono the Lena or the draw, yeah. the other one will be able to bump out enough damage to make up for the uh, the chrono. That really is the big thing, like especially if they play far away from each other in the fights. It, it might be just impossible to get the chrono you need, and then how do you play around these two big right clickers? Uh, it might be tough here. Uh, now, Oscar. eggs, as you said, done on the draw. Oscar almost has his BKB. I'm wondering if he's gonna do the preemptive BKB solar guardian. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's possible. This void is big. He will start to become a problem you know it feels like he's six in net worth but that's because everyone else is very tied in net worth like everyone farming pretty oh, much the same no. amount goodbye llama on ulti on top and there's gonna be another kill on to the death prophet indeed death in the name <laughs> dying is his game <laughs> you don't have to be a prophet to predict the deaths that is very true dk very funny as uh, K1 did finish his Manta, going for that BKB. Uh, I mean, this game is super passive, but definitely benefits Infinity. Uh, Gaben doesn't give that much of a gap here, only 11% uh, gap. I love Faces Void and DK, so it's not too surprising. He sees the drones mm -hmm. like. Time for, eh. <laughs> Time for Tormentor, maybe? They do TP the Vailama nearby here, but it looks like uh, no. Heroic will chill for now. I will definitely go for Jim Park Silver Age this game. Hmm. Or at least Shadow Blade, because it's obnoxious to deal with the enemies and being sneaky is pretty good. But I think having the break against DK and against Face Void will be very handy. What's the better shard here for Heroic? Well, it's gonna be Skull Fields. Um, I would say KJ's would, because, like, Nyx Assassin, okay, to queued it up. It's really good on Nyx Assassin as well, the magic resist beat reduction. But I think the Gyrocop, there's no way you can play support Gyrocop without the shard. Yeah, that is definitely true. I think, I think the Nyx is happy. Like, they're, they're both good, but I, well, I would uh, agree. That's slightly better on the gyros now. They're gonna go for Roche play here, Diddy. Uh, no vision, no awareness from Heroic this is happening. Even OT Roche on. Oh, that's gonna be a quick one. Yeah, Laguna just to get max fiery souls or 10 stacks of fiery soul. So it goes a little bit faster. Jim Park gets the uh, Aegis. They probably should get the Torment to themselves soon enough because they have very good shards as well the clock with jetpack obviously but the techies i think that one is even better a uh, reactive taser that you can throw on someone inside the chrono very true oscar is level 14 he's definitely getting a lot of farm here Radiant yeah it helps if you don't get completely murdered eight times yep three zero and nine so. Time for the smoke here in Infinity. Obviously, the Dawn's not going to be involved. Just waiting for that uh, BKB Solar Guardian. We'll see if he's going to do it. Glacier. Let's see. While standing on the hill, attackers gain bonus attack range and high ground advantage. They cannot miss 
Oh, that's impress interesting. And gain flying it's really vision. good. Yeah, you get flying vision, you never lose your passive, you gain more, more arrows. arrows per wave, you get attack range, uh, and you vision. can you can go in and out of the shard, but whoever jumps there can't. So you also have free pathing on the shard. It's It has to be one of the best shards in the game. Like... The amount of things that it gives you, it's it's crazy. Can you like share it with Lena? <laughs> Alice? I don't think you can. Like you, she can jump on top of it, but I don't think she has the free path. Oh uh, no! It, it, I think the free path thing. It's at least from what I'm reading, it says the front of the hill obscures vision and cannot be moved through. But yeah, they can move through the back of the hill, right? Radiance top tower is under attack. Uh, does it even have a front and a back? I, I was not aware. It's, it says specifically the front of the hill obscures vision and cannot be moved through except by Drow Ranger. So I assume that the sides and the back is different. Oh. Okay. Alright, well, we're, we're oh. gonna learn that. Okay, maybe. one. Let's go through. Okay, that was interesting. Uh, on the side. Oh, the Vailama showed himself. Oh no, battery assault. Oh. Does have BKB? Well, doesn't care. <laughs> it's just gonna die. Yeah, if there's not gonna be any support coming in, then there's no real point to continue uh, trying to survive there. Radiance middle oh. tower is under attack. This game is so weird. Like, I wonder what the timing for heroic Radiant is. Rose they is they have blink on DK. They they're gonna have Crone. I mean, they're gonna have BKB. Maybe that's when K1's willing to fight. But uh, you already waited so long that it might just be better to give away some tier twos and wait until this ages is over. Oh, they find Oscar. And we'll be just fine. Schofield doesn't have the damage to kill him. Actually, didn't hit him with Mind Player. Yeah, he did after the day gone, so. Ah, okay. Then, yeah. Schofield's just gonna run away. They know where K1 is. KJ? Because of that explosion coming through, KJ will be found out by PP who gets an easy free kill. But there's still a Nyx assassin lurking about. Demon goes in with the dive. Be careful himself because Schofield can't kill you. Dust gets thrown out, but this team's not coming in to help him. <laughs> there's a Solar Guardian though. Yeah, and on the side going in, the Chrono was used by K1 going to the map by Jim Park Aegis has been popped, but he's up high in the sky, pumping out arrows like it's nobody's business. That exorcism isn't going to keep the Vailama alive, and Analog is dead as well. There is no more Corona for 130 seconds. If they can push that mid wave, which has a catapult as well, they can definitely break the high ground at this stage. Good play from Schofield. He's dragging the creeps. There's still one catapult, unfortunately, in the mid lane, but it's going to be killed by a tier 3. Oh, they got top less. as well. True. Park will just kill off the mid tier two. They have PP, the second right click uh, range hero on the team, and he'll be able to take out the. Honestly, I think you give this oh, up. Top. Like, you have no chrono, you have no dragon form, you have no, no exo. Like, oh, they have dragon yeah. form, but no exo. He's dead, so. Yeah, that, well, don't. technically, but thanks for you are having right. my back, DK. You are completely right. I apologize. They don't have a dragon form because he is dead, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're, they're gonna fight this, alright. Oh, no, Oscar! He's gonna get taken down there. Is, uh, there, look at that dragon form uh, coming through. Okay, they, I'm surprised that they were able to defend. Very patient here from Heroic. They did TP the Void though, and there is no Chrono and no BKB. This fight's still a bit awkward. They find Demon, I guess? Do they? No, they don't. Demon gets the TP out of there. Tiger, not gonna be so lucky. I must say, I've been very impressed by these supports from Infinity. I was doubting, you know, the support difference, but they're playing really well. Like, as you mentioned previously, the sentry wars that they've been placing the entire time, the mines yeah. as well to scout out a lot of the things uh, by Demon. Even his item build, just going for that Guardian Greaves rush, make sure that it, everything needs to be used to keep them healed up in the Chrono. True. I can't help but feel like, you know, usually I don't like to harp on players, but... Uh... This game, I'm not sure if it's the... I, I want to say it's the pick more than the player. 
But the Vile Lama is struggling, right? I feel like the supports are really big because one, they stole the wisdom, and two, this clock just got fed a lot of experience by all of those Davaya kills. Or deaths, depending on how I want to put it. Oh yeah, without a doubt. I think uh, the Vile Lama... I, I, I think it's more obviously probably could have played it slightly better but on the other hand i don't think there was that much better that you could do considering how terrible the lane was he's not even that far away from oscar technically granted the enemy supports are really 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 bad but yeah it's just that oh, okay they lose uh, scope here but i feel like the the hero dawnbreaker is easier to play even if you're playing from behind that's not true for gp that's a hero that needs to dominate and which is why I'm always surprised this hero gets picked up this early in the draft. Maybe Heroic was willing to flex it to 5, right? We do see that from time to time. But uh, in this game, playing as a core, just not the performance they needed. <laughs> Even. He's getting ready for Roche. Oh. All the mines in bottom being uh, placed right now. Just so that if anyone wants to contest Roche later down the line, which will be up uh, on the radiant side, mind you, uh, they will be in for a bit of a problem. True, that's what the DK illusions are for, right? You got all that magic rest, you just send them. Hopefully Analog's gonna have the foresight to scout the area. Probably Although a lot Schofield's of times the illusions... Gonna walk around and... <laughs> <laughs> you can prevent one, right? Yeah. As uh, mid lane is being pushed by these DK illusions. Nicely done there by Analog. Doing some pressuring the tower quite a bit. Oh, that's the one thing that I despise about this DK. It's just so... It's obnoxious more than anything. Yeah, they nerfed the duration, but, you know, still feels like it doesn't do that much. Was well, a corrosive uh, breath D, but yeah, if it constantly keeps attacking, it doesn't matter. Illusions no longer apply dragon on hit effects if they have reverted back. That's at least a pretty decent change on his own. I was not even aware that that was a thing. Like, if I thought if the DK illusions were back to normal melee form, they, they wouldn't apply the buff, obviously, but apparently that's how it works. I think the, but the like, if the DK turns back, then the illusions are still in, like, dragon form. No, 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 they become melee. They, be they do become melee, but apparently they apply the I thought the that was only with TB when he changed forms. No, no, that, 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 uh, I'm 100% sure on that. But I never checked to see if they were applying it, and apparently they were. Hmm. Yeah, I they... will need to quickly check that in a sec. Yeah, like if you watch an old replay, you can definitely see happening. Like as as you lose the the dragon form, they, they do return back. Oh, and they find sculpture here. He's gonna return That's to the, the land of the dead. Is that the same with Alchemist then as well? Mm, I'm not sure actually. Like it's been a while since Manta has been an item for him. I I definitely am not sure. <laughs> definitely am not sure. That's a great sentence. Great English right there, boy. Well, they get a tier 2 here for their trouble. We're still a minute away, so Heroic could potentially either force Infinity back a little bit or... Uh, yeah, I mean, Infinity, the they've got Oscar defending the base. He also now has an Aghanim Scepter done, so complete focus on in disrupting the Corona. That's all he needs to do this game. Mm -hmm. I do like the Skydy build on K1, though. I think that kind of got discontinued once they nerfed Skydy, but now with more HP and mana, uh, it's great in this game where there's just a lot of burst and having that debuff on range heroes always feels great. I just love all these mines from Demon in the bottom lane. Top tower is under attack. Like, well, you're not a great person if you love them. But, to be uh, fair, it is one of the most obnoxious things if you want to try and take a gateway. Speaking of which, Schofield is standing at the gateway. You take a gateway and immediately just boom, 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 and you're dead. One of the yeah. most terrifying things in uh, Yoda right now. Luckily enough, it's not as bad as the old techies was. Still pretty bad. I think the play for Heroic is just to be hitting this tower. You want to have as many heroes hitting this tower as possible. So that Infinity gets uh, baited back. Roche is up, so they are a bit late here, Heroic, but I think the intention counts. It will do a lot of extra damage. They even force a Glyph. It's not enough. It's not enough to say this is a good trade, but I think that's the best play they could be going for since going through the twin Jim gates. Jim already it's TPing before it's killed. Oh. Okay. 
He's also carrying the gem on the draw. Huh. Oh, he's Kaidi as well. That's gonna be so much kiting for these heroes, god damn. Yeah, he already has frozen arrows. Yeah. <laughs> It's Add gonna be like, more. uh... Have you watched uh, Senseiya? Uh... No. You haven't? I, You're I like don't. a manga? An anime guy? And you haven't uh, watched Senseiya? Se what's Senseiya? The uh, You know, they're knights and they fight for... There's no... I mean, it's it's a really old anime. Oh, but, yeah. But uh, no. Oh, Senseiya. Oh, no. I... No. K1? My old anime are just weird, and okay. How old are you, by the way? Twenty-eight. Right, I am, and you should. Yeah, no, but You're not if that it, young. If it wasn't like broadcasted on TV here, back when I was young, uh, most of them I didn't see. It was only when I got older that I started looking at. Actually, when I was young, but I l w watched anime like Wolf's Rain, which you've never heard of because it's very weird. I heard of it, but I, really? I don't think I have watched it. Yeah, it's weird. It's, definitely it's not. like super dramatic. It's very gorish, right? Oh, it's not gorish. It's just really dramatic. Okay. I, I don't think it was gorish. At least I, it was, I was 12 when I watched it. Um... <laughs> Speaking of drama here, the barracks are just falling and Heroic yeah. are not doing anything about it. Two cores outside the base. Spark, homing missile, coming through, Schofield's gonna walk around, trying to catch himself with support, oh. which he does, but he's gonna actually miss everything afterwards, and that's a bit of a mistake, Chrono, Chrono comes out, BKB on draw, and without Disarmed Schofield, go. it's gonna be the heal coming through, Tiger gets back up on the high ground, Oscar gets the sun going, and the jump is there on the face of point, with the sun follow up, K1, can he get himself out of there, BP might lose the aid, he still has Satanic, he's trying to heal up from the Satanic, will get the kill, turns his attention to KJ, they lose Parker though, Analog and Schofield get the damage, Done and PP is now going to get control. First life is gone in a moment. Second life, yep, they were so focused on K1, they forgot that there are more cores to deal with. Analog is starting to do a lot of damage. BKB TP out by PP, and that fight looked like it was going to be the winning fight there for Infinity. But great turnaround play coming out with that buyback as well from Schofield and the Vailama. Bringing all the damage they need with just exorcism. Everyone ignores him because they think that the DP can't do anything anyway. And uh, he just starts melting his opponents. So one thing that we forgot to talk about, I guess, in the draft is that uh, Time Walk is a heal. So once K1 got that Time Walk off in the fight, I was like, all right, this guy's Gucci is going to heal so much. He healed like 5% of his HP because there's a Scotty and just max stacks of the eggs of the Drow. So is this is time void. mark, is it counted as a heal? Yeah, I just read heals, uh, at least uh, the fandom wiki says heals from all three damage types. Uh, yeah, but it says upon cast, uh, upon cast any damage face this void took in the last two seconds it gets healed back up. So if you get ice blasted, it would not. I think he doesn't, yeah. Thunder Death is not a heal for sure, but uh, I haven't seen that interaction. The, the, the... Yay, blast one. But it says heal here on, on the wiki, so I'm going by that. Oh, Schofield? <laughs> 90 HP. And they know exactly oh. where he is. Oh. Oh. Run away! Hook shot in the trees. PP! No! Oh my god. Honestly, you should know that he is in that corner because there are mines in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> he could not That's be have gone anywhere else. Oh well. He he didn't really think that through and Schofield just being a nuisance as he always is. That's how you know analog, he's starting to become really annoying. He is like he's not at the same level or net worth. Uh, of PP, but he's still like he's having a quiet game and he's scaling like he's just ferociously. Doing DK yeah. Things it's you yeah. play late game against DK, it it's really rough. It just keeps cutting creep waves. 
Since one illusion one end, another another end. Like the best thing you can get is a freaking Dagon or Scythe of Ice just to get rid of the DK illusions. Mm -hmm. And look at the void, you're going for double chrono rather than an MKB or something to deal with the Dawnbreaker's analog is gonna be hook shotted. Yeah, but he has that unobstructed path ink and he get himself out of that Mantis style in a sec. He's gonna get stunned so up tanky. and analog is done for a nice catch. And immediately looking for KJ. No, not immediately, but they're just making sure the creep waves guys. PPP uh, towards what? mid. What? On to K1. Okay, has the satanic, there's gonna be the heal coming through, K1 actually popped the BKB running away, has the chrono at the ready, but you can drop onto two, which he does indeed, demon, tried Disarm. to get some bombs placid, and that is the power right there of the techies, coming through with the shard, turn his attention to Devai Lama, Schofield nice stun on multiple, but Devai Lama exorcism is gonna be on cooldown if... Well, in general, it's going to be in cooldown. Can they get the kill on him, though? Clockwork from the other side. Tiger hook shot oh. randomly. Not going to be able to connect. And again, gets away with murder there. That is no exorcism. And no chrono. No chrono. For 100 plus seconds. Is this over? Like, I, I guess PP needs to heal. But he also has an Ancient Guardian. Like, they're going to be doing so much damage to this Barracks and Towers. He's got boots to travel, so he'll be there in mid in no time. Mm -hmm. They have one glyph, which they are saving for tier fours. No, never mind. I guess. I mean, Elon's gonna be ready. Yeah, but no without the exorcism, guard. that death prophet just does no damage. If he's pushing out bottom, oh, he's buying the scythe of ice. But at least he's yeah. trying to get enough gold for the size of ice. PP's towards mid. I guess he's gonna wait for it a little bit longer. A lot of... Huh. Infinity being more respectful of uh, Heroic than I expected here. With that chrono on cooldown. I mean, they're still gonna have a decent timing, right? 50 seconds. But... Uh, Alright, let's see what they can do. Yeah, Demon getting all the mind placed on the side. Anyone want to dive on them? They're going to have to definitely pop BKB or they're dead. Oh, they find that Lina. Oh, shot in onto Schofield for a staff back. Tiger needs to walk away. Does not have jet back. Actually, it rings. Oh, K1. Schofield. Pumping it in. Gets found. Chrono is up in 15 seconds and so is Exorcism. Going in onto Tiger. There's going to be the Dawn ulti. All the healing. K1, Laguna Blade uh, taking a lot of damage, but not anywhere close to enough. But Chrono is up in five seconds. You kind of have to bail out now. There is no Don ulti to help. x is up. And there's going to be the Chrono coming out. They catch three heroes. Actually, two, but one extra came in. In the end, Tiger's going to get taken out. Baby still pumps out damage. Scythe Price comes out. He's looking to heal up with the static, and it's still doing the job so far. While well, Jim Park is still right clicking away and the shatter from the frost arrows, it's doing so much damage. I'm locked. No one's on top of Jim Park, so Jim Park can just pump arrows onto enemies constantly. Double vibe coming right inside, but there's no Elder Dragon form either. Tiger will try to run away, has the boots of bearing, so no slow should work for that short amount of time. Tiger ticking down and will alter in the Ansco field. Rotates through two man stun with the infield. Jim Park nearby throws out. A little wall of ice. Can he get out of there? A TP attempt. We'll get the TP going. And he does manage to get himself out of there. Oscar's not going to be so lucky. But it is at the very least a double buyback. And two yeah, sets damage as well on the bottom side. Uh, you want to force this buys, right? You need to equalize the net worth. You need to equalize the status of this game. You force this buys. You can even take a fight before Roshan. Roche, which, by the way, respawn in the bottom side. There's an obnoxious amount of mines, but if they can deal with that... I mean, you have a choice. You could force Roshan, but I'm not sure they, are, they know it's up. It's not the max timing. Or you could try and force Biobex. Forcing Biobex is definitely not as reliable, because you have Hookshot, you're gonna have the uh, Solar Guardian on top. They're TPing. Yeah, they're gonna go for Roche. Yeah, and uh... <laughs> do we get to see something fun? <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, do you think anyone's gonna die? Nah, I think they're a bit too tanky. DK's got, of course, that uh, extra magic resistance. Uh, Death Prophet's got the BKB. Also, KJ scouted a bunch of those, had to use the Glimmer Cape. Okay, okay, okay. But this is third Roche. This is Refresher Roche. They already have a refresh on the face void, so double chrono is already something you have to deal with. Then you're gonna probably deal with a double exorcism, I think. I mean, it's so <sighs> this death prophet is not even a hero. I wonder if there's there's not a better carrier though, so you might be right. But he's getting that double BKB on the DP, maybe double halberd, <laughs> goodly clutch. Yeah, because the DK already has Octarine, so you don't really yeah. need to give it to him. His cool, his downtime is what fifteen seconds on Elder Dragon form. Yeah, that's not worth it. It would be nice, like if you had refresh on DK and you use uh, Dragon form, refresh Dragon form. Like you would get a second head in your dragon instead no. of like just reapplying. <laughs> you become the Jakiro! Yay! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you become a dark. Two-headed dragon. Okay, one. Pew, 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 pew. All right, time for Roche. They're gonna have some missiles here from Tiger. Can they do this fast oh, enough? Oh, he's gonna smoke up. He's gonna try and get yeah. the steel. Needs to swap out Where's... some items from his inventory, though. Need someone blocking that hook shot. This is getting a little bit dicey. Someone. Tiger's close by. A hook yeah, shot in the second. The is good enough. It's good enough. Oh, oh, it's not! Does he get the steal? No, he, the cogs work in mysterious ways in that case. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very weird... Like, he flew in and then jumped a while to the Ooh. side. Jim Park's gonna get caught as well. There's gonna be the heal, but there is a refresher available. Unless K1 gets blown up, and indeed, his first life is gone. Mine's being placed around him. Can they kill him a second time? He has the BKB, has the refresher for the second chrono. Will he pop it? Yes, indeed. Pops it. Jim Park is going to drop dead. PP is uh, surrounded by enemies and another one down in the dumps. Buyback from Jim Park. PP does not have the money for a buyback. Chrono Throw gets Oscar. thrown out onto Oscar. And the Don is a, a little bit of a pickle. Does have a buyback at the very least, but will be taken down and... Now PP, it becomes fairly scary. Tiger still running away. No buyback available on Tiger, though. That is going to be Clockwork out the running. This game is crazy. Like, Heroi got outclassed, uh, like, player-wise, throughout most of the game. But their macro understanding, like, the way they defended some of these barrack pushes, the way that they just played the map and got a lot out of it despite being so far behind is honestly so impressive like to me that is the biggest weakness of the sa teams they do not play the map really well they, they play really like it uh individually they're really good but this comeback from heroic is, is how almost every sa versus european team match goes on like they actually look very promising and then like one or two plays that they ended up going for kind of loses them the game i really feel like from this stage Infinity, like you don't have this clock for 40, you're losing at least two lanes of barracks now. And by the time you're ready to fight, they'll probably just back off, have the refresher ready for yeah. another fight. So you're gonna have to deal with another two chrono uh, chronos. Oh, it's already and the buyback one advantage is, is on a heroic, right? They didn't use a single buyback for those last fights. People set of racks to be secured. Now they're even at least in that regard. PPTPing in. Right in front of the enemies. The ballsy move. <laughs> Interesting BKB from K1. I mean, I think that he could have just uh, disengaged, but at the end of the day, uh, as I said, you just want to reset. So wait for the BKB, wait for the fresher, and that's when you can take a fight. It looks like Infinity. You know, there is an argument for them to try and find something. No refresher in 50, but you don't have any buyback, so it's also very risky. Yeah, currently, uh, it is still a situation where if you survive the two chronos, you can probably win the game there. But uh, <laughs> if you can survive the two chronos, that's a, a lot to ask for. Yeah, they've been playing really well uh, around the Solar Guardian, forcing those initial ones. 
Uh, I was very patient from K1 as well, the way that he used Refresher, but didn't rush the Chrono. Kills the Dawnbreaker later. I think Demon should just, at this point, go for the Aghanim Scepter. Minefield sign. Yeah, that's definitely not bad, but he's, I mean, he's just not even close. Yeah, he's, he's queued up Ags, so he listened. Good, good boy, Demon. <laughs> I think the Ags is, especially for a Death Prophet, he, he can't run. And if a Death Prophet can't move, it's problematic. Same with the Faceless Void. Can't really yeah. move around inside the minefield sign, which is pretty obnoxious to deal with. We are smoked up. Forky HP on K1, like even his neutral items making him super tanky. Got a set scap. That gets popped right now. And for uh, a way out. And now you're gonna get choked out on the map by the DK. That also has the AoE Dragon Till uh, stun. Is oh. so insanely good. Yeah, I mean, you're against Drow here, so that extra armor, that extra HP region gets all nullified by the eggs. Uh, the... does it? I think so, right? I think it's added armor and it's not base armor. Um, and Drow only removes be base armor. Right. That's why faces. I think the region AC. gets removed. I oh, think yeah. the region gets removed yeah, because the... house card gets counter, right? Yeah, yeah. The region gets reduced. That definitely. But the armor should still be pretty good for the DK to have. True, 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 true. I mean, faces void has an AC for Christ's sake. It's uh, <laughs> not really uh, an item you see on faces void like ever. Very true. So, as Heroic here, the, let's say, the safe play would probably be waiting for Roche, but they have that Refresher, and oh, there you go, Roche is going in! There's the first Chrono, on to PP goes, Don Ulti comes through, and that is round number one done, but there is no buyback on the techies, he doesn't have the funds. And he didn't even pop the Refresher, he's just keeping that one in the back pocket, might as well just wait 90 seconds. Very patient here from Heroic. Awkward still doesn't have a shard. Actually, they haven't killed off, I think, a Tormentor since the first one. Objectives, people. <laughs> Tiger, hook shot onto Schofield, gets the catch. K1, though, still nearby. He's gonna win out this fight. Oh, it looks very damaging. K1 does pop his refresher this time around, turns his attention, gets a kill onto Tiger Crona, comes out onto Jim Park. There is no Don Ulti. Jim Park is actually surviving the damage so far, but the rest of his team is not coming in to help Parker, and that's a dieback. Huh, I think if someone walked in to help him, well, they would have lost Ops at Arax, but that's beside the point. They already will yeah. boost Ops at Arax. Clutch play, clutch itemization from K1. He was very quiet at the beginning of the game. Same thing for Analog, but their read was that uh, you know, as long as they got all of those timings, it wouldn't matter. And uh, he definitely didn't. The Vi Lama, still 11 deaths by far the highest count on uh, the side of the but they made it work. Ooh, clutch loads there. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really do much in return. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty. It is very pretty, that is true. They're trying to deep fight. Don Ulti, he'll come on top. The evasion helping against the ancient dropping, but there is the GG, and it is going to be heroic. Taking game number one with a pretty substantial comeback coming through from the Radiant side. It was, uh, I mean, it definitely goes to show that you should probably still nerf Void Spirit, uh, face the Void a little bit more. True. Uh... But you know, I think it takes a very skilled team for that comeback. I don't think Void by itself was the reason. I think they just played the map pretty well. They cut ways when you matter. They uh, like they defended high ground without Chronosphere twice, and they made Infinity pay for it. They in the, in the second time they tried to bridge high ground, you could see them like hesitating a little bit. They didn't really fully commit, and when they did, they, they lost heroes. Uh, I'm very impressed by you know heroic. I think there's a reason they did well in dream league at least for sa terms 
Um, let's see how game two is going to shape up, though, because Infinity, they were ahead for most of this game. So with a better draft, let's say a draft where they're not trying to counter what Heroic has more than uh, just picking things that they are comfortable with, they, they could look better. Yeah, a couple of uh, things to change up. Maybe that could get the job done. Slightly different team fights to be enabled. Uh, they were very close, but Heroic did edge it out in the end. That was game number one. We'll be going to a short break and get ready for game number two. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, ladies and gents. Game number one, big comeback play coming out from Heroic. Uh, was a pretty impressive first game of the South America region. So I'm looking forward towards what game two will bring for us, Bowie. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the odds for sure are going to be a bit closer to Infinity, even though they lost, right? They were so far apart and they definitely took Heroic. Uh, they, they gave them a run for their money. I think... The draft was honestly fine. I think we were trying a couple of new patch things, and I don't know, the itemization seemed okay. I feel like PP was a bit too greedy, uh, but at the same time, you know, they, they were out farming heroic. They, they really got outplayed at the end of the day. I don't even feel like there were many mistakes Infinity made more than just heroic outplaying them, right? Like, there were some mistakes in team fights, but map movement-wise, I, I feel like they played pretty well. Yeah, they definitely uh, far outperformed the original stats uh, that we saw. It was 6.6 for Infinity, 1.1 for Heroic. I think those were a little bit skewed. I mean, you are playing against Jim Park. But yeah, Heroic does have... Like, later down the line, Davai Lama, of course, his lane was terrible, but he did have a lot more impact on the Death Prophet uh, in the game, even with a lot less net worth than the rest of the heroes. So it was... Definitely a, a bit of a change up to see that the team can stand a heavy deficit. Mm -hmm. Pretty impressive as well that they bend this gyro from KJ. You know, I think the gyro performance was pretty good, but uh, yeah, definitely here he's very comfortable with. They can also, they, they, I think pretty much you never see K1 playing the gyro, but they do swap between uh, Schofield and KJ on that gyro oh, you know it's definitely here they, they love playing they might as well remaining. deal with all of that comfort but this does mean heroic snatch is a tiny they get he gets slightly nerfed with that level one tree grab everyone's going for still a pretty good hero nonetheless yeah the uh tiny is always nice techies played pretty well in game number one from the infinity mm -hmm. side i think demon looked sublime on the hero i also really yeah. like the clockwork which has been banned this time around i mean if you plan to pick up tiny i understand why you banned the clockwork his laning stage was phenomenal i honestly think that infinity's best players in game one were their supports i agree they played really well uh the foresight in the way that they stole the wisdom, the way that they warded and protected PP and Parker to play greedy was was top notch. Schofield, despite all of that, was still able to like get a lot of value, right? He was sapping experience from stacks, being super patient. He never like yoloed any any attempt. Uh, you know, they just waited until that one connection where KJ was waiting on the high grounds. They they found uh, Parker in one of those plays but because they bend this clock infinity has to be careful about the primal if they don't want to pick it themselves because that is a hero analog can wreck havoc with i feel like he was very passive in game number one but at least to me the analog that uh i know is, is a very active player i think he grew a lot as a player you know having more uh ways to play around but yeah that, that primal beast you have to be careful as they do grab themselves a brewmaster for oscar mm -hmm. okay brewmaster coming in pretty early on uh brewmaster of course uh of course is really solid in this game especially with the techies easy way to set up the uh, cinder brew and like a blaze, also laning wise, a techie Sprumas is a pretty painful lane. So a lot of heroes would normally struggle against it if they get on top of you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, so what is the move here for Rick? You... you know the offlane? So you could technically go for a very early carry pick. If you feel like there's something here, let me a life stealer that you think it's very good. I oh, know they go the primal. Do love that. You're gonna be flexing that between Mr. Davai and Analog. Although I do feel like Analog plays it more often than Davai. 
Yeah, the Primal Beast is obviously one of the stronger heroes this batch. We didn't see it get picked last game because of the Clockwork pick, but it is a hero that tends to dominate its lane, and if it does, it dominates the game. But if it does lose the game uh, lane, it has some struggles in its comeback mechanic. It's not the flashiest farmer, but uh, the fact that you have an ulti that pierces BKB is always a very big plus against so many heroes. Uh huh. Definitely. But it's uh, they do go for this inch pick, which I think I we saw uh in one of the matches, right? That VP versus Entity uh game. We we were not casting. We we're in the panel. I think he did get picked once. Not a hero we see that often, especially with... Uh... Actually, Chen didn't really get banned for his phase, huh? You think there's a chance Infinity Peak is it up? Is this like a safeguard against the Chen, in a way? Yeah, the, the, it is kind of surprising that no Chen was secured. It almost always is a first phase ban. Well, we're not going to be seeing it, I think. Take his Dark Willow, get picked up. Willow, so is this a Willow 5 then? I'm not that much of a believer in Willow 5. I feel like this hero, just like Tekis, kind of needs to play 4. So very curious to see how they're going to uh, you know, separate. I think like, Tekis who's 5 can work. Tekis 5 is not that bad because his attack range is really high. Uh, far, not high. But, uh, well, yeah. He I do prefer a decent uh, amount of right leg damage still. Deck is 5 over Dark Willow 5, that's for sure. Yeah. And, and that I do agree. I think Dark Willow needs a bit more farm than Techies. Techies. Every. Techies only needs his level 6. And then you already have full impact Techies. Ten seconds remaining. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at this pick, I'm Five surprised because I feel like Primal Beast is very good against the Shrek. You just get a Blade Mail. It's very. Intuitive, you can't really control the edict damage on Lash. I also feel like Primal can match Lash's rotations quite nicely. So, I guess it is comfort for PP. And there's no flex here, right? Like, this is not an early Lash where, like, yeah, maybe this is a 5 Lash, maybe this is a 4 Lash. We saw FNG having a lot of success with it. But, uh... I mean, yeah, I don't know. I feel like, you know, it can be tossed back. There's, there's a lot of... Stuff specifically displacement that wrecks Leshak, uh, Leshak the Shrek the Oh, I was curious if this hero is even gonna be picked. I feel like the change to the swashbuckle is huge in some matchups, maybe less in others, but uh, basically the extra physical damage you get now is pretty much compensated by the fact that you're not doing the diffusal blade damage anymore. So, like. The damage you do is the same, but you're draining less mana. I guess, you know, Leshrac has so much of it that it's not really that relevant. But, yeah, curious to see, you know, how how good the hero is going to look like. Because I felt like this was one of the biggest nerfs of the patch. Yeah, the, the Pangolier is going to be definitely a, a weird one to see. Of course, uh, Leshrac, the plus side of trying to drain the Lash's mana is Bloodstone doesn't give you any mana anymore, so you can actually run out on the Lashrac, which is a bit dangerous later down the line. But you can... It feels like Lash should be able to roll over the pango. If you play correctly, roll over the pango in late. True. Yeah, I think the, it's definitely... Lash beats most melees. That Split Earth's annoying. Although, the build we're seeing nowadays, Split Earth's kind of skipped over. The build I've seen is, you know, two points in uh, Lightning Storm, three Nidic. We just rotate a lot, farm stacks. So maybe we'll see PP changing the build a little bit. But if you don't, I, you know, I feel like Pango can, can definitely do okay. You have two ways to run away from the Edict. And I was also looking at Infinity's heroes. It does feel like Tiger is actually the one that plays Dark Willow. Like he has way more games than Demon. So this might be Willow 5 if Tekis 4. Oh, wait and see. Maybe there is a hero that actually benefits from having this Dark Willow, right? We used to see a lot of offlane Dark Willow mag. Maybe you can play Dark Willow Pudge. I don't know. Some Something that allows you to hit multiple brambles with uh, this Dark Willow hero. Yeah, the Dark Willow could be some fun stuff. It is also pretty good against the Primal Beast and Weaver because you yeah. hold them down nicely with the brambles. Uh, they really hate playing, so th I think this is a great Dark Willow Shard game. 
if you get to that point. But they might need a little bit more reliable lockdown because Primal Beast, Pangolier, Weaver, very elusive heroes. And Techies is a skill shot, Brewmaster. Uh, I mean, his ulti is required for it. And even the Lesh is a skill shot. Hell, Dark Willow is also a skill shot. So they're not easy to set up stuns currently. And, well, Bloodseek is banned. I think Bloodseek would have been perfect, especially I want to see the new up graded Bloodseeker in this patch, and it is a park hero, but what other park heroes are still left? We could get the Naga, maybe? This time it's not banned. True. It's not a bad Naga game. You have the Inch, but that's, you know, Primal is decent early on. I do like this Weaver pick, though, right? It was Void banned by Infinity. Weaver got buffed. It's countered by Void. I feel like a lot of the matchups that he wouldn't like playing against uh are already banned so this river should be up for a really good game i don't think there's a single hero that looks amazing and it has a really good matchup against weaver pa well hero. that is kind of a question mark how good is this here if you cannot go for brooch still pretty good i think it's hmm. still pretty good obviously the brooch was a bit broken but the hero still does a lot. The shard that you can get it does so much damage against the primal beast. Uh, it's an off lane primal beast, so you do have the jump at least to get out of range from the primal. I think that's probably the biggest thing that they required in the uh, as your safe lane. It needed to have an escape, otherwise primal would just run you down. Yeah, it's a. It's not a lane PA should win, I think. No. Uh, even if she doesn't die, I feel like the Primal should do really well here. Uh, this Leshrac versus Spangolier, even if he doesn't go for Split Earth, should, should have the advantage. I feel like that's not a lane that Pango wins, but he also doesn't care about that. And then we have this Weaver against uh, Brewmaster Tech. He's um, still a pretty strong lane, right? You have this Ench that can trade really... Really well, you can go for the right click build, you can go for the healing. I think both are, are fine. This is a game where Heroic has better lanes than game number one. Uh, and they play the map so well that despite being greatly behind, like 12, 14k at some point, maybe even more than that, they, they came back. I feel like Heroic has enough of a draft advantage in this one that I, I think they're going to win. I think I'm going with Heroic this time. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can, I can concur. I think uh, I like now. Nah, I like a lot of things you said about heroic. I'm just still gonna go with infinity. I'm a sucker Parker for Parker and Arcana. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. he's got a okay. beautiful Arcana. He's feeling it. Maybe Pippi's also really impressed me in that game one. Obviously, died a couple of times uh, early on which was a bit problematic. Uh, during the late stage, I think he died twice, one time uh, due to a gank. The other one was a dive underneath the tower, so two ganks. But did recuperate pretty nicely in game number one. I uh, think it should be able to get it done this time around. And honestly, like this is also a game where Lesh could just ball out. You get the Bloodstone, you get BKB, you get... Kaya Sanj, and you just run everything and everyone down. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely a hero that uh, can snowball. They have a decent amount of burst on Heroic, but not that much. You know, until you have Shard and Weaver, until you have uh, more items, it uh, could be problematic. Uh, and also, Gamer, only one hero can do the, blood uh, the Blade Mail, which is Divide Llama. That said, I'm happy that he is going to have a much better lane, right? Instead of uh, going for that first pick, Death Prophet, you actually get a third pick, Primal Beast, into a lane that I, I don't think he should die, like, in the first eight minutes of this game. Unless there's, like, some clutch rotations from uh, this Willow, which is definitely better at rotating than the entry is here for Heroic. Well, we started off with an immediate pause. That's... Uh... Classic South America style. Uh, uh, normally, it's a little bit later. Uh, sorry, a little bit earlier. I don't know what I hopefully, was we won't have any uh, technical issues because that is another thing that South America is known for. Very true. Uh, Item bug in screen. He is playing Weaver. Obviously, there's a bug in screen. Oh, just... <laughs> well, looks like it should be... 
easy to fix, right? Just close your game. Yeah, just delete Weaver. Easy. <laughs> what do you think of this hero, right? I, I don't even feel like it was nerfed to the point. Like, this hero was a monster uh, during TI. I think he got, like, one very small nerf, level 25, wow. and, like, a slight level 1 nerf to the cooldown or Geminet attack. And he just died for some reason. Finally, looks like we are the back. Uh, you know, they, they, they gave a decent buff to Geminet attack, but I, I don't know. It's kind of weird how the hero just disappeared like that. I think it's an okay hero. I just think it. the biggest problem I have with it is that it makes safe laners play too aggressive. And when you play against really good pro teams, you make one aggressive move, you get caught, you die. Uh, and with, the, for instance, the shard, you want to shoot you through the enemies. You do that, you die. It's very dangerous to make it work. True. Very true. So, oh, bottom lane. Schofield and the Valama. Oh, looks like Jane Park Looking is to... aware. Oh, they're just going to cut the... Oh, no. Yeah, no, they're going to kill it. Cut it. So you kill the range and you just body block so that they are under tower. Okay. It's like they rehearsed this, right? This seems pretty much rehearsed. And now the lane. I, I was thinking the Vailama will start off with Trample and just kill the first wave, which is also uh -huh. something Primals tend to do. Yeah, well, now they can hit him under tower and still keep their cooldown. That uh -huh. is true. There, there is a rotation here from Tiger, but he also wants to block the camp, so we'll see what's going to happen here. But with that move that they made, the Vailama also did not. Get a quick kill just yet. Will he get one? That's the big Actually question. I ended up going for the Roar level 1. I do like it against PA, but you know, usually I see it more of a level 2 spell. But the armor is great here. You just trade so well, you get the slow. It kind of allows them to go aggressive and defensively in case uh, they get those. Oof, Tiger taking a lot of damage there. Blood Grenade as well. Oh, but Scofield was too far away. Oof. Oh, Ooh. he walks in the second Brambles, the Valaman! Dead to Tiger, yep. That is first blood for the position 5 Dark Willow, already paying off immediately. Right. Yeah, I mean, look, so promising for Heroic here. They had the 2 versus 1 at the beginning. They forced Jing Park on the tower, but as you said, he was not going for the creeps, which means they get level 2 a bit faster, and uh, a bit of a misclick as they do find Demon. KJ top. Yeah, the Weaver is very annoying to lane against. You're gonna need to buy a sentry in lane. The danger, of course, with low level Shikuchi is that if he dives underneath and you actually get a sun, which they don't have, you can easily kill Weaver because he's very squishy. But I think because they are lacking a stun at the moment with that sticky bomb, it's gonna be pretty problematic to get that kill secured. Uh -huh. How's the mid lane going here? It is uh, yeah, slight it's... advantage here to the Lashrak. Yeah, it should be okay. For I, they definitely have kill potential on each other. Uh, that's without a doubt. One rotation is needed, and then you can definitely kill the enemy. But should be normally a bit more favorable towards PP. Uh huh. Uh, found time for the Lotuses here. It does look like Infinity is. Going to be Dove, probably giving away the Lotus for Heroic. Maybe even kill an Oscar here as the last right click. Nope. Is going to be able to stay alive in return. Demon diving in with the blast off. It's a little bit of a uh, harass Shoot. comes through, but Demon's even going to get bullied out by KJ. The power of a lane dominating support right there. The Enchantress, one of the most obnoxious lanes, especially if you go for the Impetus Enchant build. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly what he ended up going for. I'm assuming. Do you dispel? No, never mind. Oh, I think I'm just dumb. Not the passive, no. Yeah, but I'm you dumb. do re dispel the reactive taser. If that was what oh, you yeah. were curious about. Yeah, that's what it was. Gonna ask. Yeah, but I, I that's actually exactly knew the answer, was. but I'm not sure why I. I even asked the question, you know. So yeah, so just, that's why he backtracked. I start it was a not, sentence, he, but yep. I don't know where I'm going with it. Actually, you can also dispel the Cinderbrew, right? Because he buffs himself. 
True. And he throws Cinderbrew on himself. He has that Cinderbrew buff, which upgrades his Drunken Brawler to like three times or two and a half times when he's brawled up. So Enchantress actually has a counter for both the buffs that the enemies can throw on themselves. Look at that heroic is a is a team that has a brain. They know what they're doing. Yeah. Pick Enchantress. It like counters half the say half lane duos. Also, uh, currently PP is looking really good in that mid lane. Yep, and log CS. struggling a little bit there. It's also the danger if you leave that mid lane to side lane gank, your tier one tower is gone because he does have three points in diabolic edict. Oscar dies top lane. That top lane is disastrous right now for Infinity. That's the only lane that is really a big problem because Jim Park is still having a pretty okay time. Bottom, uh, speaking of bottom, Tiger is going to get jumped here. Stomp, oh, stomp, stomp says the primal, but. Actually, Devalama is in trouble himself. Avalanche from Schofield holds Shim Park away, and Devalama is going to TP back towards the tier one towers. Schofield going all the way back to base as well. I mean, this is pretty bad here for Rick. They lose analog mid. That's level six on PP with a catapult wave. So, this is a position where you might even lose the rune, although PP is running back either for a stack or for a. For the base, we'll see exactly what he is wanting to do. My mana boots delivered. Oscar being chased down by a chicken here, a big one. Uh, Wild Wing Ripper and Impetus has to stand still because the damage is pretty obnoxious and pops the heating cell. But the Wild Wing Ripper is still going to chase him down. Nine seconds for another hurricane. Gotta get stay clear pretty Six. much of the high ground. Mid lane, Schofield taken down, PP and Demon together get that kill secured. We'll refill his bottle with the... Oh, they're smoking. Bounty rune as well, and on towards bottom they go. Devi Lama, they know he doesn't have a TP because his inventory is not showing one. That means he cannot run away, charges to the side. There we have PP and Demon just waiting for him, and Devi Lama does get taken down. They oh, they're going smashed. for Oscar now. Oscar. Underneath the tower is going to be a dive. K1 is level 6. Oscar is level 3. Oh my god. That right. is... I've never seen that big of a discrepancy between... In one lane. That, that's that insane. That counter seems to be working pretty well for them as now they're going to invade for the Wisdom Rune here. Skofix by himself. The Vailama trying to be in position for the rune. Field still alive. Tiger tries to grab the XP room, but it's going to be for the Vailama and Tiger going for the TP out. No avalanche available. Rolling pen from Analog. They do lose Jim Park and probably Demon to boot. And double kill for Analog. That's a good way to recover from that mid lane. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a deny on the bottom room on bottom tower as well, I believe. Unless they get unlucky, they do get it. This is not too shabby. Wait, did Analog TP to the outpost? Uh, I think he TP to the outpost by mistake. <laughs> oh, I'll oh, rip. Oh. It's, uh, oh, bottom lane, Oscar is dead again. I think top, but close enough. Indeed, Oscar gets dove underneath the tower. PP is walking in, Schofield. Gonna get slowed down, has a toss, which you'll use on PP. Get him away, K1 needs to be careful, because <laughs> that Weaver almost dies from just a couple of seconds next to the Lashrak. Oh yeah. He's going that's Blink that. Dagger for his item. Interesting. Okay, that's similar to what the Timber Saws were doing right at the beginning of the patch, where like, you already have so much damage, if you can jump people. Can probably kill them. There's not that many stuns. Like it's only the avalanche and the onslaught, unless you use the rolling thunder. I'm not opposed to it, but you have to be playing from ahead, which right now he is. If you're playing from behind, you can just kill yourself several times. As PP is actually just being killed by a tomato, he might just be dead right now. Has to uh, try and get himself out of there. Maybe get some damage in on KJ, but it is going to be KJ the one securing the kill, and rolling thunder is going to get the job done. Magic resistance right there keeps the Pangolier going. Well, I'm not sure he's gonna queue this Blink Dagger for too long after 
die there. I think this is definitely a game where if you just don't have the tankiness necessary, you're going to be bursted down. Uh, Diffusal Blade already on the way here for Analog. They are pressuring the top tower. Looking for Tiger. Oh, Oscar. Spokefield there as well. Avalanche comes out. Tiger dropping low. There is a toss. That might kill Tiger. Actually, tosses on towards Demon. Demon is going to get taken down by KJ because he's got the Warpine Raider throwing out a seed shot to get that one. Can find two kills in response. Tiger going to get away. Whew. Which dies is another one to the Warpine Raider, but it will be still a two for one favoring Infinity. And Jim Park got one of those kills, rushing the Battle Fury next. Is actually pretty decently along in securing the Battle Fury. Very true. Middle tower very, attack. very true. As the Vile Lama is gonna shove this wave, has a huge stack that he can farm as well. So he is on the way here for a pretty early blade mail. We did talk about that item in the draft. For sure, one of the best options. And he is so far ahead that this Brewmaster. He has 18 CS min at 10. This is like absolute shellacking level of a laning stage. Yeah, they got destroyed. He's like, he does have his level 6 now, so that's a big plus. And K1 is level 8 and a half, pretty much. It's going Dragonlance, Manta style on the Weaver. I guess they do have roots. Those are pretty annoying. Yeah, the Shrike did give up on the uh, Blink Dagger. Bought a Kai instead. DP has a lot of damage to work with. Yeah, Kai is a weird item now. Because you could go, of course, Kaya Yash or Kaya Sanj, which probably means Kaya Sanj. Because no one yeah. really gets the Meteor Hammer. Technically, yeah. he would actually not be a bad hero for the Meteor Hammer. But Meet Split Earth, Meteor Hammer. You got Split Earth with the Shard, Meteor Hammer. You do some fun stuff. I think if the upgrade, like if maybe if it was more expensive but meant your channeling is faster, I actually would have liked it. Oh. K1 here, a little bit in trouble. It's stunned up, Tiger doesn't have his level 6 yet, so no Bedlam. They're looking for Schofield on the side, he has a toss available and an avalanche in 3 seconds. And on the low ground, they slow him down, Schofield's gonna be left behind, and it will be... PP that from the low ground and managed to secure it. One step yep. closer, but K1 is top net with Analog is second. He's got the defusal now on Analog as well. So the Brumas needs to be a bit careful in mid. But as you mentioned, the mana drain is significantly less with one less swashbuckle dispatch. Mm-hmm. Let's see if this hero still will look as good as uh, he used to. Obviously, the fact that it is physical makes the Blightstone even better on this hero than it used to be. Since it does more physical damage. But, uh, yeah, I mean, pretty pretty slow game as well, right? For an SA game, 4k good advantage is quite significant on the side of uh, Heroic. But the win probability is just 6% uh, differential here. Still, uh, it's definitely Infinity's game if that PA has been so far. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. 5k net with lead as well for the dire side. Yeah, it's just a big difference. The other two cores are pretty close, but Oscar is so far away. Yeah, and like KJ's he's pretty much really half of the, the network lead. Alongside the inch that is farming a pretty decent amount. A thousand gold ahead of the uh, position five on the side of infinity. What is KJ going for? Uh, obviously, Sharp. you can use the Oblivion Staff for multiple tools, but will it be a Witch Blade, an Orchid, or a Mage Slayer? I think it's Mage Slayer for this last right? It's so strong. I would assume the Pango would get it, though. Well, he has the Aghanim Scepter in mind, so looks like... Uh, it also means that the only hero can really kill KJ in this game is the PA, right? Because... All of the magic damage from the Willow, all the magic damage from the Techies and, and the Lashrak, like... This uh, you have to hit them tanky. first, but yeah. Yes. It, it doesn't really do anything if you don't actually hit them to get the debuff on them. 
Yeah, we can just sproink them as they're gonna sproink Oscar here. Can they stop the split? They wanna bait it. Well, they do use the split right now. Chase on Schofield, he is pretty fast. Will be taken down and locked and swap it off in the meantime. And upside, Jim Park oh, took a lot of damage, but he is able to continue farming. Bruce Blit is over. Thought that the Burgle was going to be able to deny that Arcan rune, but they were not fast enough. Random jump in. They thought they caught him, but bamboozled, says K1. Battle Fury is up now for Jim Park, so he will be able to increase his farming speed significantly. He does have the Blightstone in the backpack, which is a bit weird, but uh, I'm assuming he will eventually swap that back. Hmm. That's just that. Analog. Aghanim Scepter. There's not too much happening. The Falama has his blade mill done. It's going to be KP into his own Aghanim Scepter. That Primal Beast Aghanim Scepter is a game changer, though, against the PA. Uh -huh. It is so good. Rolling Thunder oh. mid Oscar. No split. That's a really good Rolling Thunder. Goes on towards Tiger, charge forward, pulverize onto Oscar, Brewmoss is dead. Yeah, this feels like a complete in control game for the side of Heroic. Luckily enough, you do always have contingency plan called Parker. Parker is being spotted by this primal beast. Yeah, Parker. He's trying to stay a little hidden with his blur lurking about. I still looking for her, but yeah, it's not gonna find him. So Parker should be fine. Even TP is bottom. It's gonna keep on farming. Finally, PA is going back for the Deso build now that uh, the Revenant's brooch is terrible again. Thank you very much, Mister Gelato Frog. Very very gracious of you to nerf that item. I really do think that they should make Blightstone upgrade into something else. Yeah, honestly, I agree. I... I, I either you upgrade it in something else or you remove it. I think having only one upgrade and it being the Desolator is terrible. I I agree. It is. It's just so weird. I think the the old medallion, like I like the new one. Don't get me wrong, but the old medallion also made a lot of sense. So hopefully, you know, this new new patch <laughs> because the one we got. Wasn't really the one most people were expecting. And yeah, we the now Kron we gotta fall. wait till mid-April. And we got the, you know, uh, supermarket brand patch. Which definitely doesn't really scratch the each as much as you would like. Uh, it must be an amazingly big patch though. Like it big has shit. to be. Well, just as big as the Vi Lama's hero pool, HP pool here. That's uh... Take a lot of damage from those binds. I'm curious on the new hero. Because it should be coming out as well. Yeah, I, I do think so. They're still trying to code the hero control mechanics, right? Oh boy, Oscar is just solo killed by this Glide near hero. K1. I feel like the new hero is... Do you think it's going to be the mind control thing, first of all? Uh, what was it called again? Circus um, man, uh, pistachio boy. I, th I think I the know. idea behind it was kind of like Heroes of New Earth, puppet master, ringmaster. Oh yeah, it's called ringmaster. I think in Heroes of New Earth there was a hero called puppet master, and there's always been like a lobby to try and get puppet master into Dota. Because mm -hmm. uh, personally, I think the hero like I love Dota. My f amazing game, but I think the heroes in Heroes of New Earth are just... Some of them are so much better than the Dota heroes. Like, conceptually. And skill-wise. I love heroes that change play... with day and night cycles. Hmm. I do like that. I think, you know, they tried to do that with Arc Warden. Uh, you no, know, the Radiant Dire. Yeah, but they made that one, time. like, really confusing. Like, really yeah, confusing. No one <laughs> understands what's supposed to do. 
But no, it's an attempt. I I do agree though. I think it's nice to have a bit more of that. Uh, oh, wait a second here. It's burn side. Oh, it's go field. And That's jump park for hit week. Oh, jump park actually went for a BKB instead of Picasso. Interesting choice. Uh, BKB plus shard. Then next, I guess he feels the heat on his team shins, knowing that it is getting a little bit dangerous to continue at this stage. Uh, they might just start pushing high ground. Pip even has a Yules. No bloodstone yet for the lash. Yeah, I did go for this blink use build, but in a game. Yeah, I guess, you know, the, the blink use is supposed to allow them to get pick offs, right? If the take you with the willow. But. Rex just group it up. You're not gonna get those pick offs with this item build. Yeah, it's a bit problematic for them. Let's see. Tevai Lama, the push bottom lane. Yeah, they're, they're at the stage where they can start knocking on the high ground, I think. They have, they don't have the best high ground hitters. That's the only big advantage Infinity have. They have to put the Weaver in front. Yeah, I, I wonder if as Lash would even buy the shard here, but he doesn't have the gold for it as they are trying to poke him. There's going to be a lot of TP. He's already predicting Demon's TP. The Zarm, though. That is pretty dangerous, actually, to play. If the Lash gets the shard, I don't think they can push at all. PP. Right. They're going to be... F Ooh, oh, really that's quick. Out. Big fingers right there, PP on the move. Uh, Radiance is up for Oscar, that's huge. He's been, you know, pretty much... He, he didn't play Dota this game. He's been in recovery mode for the last 15 minutes. Gets a very late timing on the Radiance, but... Uh, KJ even has at least has now, level. so... You, you oh, might not even my. get just split off. Yeah, that's... Okay, so he did go for the Orchid, KJ. Alright. Yeah, that means... No one has the Mage Slayer on their team? That's They're weird. Baiting the PP here. But there's a lot of heroic heroes. Three to be exact. Jump in. They find the two man catch as well. Avatar's on top. Oh. Rolling Thunder trying to be pumped out. And it does connect on to PP. Has no use available. Actually, what happened to Analog? <laughs> oh, the he. Yeah, well. <laughs> He he didn't use the best area to bounce back, so Jim doesn't Park. really get the kill as Jim Park. It's uh, actually a nice uh, save there from Tiger. Schofield has the toss, will be able to get it off. Avalanche in a sec, but Jim Park on the run. Has the shard now as well. Ooh. Jim Park is in trouble. Nice stun onto K1. Jim Park is trying to dodge and weave. And in the trees he runs, jumps to analog, but the last right click from analog will be able to kill him in the end. But yeah, um, I'm, I completely missed. I was like looking at the fight, but I didn't see the rolling thunder, and then it just like vanished. Yeah, he he tried to use uh, instead of canceling the rolling thunder and just getting the kill on Lash, he bounced back, but it was really far away, so the Lash could just blink to the high ground. As the Lava now just dies, that's a bit weird. Can he get a counter? Ooh, but yeah, PP and Oscar are both dead, and that's more painful. Because that means the high ground push is here. The defense is not available to join. All three cores have fallen. K1 still has the age. They're trying to pop his first life. Then again, he will have that second at the ready. He's surrounded oh, by Bramble Mazes, though, which is very obnoxious. Uh -huh. Park has no BKB, so even when he respawns... So 17 seconds for a fight to start. You're gonna have to use the second glyph, probably. Yeah, the worst thing about this batch is that second glyph. Oh no, Tiger! He got hit by that soul burn. Toss for it, though. And a log. Tiny airways coming through. Kill secured. Rain tracks almost taken care of, but with the buyback, they're gonna jump away. Actually, Jim Park coming in from behind breaks the Enchantress. So that he can get rid of the untouchable and kills him as well. At least the Ench is dead. But there's way too many heroes still left. And speaking of which, BP is going to charge four. He gets the stun on Schofield. Two heroes secured. The two supports dealt with, but there are no core deaths anymore. Yeah, really good angle from Jim Park. Tipping to the outpost. Finding the Enchantress there. 
Uh, also gave him time to have the big hibi back. But, you know, the damage is done. No glyph. The... This Brewmaster, he has to really contribute. He's going for this shard, but... Honestly, the biggest problem for him is that... He's just too weak. He, he just killed the Brewing so fast. Yeah, the Brewmaster is... Uh... It doesn't. It's too. It's too un, under farmed. He does get a free shard, so that's a big plus. His farm just jumped up sky high, uh, so he doesn't have to buy it himself. He's gonna go for the mantis style to get rid of the KJ orchid. Are scanning. Yeah, still pretty far away. Uh, Roche is also not that close, and as you said, Eric doesn't have the best siege. Just could buy enough time for infinity. We'll see. To infinity and beyond. That was a great movie. Oh, Rapier queued up here on Mr. Jim Park. So it's going to be straight up death swing to Rapier, apparently. I have actually never seen Toy Story. I just know really? all the quotes. Huh. From, from stuff. But I've never seen it. I don't know why. I mean, there's some, everyone has a couple of movies that they, they've never seen. That everyone's like, really? You know, I've never seen Godfather either, for instance. I've seen the two first hours of the first one. I, I'll be honest, though. I was kind of a kid. I, I got bored. I, I just... I don't think I was old enough to really enjoy it. And I never really tried to rewatch it. I just nod when people say it's amazing. As a Lama gets the BKB. Gets really lucky, because... He actually missed the split earth. Good, that was Schofield awesome. with the save. The Vailama just... Okay, so Schofield is gonna die, but this was 100% a Vailama mistake. Did you see what happened? What? He was standing in front of the enemy's tier 3 tower and just TP away. Like, oh. right on the vision. Just standing there, TPing out, and they use it. And go in. I, That's... That was weird. Very unfortunate. Uh, well, they're gonna keep on pushing top here with this catapult wave. They still have a lot of spells here. Infinity. Oh, Orchid. Oh, Tiger gets blown up. Oscar nearby. Did get Orchid. It has the split available, but yeah, they're gonna just get pushed back in towards their base. K1 gets rid of the tier one, uh, tier two tower top. Now it's only base to go in terms of buildings to demolish for the side of hero. There is no Aegis, so Weaver has to be a little bit careful. Uh, speaking of oh, which, wow. he is very dead. Jim Park pops the BKB, turns his attention towards the rest of the team. Schofield mules himself up to try and stay alive, and Schofield will still die regardless. But there's the science on to Jim Park. Great job, KJ. With a yeet from downtown from that impetus sprint, they'll be able to get the kill secured. Oscar is still continuing the fight. There's going to be split earth onto two. K1 analog on the run. Can analog get away? No, he cannot. KJ, the last one standing. Demon gets the stun in. KJ, he's continuing as the hero of the team, <laughs> continuing the brawl. And will probably even walk away scot free here. Unless. Triple Wraith Ben Enchantress. It's just don't die to the PA. 25 armor on the P Enchantress. You've got the Untouchable as well. You got Sproink. This... And special Tijere. That's just so much damage you're doing in the fights. Dumb hero. <laughs> Dumb hero. Lothorn. That's, that's so greedy, but I love it. That's so good against um, PA as well. No evasion coming yeah. in from the blur. Is, is, I'll say one thing, you know, despite all this gold advantage, if you look at Gaben's predictions here, 50-50. still feel like this PA, uh, let's track lineup is going to be scary. Yeah, I think, uh, oh, that's an important one. Pippi is, uh, he's got the money for Axe. So you got the uh, Nihilism spell that you can run around the team fight and knock air. Or you go for Octarine and you completely ignore what I just said. Indeed, that's what he's going for. Yeah, because I was going to say, the Nihilism is weird with uh, PA in your team, right? You don't want to oh, have them so. all... Yeah, that makes more yeah. sense. But yeah, no, Nihilism is kind of weird, but on the other hand, also Weaver can't touch you, so... Kind of a weird trade-off. 
But the other ones can. That's, I think, the one. Ah, uh, Enchantress can't either. Uh, speaking of which, we might get to see another spike brewing. Creepy still doesn't have shard. I think that's always the biggest mistake. Has the bloodstone now, so can survive a little bit longer. Oscar with the brew split coming out. The Verlama BKB is about to end. He's chasing after Jim Park. Gets the catch, and Jim Park is done for. Doesn't have a buyback available for 60 seconds. Roach is up in there right next to the pit. Brew split is about to... Actually, no, it's still going to take a while to end. And he has the shard, so he should be able to just jump towards his fire panda in case of worry. Or, or not. You go to the earth panda. I swear to God. You can choose which one you ended on, right? Uh, it used to be the... It doesn't say... But yes, I think it used to be the case with the shark. Because I'm now a little bit confused. Cause this or is, is it the eggs? It's definitely not the eggs. Because that only sounds like the extra brewing that you just have up in normal time. PP has the shark yeah, now though. Okay. And this is dangerous because as you can see, stun lock is there. I think, yep, finally, this is how you win the game. You get the shard on the track and you win. Huh. And... Oh, that's... Going in, there is no mana left on the, the track though, but KJ is going to die. Huh. They actually had Roche available on Heroic, but they tried to YOLO this a little bit too much. Yeah, the PA dies, but uh, hopefully here they're not going to lose Roche on because of it. Already TP from the tech, his demon will scout out the Roche and is available. Hedgey uh, Park also going for it. This is... I think yeah. it's a free Roche, unless Heroic... You know, Schofield is trying to do something about it. But this should be a fast Roche. Yeah, does he know that they're already in the pit, though? He has the ability... No, there's no scan, actually. Never mind. He actually picks up the Lotus... The Lotus is nearby, which they might have heard. And yet, yeah, Demon... Are you leaving? Demon expects something funky up. But it will be Roshan being secured in favor of Infinity, and that net worth advantage is pretty much gone. Yeah, I think you're right on the money. Not going for Roshan there, especially the second Roche, which had the cheese uh, when it was still top. And going up the high ground against the Lashrak when you have no BKBs on your course is just asking for trouble. Yeah, that was the uh, first big mistake here from Heroic. He did a lot of small mistakes, I would say. Uh, target selection wise, they're all spotted. So we got some vision. Take it, those will die. No, nope, never oh, mind. That root coming out just in the nick of time. The Varlama is disarmed on the side roll and Thunder continues on to Tiger. Turn their attention to Schofield, does drop. Jim Park has the Aegis, has the BKB, is gonna BKB jump in onto KJ. He really wants to get rid of the Enchanters, who's a problem, but so the Varlama is gonna KJ. lift him up with the Pulverize. And they get the kill. PP is still pumping out magic damage in the middle of this engagement. And everyone's BKBs are on cooldown, so they need to run. It's... Yeah. Oh, gonna... KJ is just straight up dead. Too close to Jim Park. And PP, and next one is the Varlama. Yeah. It... The guy, right now, like, it's great that they have Jim Park. But it's all about PP. They... No BKBs means no fight. Yes, but at the end of the day, this is actually a good fight for a hero. Even though they don't trade even, you take away the ages, right? Uh, they still hold tier 1 tower middle. I don't feel like Infinity can do that much. But the fact that the game goes later and later does benefit Infinity. Uh, it's just that they could have probably farmed a bit more. They could have been more proactive on Infinity if they kept the ages. So it's still decent for Infinity, but uh, I think Heroic did the best they could given that they, you know, they gave away the Roshan for free. And now we're on even territory, but you are playing against one of the strongest late game cores in Dota, and that is the Jim Park TPA. Once he gets triple stifling dagger, you're looking at game over most of the time. Because he's just going to have so many crits. He's also going Aghanim Scepter, so he has the instant. It still does instant blur, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, instant yeah, cast time and applies a dispel. Anytime Phantom Assassin gets a hero kill, her abilities are refreshed. That said, you still have to be very careful with that Blowthorn. Your BKB is already lowest duration possible. And as we saw, he can't jump the Enchantress. Uh, I mean, he can, but he really doesn't kill her fast enough. There's a Defiant Shell as well, so 
35 armor when you're close to a tower. That is very significant. When attacked, the hero counterattacks the target within their attack range. Damn. Mm -hmm. Does it yep, turn I into an impetus item. attack or just a normal auto, auto attack? If you have it... Hmm. That's a good question. I, I assume if you have it auto attacked and you have the mana, it should proc as impetus. I don't know. Because that would be the case for, like, Deuce as well, I guess. Mm. And he would split shot the into immediately, which would be weird. I mean, that makes sense, right? Let's say, I don't know, you have a spend. Do you need cleave? Auto attacks? Yeah, but I think Melee's get a little bit more love than range zeros. Like Kanka, shouldn't he Tidebringer? I don't think he... Probably doesn't. I think he does. Really? Uh, I think he does, yeah. If it's auto attack, right? Because I think it's the same. It's like Weaver. I think if you have it on Weaver, you should also gem that attack. You know, these are the things I never ask myself when I'm actually playing a game to try it out. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm uh, watching and I'm like... Huh, does this interaction work this way? Or that way? And I have no freaking clue. Yeah, just wait until chat's just uh, lifting all their pitchforks against us. Oh my god! 2K How don't you know this interaction? This has been in the game for more than five years. Doesn't even know go that little. Uh, PP, okay. so in a bit of a fight, there's gonna be the time that's coming out. PP needs to use himself up to the bloodstone that he can pop, and nasty splitter is all over the area. Is actually gonna use up himself to try Holy and stay alive? Fine, Parker. Parker is dead. PPs are gonna be on cooldown. PP though needs to be careful. Can he heal up? Still hasn't used the bloodstone in the middle of this fight, playing a very greedy PP. We'll be able to get the bloodstone pop the this time around, but look at KJ, boom, 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 Bloodthorn coming in heavy there on the attack speed. What is this KJ damage, though? Double kill. Yeah, like he was waiting for the Shivas to be over so that he could heal more because uh, there is a Shivas on Davai Lama. But at the end of the day, the fact that they just yoink Parker like a piñata, it was just an analog and the primal. You get so much damage. This PA died so fast, and no buyback on anyone. This this is Megas. Yeah. This is at least one lane, but I, I'm assuming it can get both. Yeah, there's also Weaver illusions all over the. How does he have so many illusions? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, one is Manta, illusion. one is the illusion rune. I, I just saw like four illusions in the enemy's base, and all that. How did he do that? What's this magic that K1 has just mustered to gain? That illusion item isn't in the game anymore. Remember the one that chat haters us for? <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember it's the illusion escape. Yeah, we don't so remember smart. an item you from know, That years gives me ago. a thousand MMR. Just knowing that name, knowing that it existed, yeah. means I'm a thousand MMR higher now. How dare you not know an item that was in the game two years ago? Monster. Uh, Rolling Thunder going in. Jim Park BKB already used. They need to delay until PP is back up. Actually, so preferably force out the BKB on K1 if they can. But still hasn't used it. KJ is just pumping out damage. 100% MVP if they win this. Yeah, I agree. The the pick itself counter brew so hard. Uh, they go in PP. But Earth trying to get the kill, but KJ gets lifted up there. It was an enemy Yules, I think. Oh no, it was actually Tiny Schofield Yules coming in. Keep KJ alive, and in the end he does drop. But the DG is called, and that is 2-0 for Heroic. And I guess the odds were correct. They yeah. just win it. I, I mean, not the easiest 2-0, but still the 2-0. Mm -hmm. Heroic. I think Infinity showed signs of life in both games. Like they, they were competitive enough to make Heroic crack a couple of times, right? The the Roche play. They in game one, they were ahead for most of that game, honestly. But I feel like the way like Heroic is very good at uh if they make a mistake, they still know how to play the map. They don't really get affected too much by it. They know what is the play that can kind of put them back into the game. Whereas Infinity it does feel like they're a bit more one-dimensional, a, a little bit less uh, 
smart about how they want to play the map as a team. But I mean, they are very, very good. I think the fact that they made Heroic crack in, in two games, even though they didn't take a single uh, game in the series, still very impressive. I wouldn't be surprised to see them in the finals or very close to it. I feel like they, they have to be in the top three of the teams in these qualifiers. Yeah, I think uh, they're... Uh... I expect them definitely to make it towards the grand finals. Uh, that is really the position that I think that team most of the time deserves to be. But they still have a tough challenge ahead. Uh, it seems Midas Club in game number two against Akatsuki are very far ahead. So it might be their next opponents, which will be fun Ooh. because you're going to get then some Brazilian versus Brazilian action in the South American qualifiers. And that is not always something that you expect, considering those are the only teams with Brazilian players in them, uh, Heroic and the Midas Club. But yeah, I think uh, Infinity look really good. Um, not as good, of course, as Heroic, but uh, you could definitely see them win that series. The problem is I think Heroic have a slightly more improved uh, macro game. Uh, I, mm -hmm. they, they were pretty good on the objectives, knew when to take a fight, knew when they were strong, whereas I think Infinity were more banking on their star power in, in the team, which obviously they have, but Heroic, even with a terrible lane that the Valama had in game number one, had a little bit of impact game two. He, I mean, he had some weird scuffs going on this series, but I think KJ looked sublime in the series, K1 as well. Analog looked really good as well in this series. So uh, big props to Heroic on their dub. But there is still a long road ahead forward towards Dream League 23. Yeah, there's there's definitely. And I mean, just going back to the whole Brazilian versus Brazilian point you get you made. Not only it's Brazil versus Brazil, but former teammates, right? VKS, Costa Bill playing against Analog and KJ. They used to be allies now. They're pinned against each other if Midas Club wins, but as you said, it does feel like they're going to take it. Uh, this is going to be awesome to watch. You know, for the Brazilians, it might be a bit sad, but it does mean at least one Brazilian is going through, which for us is definitely a blessing. We don't get to see that very often. Yeah, that's uh, definitely going to be a big plus for at least the Brazilian audience. But for us, it will be a short break. We'll be back for more Dota. I think Boom Esports versus Lavi Esports, is that the game that we're doing next? That is yes. indeed correct. Okay, Boom Esports versus Lava Esports will be next. And that match will start in a give or take an hour and a half, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll see you back in an hour and a half on this channel for that match. Don't forget to check it out. Boom Esports versus Lava Esports. My name is DK Truman. I was joined by the lovely Bowie and we'll be back after the break.
It starts with this A person that you miss Mind draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself Thank <laughs> you.
It starts with this A person that you miss Mine draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself
Like 
starts with this A person that you miss Mind draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself
Welcome back, ladies and gents. We have ourselves another match up in the upper bracket. Myself covering it together with the wonderful Bowie. This is looking to be a, a pretty interesting match. Of course, we had a really good series previously, but now we got Lava Esports versus Boom Esports coming up in the upper bracket. Oh, yeah, we do. Uh, a boom that, you know, did fairly well during uh, Gamers of the Future, right? They got fourth place against a set of teams that were honestly pretty respectable. Entity was playing. Uh, they ended up losing to IG. Uh, and further ahead, they also qualified to Elite League. They 3-0 Beast Coast in that qualifier. So, yeah, I mean, boom definitely, at least to me, looks like one of the top three for this tournament as well. They are playing against uh, respectable Lava Esports. You know, they have some big names. Lumiere, probably the, the biggest one. Uh, I can't help but feel like this this one is uh, is a big skill gap. And uh, I, I don't know how you feel. I, I do feel like uh, this, this one is, is very tough for Lava. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be easy. I, I do think that Lava have a couple of players that are very... Uh, solid i think uh their supports are really good uh lumiere uh, has good moments he's not always like the most perfect player but he has some games where he is very impressive obviously you're up against because who is well, a renowned player and a very scary uh, opponent to go up against but i'm curious about uh how james and frank are going to be performing this time around i've uh they're they're a bit of a hit and miss for me yeah, that's that's what I mean. I feel like, to me, when I look at Lava, the the standouts are Lumiere and Gardic for sure. Like Gardic has uh, played for a lot of big big teams. You know, I think he was on the cups of being one of those uh, position fives on SA that got the respect that he maybe deserved. But he was always outshined by the Beast Coast and the Thunder Awakens. Uh, but yeah, the three, the four, and even James. To be honest, uh, I'm not sure if they are at the same level as some of the other teams here in this tournament. But, you know, they're going to have to to beat Boom or they will be dropped to the lower bracket to fight whoever loses between Beast Coast and Starbucks. And to be honest, that is going to be a very tough match no matter who they'll face because Beast Coast, yeah, they lost to Boom, but they were still second place in the qualifiers for um, Elite League. And then you have the Starbucks, which they have... MNZ, Dark Mago, Sacred, Michael, and Yor. Like, that is a stacked team remaining. as well. These qualifiers are ruthless. Radiant team back. Yeah, a lot of scary teams uh, to face up against, but right now we do have the start of the draft. A couple of bands coming in. Uh, the DK band makes a lot of sense. The Undying band, what? Yeah, I mean, it is a, you know, it's a favorite of our boy Gurdick. Maybe they just feel like playing Centaur. Maybe they just feel like playing those uh, melee offlaners here, Centaur Mars, and they feel like the Undying is good. Or maybe they want to play Pudge. We saw that hero being countered by Undying DNA qualifiers yesterday. So one man can hope. A man can hope indeed, but I doubt we get to see a Pudge because we're not that lucky. You're always just lucky. cutting my wings, man. Always, always. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta keep you grounded. Yeah, it's okay. Void ban first phase. We're kind of talking about this hero being, you know, uh, no, nerfed over remaining. and over again. Still first phase banned by Lava. That's, uh, that's fairly interesting. Remaining. Like, do you, would you ever expect a team to first phase Void, even if it's Pakas? I mean, yeah. Like, the Void still keeps winning a lot. Uh, even with the nerfs coming in. I, I I was looking at the other, like, uh, tournaments and qualifiers that are playing up right now. And almost all of them had Voids in it. It's The hero is just too good. The rest of the heroes got nerfed. Chrono is still insane. He's obnoxious. Laning stage-wise, he's actually still one of the stronger ones. It's decent for sure um well regardless we have this last man here for boom out of the heroes they're strong bat rider still kind of uh, 
calls my caught my eye as they will ban the Doom. I wouldn't be surprised to see the bat trader being picked up. I think it's probably the strongest hero left. We sometimes see that first phase crystal maiden as well. It really depends on Oh, that's that guy as well. Did go through the first phase. Okay, we get to see the Primal Beast up against the Mars. Uh, yeah, they kind of work against each other in that regard. Obviously, Primal Beast is a BKB builder, but the arena blocks the, the Primal Beast pretty nicely. You can also spare him if he charges right towards you. It's an okay pick and a possible setup for if you want to get a ranged carry, like a Drow Ranger or something, uh, to block out the enemy. Yeah, for sure. Definitely, definitely like that here. And I, I like that you brought up the Drow Ranger because uh, having that E against the Mars Arena is a way for the Drow to still feel relevant, even though Arena is usually a counter to most of the ranged heroes. Uh, surprised they also ban Morphling on Boom because that is a pretty good hero for them and also a Pakas hero. But maybe, you know, they, they feel like Morphling is going to be good against other heroes they want to pick up as the invoker wow. second pick what in the god's earth's happening here okay that's a bit of a surprise um yeah i assume it's going to be the mid uh, invoker uh, unless we're going to get to see some weird pulse four invoker surprises coming in which would be uh, still pretty hilarious but yeah uh i guess it's okay against the primal because you have multiple ways of interrupting his charge you can do tornado and such to be a bit more obnoxious but second pick is uh, not where i would have expected the Voker to come through yeah not at all zero isn't that popular can dispel the inks well but for the lane here this grimstroke primal should be ruthless very curious to see how lava is going to try and deal with that i guess oracle is an early game dispel that you can have against that inks well even having the fates edict doesn't hurt against primal but it is kind of a one uh dimensional type hero that not a lot of it's just not that popular unless there's like a bat rider or a faceless void in the game uh, it does work well with the Primal Beast and the Crystal Maiden as a combo at the very least. Uh, speaking of which, Crystal Maiden did get a pretty hefty nerf. Uh, the shard cost oh, went from 50 to 150. I have no idea what Lava Esports is doing, but I'm all for it. We get to see some new Dota coming in into this game. I guess it's Shadow Fiend safe lane with a Clockwork 5. Does make sense. Uh, that hero got some pretty big buffs with the mana cost. So he does feel like here ESF maybe got a bigger buff than mid, right? Just because he would struggle with mana a bit more than mid would ever. At the same time, uh, it does feel like yeah, they're very squishy. Um, Shadow Fiend against Primal. Yes, the Clockwork is a big counter to Primal. Uh, so I do like that. And, uh, I can help but feel like once the laning stage breaks the shadow fin can be hunt over and over again uh we'll see we'll see i i just feel like boom esports looks a bit more cohesive right a bit more sure we got a new patch but it feels like lava is like 50 days ahead of the patch right now hopefully they're right because most of the heroes they picked up they get a couple of buffs and now boom you can probably pick your I carry if you want that. to there we go Troll Warlord. So you got the Troll Crystal Maiden lane up against a Mars plus one or Mars Foker. We don't know that yet. Just yet. Yeah. I think it's going to be... Yeah, I mean, you're right. They have 24 on Lava, so Ten picking support remaining. is always a bit underwhelming unless you pick something amazing, which I'm Five not sure remaining. that option even exists. Boom is probably going to, you know, if they ban supports here, we'll know that they know that they play support Invoker. Yeah, we'll see what the bands will entail towards. What about like, uh, I mean, if they are playing Core Invoker, uh, I think Willow and Hoodwink are pretty good, just having burst damage, but they're banning cores here. Or, I mean, Gaswind Ranger could be a support, but not at all a common support right now. Yeah, that's a. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't really give away exactly what they banned out. The Wind Ranger removed. Wouldn't be that bad laning against Troll until 
I guess Troll Aghanim Scepter is really bad for Windranger eventually to deal with. Yeah, for sure. Now, Lava, you want to ban either offlaners or mid heroes. That Primal just kind of. I really feel like he's going to be a Primal Grimstroke lane. It's it's really strong. So, yeah, just ban mid heroes. Pango, apparently, still good enough to be banned and picked. We did see Analog winning the last game of the last series with it. Uh, what else? Any gap closers, right? You have this SF. You want to make sure that he can stand up and fight. Yeah, it's also the the big question if this is going to be a primal mid or a primal off lane that's still flexible. You don't want to really lane it against the clockwork. Uh, so you might flex it towards that mid position where it should be okay, I guess, against the Voker. It could actually also still be an SF mid, surprisingly enough, with the Voker 4. And then they get a different uh, safe lane. I just that is don't, true. Don't, that don't is know true. what the SF would otherwise... I mean, I assume they're still just going for support on Lava Esports, but there's so many options they have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I honestly hope they pick the support because I'm not sure I believe in, in Volker support. Uh, they do ban the Magnus, though. Displacement, name of the game here. It is gap close and displacement at the same time. Thing is that this Shadow Fiend hero hates... And boom, still trying to figure out here exactly if they're dealing with Invoker Core support. Oh, Naga ban, okay. I've no idea what they're thinking right now on <laughs> Boom Esports. Lycan. Yeah, yeah got the coming. Helm of the Dawn buffs, right? Yeah, and it's been creeping up in my pubs, so now I finally get to see why. Hopefully, possibly. Is this the mid Lycan? Uh huh. I don't think so. I think if you put like mid, they'll they'll go. I mean, obviously you don't know who's gonna pick each, but if you see mid like you probably just wreck it with SF, right? Oh, you put the Mars mid. Actually, Lycan against Mars is kind of wild that you even dare to go that route. Yeah. He's but like in the safe lane, in the off lane, is also gonna be trashed by the SF. So. Tough choices, tough choices. Lava Esports, what's it going to be? Kaboom can you always fle some... flex between the Primal and Lycan and mid, so that's the, the one scary factor that they have. Maybe even, oh no, I was thinking, maybe the good old Troll plus four and then the Lycan safe lane, but that would just be freaking insane. <laughs> yeah, Lycan doesn't strike me as a Pakas hero. He's definitely more of a Troll kind of guy. Now for Lava here, I think they, you have to either go for Wave Clear so that you can deal with uh, the push of the Troll and the Lycan, or you need to go for more of a control type build so that you can kill this Lycan even through the Shapeshift. Um, the question is whether you do that by picking a support or a core. Okay, it's there's the bat right. It was left in the pool until the very end. And it but it's will... again a Kinvoker. Yeah, so it is going to be a mid bat rider, right? <laughs> going to have to reach. What is happening? Uh, it is a. Yeah, so I have no wait, idea who's who. Do they have a who? standing or is uh, Lava? Who, who, who's is Frank? James who's James? <laughs> is Jay, okay. is Wonder Kid James or is Wonder Kid yeah. Frank? Eh. Wait, actually, no, no, no. Devil, Devil is Frank for sure, so Wonder Kid should be the mid player. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, okay, then Wonder Kid is uh, t -t 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 James. Okay, yes. so then he will be up against, on the opposing side, the mid Primal with the offlane Lycan. So Primal versus Batrider should be okay-ish enough. Uh, let's see, the lane Shadow Fiend, Clockwork versus a Lycan plus Grimstroke. That's a bit of a... Weird lane uh, from Boom Esports. I think they're la that lane should struggle from them a little bit. And Evoker Mars versus a Crystal Maiden Troll. Yeah, I I, I think they're going to struggle a bit on the Lava side of the laning stage. Yeah, because uh, the clock was supposed to counter this Primal in the lane, but now that it's mid, 
I feel like the Lycan can just man up to the clock, right? The wolves have magic resistance to have two units. So it's hard for the clock to really commit. Not that it means that the Shadowfin is going to have a hard time, but it's not as strong as a lane Prepare as it would be battle. if the Primal was off lane. So I think lane-wise, Boom did a good job. They were able to, despite not having overall aspect, get a good game going on. My question is, how much would this Primal struggle against the Bat? Because I feel like, just because of Uproar, you should be unkillable. Like, the slow is way too much. That the Bat Rider, unless he has like 7, 8, 9 stacks of Napalm, shouldn't get on top of Zlatim's. Yeah, I think Zlatim should be... Uh... Normally a okay. Uh, the one problem though is you can get bumped in in your onslaught charge by flame yeah. break, and I think that's the deadliest part of it. So that the uh, primal beast like can't run away, and that actually could be very dangerous for the primal. Mm -hmm. It's a decent slow as well, fifteen percent. But you do get uh, forty, right? Yeah, forty with a pro. So should be. It's going to be interesting. You know, whoever gets boots first. There's a lot of intricacies here in this lane that, to be honest, I'm not that aware of. Batrider mid is just not something that's very common. Uh, at least not competitively. The battle begins. And it looks to be a two for two bounty rune trade. No big surprises coming through at the start of the game. Uh, but yeah, we didn't do the little prediction game. Who do you think is going to take that game at number one? Hmm. Boom. That was fast. Light control. Light control. Yeah, him, true. Right? At one point, you give him ags and you have a troll going completely haywire in the team fight. Yeah. They have a greedy line up on lava. So maybe if this goes like Giga late, you know, have gonna have this Batrider invoke your support. So Alacrity on a Shadowfin. They definitely have a really good push on lava as well, even though. It is worse than Boom just because they have Lycan and Tron the same team. It's a bat right a said, core, not a support. Yeah. It's the clock is this, support. I think it's gonna be like a Witchblade bat. I feel like that has the Witchblade Parasma build on Bat Rider is probably the best, you know, the highest DPS you can go for. Yeah, I think they might be lacking in DPS if he doesn't go for anything uh, aggressive in that build or it also depends exactly what Frank's gonna go for. But probably gonna be more of an initiator in this game so that he can get the arena onto the Lycan. Speaking of bottom lane, uh, Gardic actually is not gonna be able to do much against it. It's, you are very right that Battery Assault's kinda useless in that lane. Also, the Lycan, once he gets a couple of points in Feral Impulse, his right click damage onto creeps is insane. Oh, yeah. Universal hero, baby. Boom Esports looking good in the first couple of waves so far. Yeah, I had in every single lane. Even this Shadow Finn, like, he's supposed to be a super scary boy. But uh, obviously, right, you don't have that much mana. You have to play a bit more patient. And they don't have a, bas a bassy builder in this lane as well. Not the strongest showing here from this safe lane of lava. Lich is doing a terrific job at microing the creep. Like a wolf blocks the small camp from spawning, so they don't even have to spend a sentry for it. There's the ink spell onto Gardic. It goes bottom lane. It's a little bit spooked up. Uh, they also are running out of mana pretty quickly, but it is a, a definite big threat that they have to be careful of in the yeah. bottom lane. This lane should be better eventually for the SF, right? You get a couple of stacks and. Should be able to CS the Lycon or at least like bully him a lot. But uh, that first level definitely was really nicely played by Boom. Uh, we're also gonna get Lotus and it looks like Lavas might get uh, Lotus on both sides because the lanes are pushed in both side lanes. I'm curious to see what the Pokemon build is gonna be. It's probably gonna be drums because I think everyone build uh, all the sports build drums in this patch. Mm -hmm. As Satham also forced TP back, otherwise he would. Uh... Take too much damage from one kid who doesn't even have a point in Firefly yet. Just uh, two it's not a bad vessel break. game, right? Against like and uh, yeah, control. I think so. I would love 
to eventually see a, a, an Aghanim Scepter with the arena, but that is way down the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe if this goes late, we could see it. You know, you get a refresher from Roshan. Maybe you get eggs from Roshan and just buy a refresher. As top lane, they're going for the Panda here. So Maiden tends to be one of the weak heroes. The EMP drains all of his mana. Same with Pegasus' mana, but he's got Fervor stacks going in onto Devil. Trying to get the kill. Devil has a Spear of Mars in a second. Speaking of which, Pakas needs to be careful that he doesn't get taken down. But Pakas didn't target the single other hero just yet. Speaking of which, Janik gets the Invis off and will be able to walk to safety. Pakas is uh, doing a good job at at least zoning Devil. And might even consider trying to kill him. Oh. Especially now that Devil missed his Spear underneath the tower. Because has Ooh, one more whirling axes, but a good tornado makes sure no damage comes through. Good uh, pathing by Panda as well, tanking some of those tower hits. Maybe Bouncy. it was a chance for another spell to connect, but now Panda is also very low. Bottom lane, Gardic chasing in after night. Grimstroke. Yeah, it's just Inkswell versus Battery Assault. Annoyance on both sides, and Satham was looking to possibly go top side, but we'll just, I guess, take a quick stack. The observer would even has full vision of him. Yeah, he'll just stack it. He is struggling in that mid lane against the Bat Rider. One the kid has forced him back multiple times. Yeah, it's definitely annoying. Uh, at the same time, though, LH with 11 denies. Sure, the Shadow Fiend recovered slightly, but uh, the experience war here uh, actually on the side of village. Slatham well, uh, closing in on his level 6. Also, the fact that he's not on the map, they don't know where he is currently, makes uh, the side lanes a bit more scared. Primal Beast could uh, start gargling from nowhere and charging in one to get his level 6. Slatham needs to be careful. Actually underneath the tower. Fortification perfectly done by one to get so that the creep Lasso? did not die. Lasso Slatham is dead first blood secured. Yeah, this was this was top tier for one to get. He mm -hmm. gets pulverized underneath the tower, but because of the fortification, the tower doesn't focus him. And uh, there was a creep with a fifth of his HP that just soaked up all the tower damage. Yeah, I mean, really good last pick. They definitely showcased a lot of prowess there. As Janik is really low, but will not die to Panda. Doesn't have enough mana. Um, time for the Wisdom Runes here. Uh, can you steal any of those? Doesn't look like it. This Crystal Maiden is definitely not stealing it. And Garnick might maybe... steal it. Gardic could. Oh, they're actually diving underneath the tower to try and kill off Illich. And yeah, he should drop here. He's actually close oh. range. Lumiere dies in response. But they do manage to get the kill first. However, that does also mean that you'll lose a couple of those nice souls. Uh, Rating swell on the wolf by Knight and Gardic. Get, I think he's gonna get a wisdom. Yeah. Knight is kind of stuck. And Gardic will be able to steal. I'm surprised that Knight let that one through. Yeah, he, he, he like stayed in the lane to, for a creep. Yeah, that was a big mistake from Knight. And now Gardic. Knight? No, no. Nope, because the Ancients were attacking Knight instead. Alright. Not too shabby. Even gets a respect tip from Knight. Or maybe it was not a respect tip, but he definitely did, ended up going for the right move. You know, especially when you have supporting Volker, you want to make sure that uh, you get that extra wisdom room as he will be beaten now, like little kid. And there's the quick charge right afterwards. Genic taken down, looking for more Gardic with the battery assault. Lasso onto the troll, he's not level 6 yet, so doesn't have a way out. Stuck inside the cogs, and that is because... ...will falter. So they are finding some good response kills every single time here on the side of lava. For sure, this is... Much better than I expected, honestly. Uh, especially the side lanes as Wonder Kid doesn't have Firefly. Has travels though. Yeah, he's fast. He'll be able to get out of that Gardic even walking back into the enemies to make sure that the 
he will be the one sacrificing his life instead. Panda going for a wrap around the top lane. Finds Devil. Have enough slows. Uh, starting off his fury of damage. Wanting Lotus, to get the kill. Spear, spear just a second too late. But draws underneath the tower and will burn to Wonder Kid, who, as you mentioned, has those bots, so he is pretty fast. Yeah, this is honestly huge. There's no TP on Pakas for 47 seconds. He's going to stay pretty far behind here, network wise. Already, I mean, Devil is having a terrible game, but uh, this, besides that, Lumiere and Wonder Kid having pretty much perfect games. Yeah, so far, so good for Lava. Uh, Knight is actually pretty farmed on the Grim so which is there a, yeah, there's a case to be made this game maybe for the Aghanim Scepter. Getting a Shadow oh, Fiend yeah. Illusion is really good. Definitely. That Illusion has so much move speed. It's crazy what you can do with it. As uh, Gardic just making sure Zlatan has a bad game. He can't really do anything. But he will. Well, Tornado comes out. EMP as well. There's going to be the Lasso drag back the Primal Beast. He's out of mana. Does oh, he, he managed missed. to get away. Slapped him, drop him low. Baptist Soul taking him down. But actually, he does have the upper to force one to get back. Has the pulverize as well if he wants to go for a play. But no, he'll just try and disengage. Knight's going to die. Slap him with the pulverize. Control him. Yeah, actually gets interrupted trying to get the Shadow Rays off. We'll get it off in the end. The two for two trade. And yeah, wreck him of souls and immediately TP out. He oh. does not want to last in that area. That's a CM with boots and wind lace. It's just not fast enough to get the frostbite off. That's so sad. Just so slow. I mean, this is great for Lava, right? They're they're getting all these kills. This Bat Rider is snowballing. Shadow Fiend doesn't die. Tro is having. He doesn't even have a single component for his battle fury. I mean, a 10. Yeah, because it's uh, surprisingly. I mean, he does have a lot of decent big small items. He also went for that infused raindrop to stay alive a little bit longer. But yeah, only you can see at least one piece at this stage. In the meantime, one to get towards mid gets taken down. Illich kills off Gardic in the bottom lane. So, okay, boom, make there a bit go. of a recovery there. Try and uh, get back curse. In the game. Right yeah, there. obviously. Well, Pagas still doesn't have his battle uh, base for Battle Fury, so uh, technically we didn't curse him just yet. But yeah, uh, I, I think the problem this game is, yeah, the Troll Warlord doesn't have that much farm, but Illich is really big. Uh, he's going to get that Helm of the Overlord in no time as well. And at that point, they have nothing uh, against the, the, the Ancient Creep. Yeah, and at the same time, Devo is having a terrible game, right? He's behind, almost behind Knight. He's not even close to a Blink Dagger. He's, in fact, 2,200 gold away from a Blink Dagger. Uh, while this Lycan is going to create a lot of space. He already has almost enough gold for his ultimate orb. And will smoke towards the mid lane here. Has Shapeshift and Helm of the Dom. Yeah, he's uh, looking to go for a fight towards mid. There's the Inkswell, Warplane Raider charging forward. Go Tornado. And Lasso on to slap him, drag the Primal Beast back. They also have the Arena. No one else is going to get caught because Illich runs to the side. Hookshot onto Panda Soulbind onto two though. And this Lycan Shapeshift is about to end, so they have to disengage. And there will be a two for one trade. Uh, Lava is not too uh, angry about. But it does give Pakaz some free farm time to get closer. I mean, I gotta say, somehow Lava was aware that uh, this Grimstroke was gonna come through, so they that tornado dispelled the Inkswell on the creep and cancelled the Primal Beast OT. That was like the highest value tornado I've probably seen in my life. So yeah, I mean, if if there is actual, it, it was so early. I don't know how they knew they were gonna still end with a game where. His Invoker has a lot of value, but uh, it does. Like, just dispelling Inkswell and cancelling Primal from 1500 range away is always going to feel awesome. Well, yeah, obviously the, the spells that Invoker has are just top tier. Most important thing you need is experience, which he's lacking. He's level 5 uh, at 13 minutes into the game. That is actually pretty bad. And he also doesn't have his brown boots yet, so... 
currently genic obviously does have the urn of shadows but needs a lot more wants to get the aghanim shard as soon as possible because the drag back is really annoying for the primal beast and that's with two wisdom runes being picked up right imagine what his level would be if they haven't picked that one up i guess Thankfully to Invoker, his 6 doesn't matter as much as other heroes. Like, you want experience, but not necessarily level 6, so yeah, it's, it's fine. And Clockwork is about to finish the drums you mentioned, so Invoker did go for Urn, but they will have drums soon. Yeah, it's the... Uh, Invoker is just a greedy support, but it's also a support that if you actually don't get any farm, it is it can become still have some use because of all the utility spells but it does become really weak if you don't have any mobility uh or levels that's why you see a lot of uh, focus just go for the hannah Midas, just so that they can get some levels mm -hmm. as we do see a little attack. bit of a uh, panda jungling action he's going to be scouted by janik here just waiting for the connection panda lassoed up Held in place, Panda taken down, when the kid gets that kill secured, quick easy pick. And there's an ancient black dragon in mid, taking some damage, that's 250 gold right there. I do like the change yeah. that they made on the helm of the overlord, to do get the gold from the uh, yeah. dominate tree. It was really good, especially for the ancients, as they will kill Mr. Devil. Did get to farm a little bit, he's still really far behind, but... He, all, all he needs is the Blink Dagger. That's going to enable both the Shadowfiend and the Batrider even more. Shadowfiend, by the way, is gigantic. Level 12. Yeah, going... Wait, is that Mantis style then? Oh. No, he's just going for the uh, Dragon Lands after yeah. the Yasha. Casual Yasha. Uh, yeah, one thing also about this new Helm of the Overlord is... Uh, you do get the ultimate orb with it, so in general you have 21 extra all attributes, and Lycan is universal. Yeah. So he loves that right-click damage boost. It buffs up his uh, Feral Impulse because it's bonus damage off of his base damage. So yeah, he already does over 200 right-click damage per hit. And then you shapeshift, you get crit on top, it's, it's actually obnoxious how much damage you do. But just one item. It really is crazy. By the way, Grimstroke does have his shard now. So lasso, uh, spear, anything can be dispelled. But what about Panda? Will we dispel him? Not fast enough. Nah, you're not going to dispel a Crystal Maiden. You let that one just melt away to the flaming lasso from the Batrider. Oh, they oh, are set up scary, though, though. with a good ward. Yeah, Illich oh, walking no. in. He doesn't even shapeshift. He just walks in with that... Ancient creep and smacks away at his opponents. Now the shapeshift will come through. Lumiere, can he do anything in response? Nope. It's close, but no cigar. Illich will be able to uh, actually slap him once securing the kill. Wonder Kid just dies to the dot from the Phantom's Embrace. Four kills for Boom. And yeah, that is a turnaround that puts them quite significantly in the lead. The fact that they're always using Inkswell on the creeps of the Lycan is so clutch because the spear doesn't stop, it doesn't push the creep away. Uh, or at least not nearly as much as it does with the heroes. They couldn't really get the tornado to stop the Inkswell and then the cogs locked the creep with both Mars and Clockwork inside. So definitely a bit of a misplay on Lava, but it was still like taking that fight was a huge bet that they should have not taken. Yeah, I find it a little bit strange that you then get the shard on the Grimstroke and use it for that, but okay. <laughs> what do you mean? That you get the shard on Grimstroke and use it on a creep? Oh yeah, I mean, it's just because... I guess you could use it on Primal because he has BKB, but uh, everyone else will be pushed by the Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just like, you, you buy the shard, 1400 bucks, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to use it on a creep. Why, why do you get a shard then? Oh, why you do this? Do you think Crystal Maiden should get a... Oh, wait a second here. Should get a bonus for uh, being close to Lycan? Just because she is a wolf with this set? No. <laughs> I guess Primal <laughs> Beast should actually be getting a bonus. Oh, you are... Kinda right, yeah. I mean, 
actually should be more of a Beastmaster uh, bonus when he's near Beastmaster, which he does because he has the drums. Technically, yeah. you do get a bonus when you're oh. near the Beastmaster. Lumiere going in, Lumiere dropping low, taking down Slats and gets the kill. And now he is very much in tough spot. Nice arena onto two supports in the back line. Panda popping his freezing field ulti. He actually gets dragged back a little bit close to the fight. The last from one to get to try and kill off Slatham up the high ground he goes. The PKB was used by the Batrider, but the Batrider now has no PKB available, and bom bom bom, Knight gets the kill secured, and with that, it's looking like Lava is in trouble. Illich is a shapeshift chased after the devil. The devil was murdered. This lack on last week has been insane. You know, I gotta give it to Wonderkid, though. He had a really good first 10 minutes of the game, right? Really pressured the Primal Beast got some really clutch rotations. I, I really feel like Davo had no impact this game though. No. Like he's on a, he is now behind the Grimstroke. That's like how far behind he is. He's literally just a blink dagger. To be fair, it's impressive how much farming Knight has done this game on that Grimstroke. That's really fat. Especially getting the shard pre 20 minutes with a four staff. That uh, you rarely see Grimstroke have that much uh, net worth. Oh yeah, it is. But there's already an eggs on Pakas, by the way. He's been, he definitely struggled early on, but now has the full eggs for the dispel. Uh, you don't really dispel anything on you that's great, but you can dispel other things that are great. You can dispel. Well, there's some like the bat rider sticky napalm dots. The invoker with the uh, t -t 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 cold True, snap is arm. pretty annoying. Yeah. True. Um, that's that's about it, I think. Marslow, I guess, from God's Butte. But they have the lockdown for this troll. But he does have his ulti still. Uh, unless he gets controlled and dies. Huh. Ah, no, never mind. You, you could also just use the spell, but... Or the magic right. wand. I have a really hard question for you. Wait a second, Toro. Sun Strike doesn't, doesn't land. So... If you ink swell someone mm -hmm. and that person gets tornado and the Grimstroke cancel like dispels the tornado, does it do you still take damage from that? I'm actually baffled. I, I would assume the ink swell gets purged because of the tornado. Mm, it only purges afterwards though, right? Like it should dispel once you lay down, I think. Uh does it say? Huh. Let me actually, let me actually get into the most, the weirdest uh, discussions in our cast. Because we think of the most specific They literally ever. give that spell one massive grandiose deck, by the way. Unleashes a fast yeah. move grenade that picks up enemy units in its path, suspending them helplessly, helplessly in the air shortly before allowing them to plummet to their doom. What the what kind of edge lord has written this? <laughs> so what is it says that it applies the spell first, uh, and then the damage. But it doesn't say if it's after you're hit or after you land. Huh. Oh no, the damage is applied upon losing the pizza. Yeah, but this spell. That's like that's what yeah. I need to know. Because. I think, because he did have an inkswell on him during that fight. Yeah, I think then so. Then he got tornadoed, I so. but I don't think... It, dis it took away the... Like, it was, it was dark while he was in the air, right? Yeah, but if you dispel inkswell, doesn't it also pop? If it dispels before the normal duration, it should pop. But I guess... Yeah, I mean, this is complicated. Because if you can pop it while it's in the air as the Grimstroke, then it should stun, right? Even if it would be dispelled later. Yeah. This is, this is again, some testing stuff that needs to be done <laughs> in demo. You can make a quiz. Like, uh, yeah, how do make these... A compilation. Actually, that is a very good one, where you find these very yeah. niche uh, combinations. Make a YouTube series out of it. Yeah, I mean, there was a really fun one. Do you remember? I think we had, like, Excalibur and, like, a Gork. I think he had, like, a lot of pros or big streamers. And they were, like, it was a really good quiz as Devil. 
Okay, getting caught. There's also BKB Slatin gonna get lifted up oh. inside the arena now, and the return kill seems to be imminent here for Jenik. Foco rotation comes in. They're gonna quickly turn their attention towards the enemy Sormant, at least get that 1400 gold yoink away. Panda's happy, he's got the Crystal Clone, even though it costs a stupid amount of mana now. 150 for a hero that already has, like, he uses f Crystal Nova plus uh, Crystal Clone, and he's already at half mana. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's really dumb. This poor hero can't catch a break. But, you know, it is a strong shard, so... He actually can't use... If he gets level 12, he actually can't use all the spells. <laughs> You're right. Wait, wait, so, 400... 550... Oh. Gardic, goodbye. Yeah. Let me count. Die, just die, please. There we go. So, yeah, for 50, 600, 735. He actually can. If he, oh, wait. if he doesn't have four staff, he wouldn't be able to. Let's see. 400, 700, plus 150. He barely can. So it should be 800 something. Yeah, it's it's close to that. Without any stats, you definitely can't cast all of them. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So he has... With, he has to have perfectly full mana, otherwise he can't cast it. Mm -hmm. Like right now, By the way, cast it all. I'm surprised the SF didn't pick up the the shard, right? At least when I remember SF being like sort of viable as a right click carry, the, the shard was a big part of it. Just having that fear, you, you know, you can even cancel the the primal beast. You can mess with the troll OT. Uh, even cancel Crystal Maiden's OT. I feel like there's so much value in having that shard this game. He does queue it up now. It's also, you know, who cares about Crystalis? You've got a built in crit. Yeah, exactly. I guess now uh, that they change the way crits work, you do. They, they stack in a way, right? So it's 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 better than it used to be. But uh, I still feel like that shard's really good this game. Yeah, but he was prob. Let's see. Uh, Voker has actually Janik has a blink dagger. Okay. Huh. Oh wait, we're already 25 minutes into the game. He's actually pretty poor. But uh, I was surprised he actually had something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is two, three, and five, but right? he is not having that bad of a game. It's pretty much just Guardic and Devil with uh, most of the deaths. Guardic obviously has a. Plus five clock, you will die very frequently if you're losing just because you initiate and die. Uh, this invoker, there's still some potential. Good spear back. Going in, arena as well. Illich, he doesn't have a way out. No BKB available. Turns his attention to Gardic, gets the kill on to Gardic. Actually, Devil's gonna be the next target. Okay, hello, I can right click as well. And they find three kills on side of Boom. That should definitely not happen. And uh, yeah, now they're up on towards the high ground. That Lycan does do 300 auto attack damage and he crits for 200%. So he does 600 damage with crits. He has 3k HP as well when yeah, he's uh, that also helps. So <laughs> that definitely helps. An extra 350 that he gets. That's an enemy MP. It's noxious. Pops his Manta style so that the illusions can already start pumping for more. Oh, nice. Well save. Well save from Knight. He's playing absolutely peak right now on the Grimstroke. Uh -huh. Really good lane stage. Really good mid game as well. They will disengage without losing a single. Organic try to blink. Illich uh, has got pretty much the money for a full AC. So the SF's damage output's gonna substantially drop. Definitely will. And Knight is building up the Aghanim Sept. He's already got two pieces. He is still really farmed. Panda might, like Devil needs to be careful that Panda doesn't overtake him at this stage. Yeah, he does have a Nelvin Tunic, but it was like the biggest problem has been that he, he gets he gets ulted by a BKB Primal, and there's just no response, right? You have no save, you have no Lincolns, no Lotus Orb to cancel it out. So if, if Lumiere is the target that the Primal can find, it feels like Lava just doesn't have the damage. This uh, this Batrider is not 
necessarily weak right now, but he's not the main source of damage. He's the displacement, he's the initiation, but uh, also doesn't do anything for BKB besides having the OT. Fathom actually picked up the Psychic Headband on a Primal Beast. Ooh, that's nice. Cost range. I mean, the cost range obviously is pretty good with the Pulverize and the Rocket O, but it's not something you see too often. Or yeah, ever. Maybe he had some bad drops, right? Yeah, it could be that like, the other drops were like... Like, uh, let's say he got a Nemesis Curse, which is bad. And uh, Vindicator's Axe, and a Paladin Sword, right? Like those, all those would be pretty bad. And Chandler Quiver. Paladin Sword doesn't, Spell Life Steal isn't that bad on him. And it yeah, increases have any his base. HP regen, which currently he doesn't have it, but he's going for a heart. He also has Kai and Sand, so he already has that heal amplification. Spell amplification. As a primal beast player, I would get this. He has spell lifesteal amplification. Yes, yes. He would get yeah. spell. He doesn't have spell it's lifesteal. It's not he about spell, spell lifesteal. Life you just need to find the ESF. That's all he needs to do. Mm. I guess. Oh, they're gonna get a, a dinosaur here. That's the. That's a lot of money. A lot of money. That, that slaps his little brother. <laughs> I do think There's that Primal Beast, like after the whole uh, event where you had to kill him in uh, uh, Agonim's Labyrinth, I think it was. Mm -hmm. I think that was really cool that that was the way that they pretty much announced the new hero. Yeah. I, I miss those times, actually. There was some... Like, do you remember the first uh, Lunar Ear event? The one that, like, gave you... Like, you had to beat this boss with five people. Uh, and there was, like, a, a ranking. And it was, like, super hard. And it would give you, like, the silver and golden Roshan. Oh, yeah, yeah. What was that? What was the name of it? It was like... I have no idea. I, all of those yeah. names blur into each other for me. But I do love... I'm a big fan of, in general, games uh, like uh, roguelites and stuff, where yeah. you re redo the game pretty much. I don't know if I was younger, or if it's just nostalgia talking, but I remember playing that event so much, because like, you actually had good rewards for playing, and it was uh, cooperative type matchmaking, so it, it just made you kind of want to play with friends, and, and, and even Radiant sometimes I would play the normal queue, attack. and it was not bad. Wait a second here, because as I reminiscence, there is a fight brewing up. Look yeah. at the position, that's not a bad position from Lava. Oh, Gardic behind the pit, expecting to uh, possibly get a seal of the It's a bit scary though that he's also in the area. Quick There's wave to be cut on... by Wonder Kid. Okay, he actually lives. He, he had Adels on the SF. Like, if they find a good engagement, maybe. Uh, or maybe they were trying to sneak Roshan themselves, but at the end of the day, uh, they knew that Boom was there. They have to get the hell out. I think uh, Valve has done some really good events, by the way. Uh, some really good events. There's also like events where you pretty much play a normal game of Dota, but there's other stuff mixed in. Those are terrible. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I honestly prefer events that are cooperative. Uh, it just it just seems easier. Uh, now they will Roche here, and can Gardic steal this? He he has a lot of inventory slots actually. Okay, the Sun Strike will reveal it. Gar okay, this is a tough one. This is gonna be a, a, a rough snipe. They need the next sun strike really, but that's in 13 seconds. Does he have the timer correct? It's dropping low. Nope. Oh, so, so close! Aegis! <gasps> oh, he yes. had yeah, the possibility to pick it up there. It was right in front of him. Yep, indeed. Got right. a good opportunity to learn. You should have picked it there. <laughs> Alright, that was still pretty high. Like, somehow he got the timing. Very, very close there, but uh, anyways, uh, this this should be it, right? There's a 1% chance, boom, they would have to mess this up so 
hard and they have a lot of siege. What what even is the I have no BKB on this SF, so he can't really stand his ground even though you have Alacrity and the Daedal is on him. Yeah, the SF is uh a pretty easy hero to kill when the Lycan gets on top of him. Alright, I know what you have to do. You have to find a lasso, drums, oh. double four step on the light. He is gonna get lassoed. Never mind. He is looking to die. He's Actually, standing his ground. against Lumiere, but there's the alacrity buff that does significantly help Lumiere's output damage and a big kill that delays a push. Been secured. He is building up into the BKB, and once he gets that, though, that play will not be repeatable. 2k uh, H damage. Sorry, gold on Lumiere though after that gift, so he is. Relatively close to a Satanic, although he now switches it up for an MKB. And there might be a Tormentor engagement here at the same time. Yeah, Pagaz has the uh, Butterfly, obviously also the Evasion from the Whirling Axes, or Blind, I think it is. So, Tormentor, and Guardic gets a free shard. Alright, that's a good one. But they just... Uh, Controlling the area so they can push higher ground. They also have the shard on the lichen, which summons an extra nice little wolf on the sides every single time. I think that is probably more obnoxious than anything. Mm -hmm. Heart now up for Slatums, which is a nice item, but to be fair, this is a game where he only has 12 armor against the Shadow Fiend. Like, if, if they find a way to lasso the Primal Beast through Pulverize or... If they finish a Lotus Orb, which honestly, I'm not sure anyone is actually going for. You can kill this this Primal. Like, this SF does an absurd amount of damage. Well, they are going to go up the high ground, charge forward onto towards Lumiere. Shadow Fiend does get saved. The lasso onto two. Pulverize onto two, holding them in place. No way to run. There's going to be a Reckon of Souls to try and keep them alive. Genic is dead. Does have a vibe available. Rejoins the fray. But BKBs are on cooldown, everyone expended all their spells, Illich is trying to melt down the tower. Uh, Hookshot in on Picard, still has the age though, but the troll pops his ult, he goes brrrr. Slatham kicks down the clock from behind, and that is gonna be Megas in a couple of seconds. As the troll is full fervor stacks going mad on towards his bonus, Picard actually doesn't have a shard, which is surprising as hell, because I think that's one of the strongest bones of the troll, but a quick catch onto the Mier with the cool, short cooldown of Pulverize will kill off the SF. There will not be an SF joining the fight. Three hundred gold off the mark. Lava right click down by the Shadow Fiend Illusion because of the uh, Aghanim Scepter on the Grimstroke. And Fast in the enemy fountain is going to get pushed back. Still has the Aegis. But it looks to be game. Cardiff or shot in. They have no lasso for 25 seconds. And the Ancient is exposed without a fortification available. Yeah, this is... I mean, they have buybacks, they're not using it, they know. They just want to call it, they just don't want to call GG. Well, they will clean up this game on the side of whom they are going to dive the fountain for a good measure. Patrol, surprisingly enough, doesn't take any damage in the fountain, but it is going to be Boom Esports taking game number one pretty convincingly. It was very even during the laning stage, but afterwards when the actual macro gaming came through, it was all the Esports. Yeah, very similar to the other series of cast between uh, Heroic and Infinity. Uh, I felt like Boom just, just had a better game plan. They... Despite the fact that both Tro and Primo struggled, they were able to find farm for those heroes. Illich had an amazing Lycan game. I'm, I honestly, after this performance, you might have to reconsider banning the hero. Sure, they pick it because of that clock lane, but I, it's been a while since I've seen Lycan look that good, and I'm not sure if it's just the buffs that the Helm got, but I mean, he, he can definitely play Lycan. That was a smooth game for him. Yeah, he was looking very solid on the hero. Uh, it does help, of course, that some other heroes have been significantly nerfed with some changes. But, yeah, uh, I think we might see a bit more of a resurgence of the uh, those kinds of heroes. I've seen some Beastmasters pop up every once in a while. The Enigmas have obviously been coming back, so maybe we get micro-heroes. 
back in Dota. They have been missing for a bit. But uh, right now, that was game number one between Lava Esports and Boom Esports. We'll be going towards a short break. Get everything ready for game number two. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Let's go. 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Game number two will be starting right now. As you can see, we're jumping into the draft immediately. My name is Zika Truman, and I'm joined by the wonderful Bowie. Game number two, do you expect something similar to game number one in terms of draft, or will Lava flip it upside down? Well, they were they started flipped upside down, honestly. I want them to go back to normal. Uh... I think they had some interesting ideas with the Shadowfin clockwork. Uh, honestly, that Batrider last pick was great. I feel like Wonder Kid uh, kind of sold me on that. The real problem was the offlane. Um, and just the way that they played the mid game. So I feel like Lava, you need stronger lanes to be able to um, kind of snowball a little bit more up on Boom. Uh, first of all, I I think they first picked Mars, right? Which it should be fine. I just feel like the, the here they paired it up with just wasn't that strong of a pairing. You know, we used to see the Hoodwinks and just the Muranas. I, I just, I, I didn't feel that much impact, honestly, coming from that Invoker. Like, later on, he had impact. But the laning stage weight of having that Invoker kind of just destroyed Devil's game, to be honest. Yeah, it wasn't uh, ideal for the side of uh, Lava Esports, but they did have some pretty nice moves coming out of them, especially one kid in that mid lane, as you mentioned. Looked pretty okay, but I think uh, Boom Esports in general, they had a better control of the game all the way through. Uh, their laning stage had a little bit of a problem here and there, but Pagaz looked like he was broke. And then we looked away and we looked back and he had uh, Battle Fury, Aghanim, Scepter. And I was like, oh, okay, Pagaz is rich. Um, that, that's how fast the man can farm. And you need to stop that consistently, which is not easy to do if you're uh, Lava Esports this game. Yeah, I think they had definitely the better... They, they played the mid game better, but they also had the better heroes, which is why I love that they steal this Primal Beast away. I feel like uh, they, they had some untested heroes in this patch, right? The Shadow Fiend, uh, even the Clockwork remaining. to some degree. Uh, this Primal Beast is such a strong hero. I, I love that they Radiant steal it for themselves. Back. Whether it's going to be Devil's Hero, Wonder Kid, honestly, doesn't matter. I feel like the hero is just solid through and through. Uh, you could also just pick the Grimstroke for yourself if you want to. We'll see if Bumi Sports is going to ban it, if they're going to pick it. Usually, it's kind of weird to just pick two supports at the same time, like uh, one after the other. But, uh, yeah, I, I feel like that is a pairing we saw Boom Sports use really well in that game. Yeah, the, the Grimstroke Crystal Maiden looked pretty nice. Knight had an insane laning stage, and then afterwards just uh, really made it hurt for his opponents even got the ags at the very end to get the sf illusion we get another boom esports ban of the undying so no guardic undying again that's a lot of respect that they give the enemies plus five that is true don't see that undying ban too too much um, they will go for the green stroke all right you definitely don't want to leave that one open. It is also a counter to the Primal BC in many ways. His Dispel doesn't take away the bug off because it's a silence. You can remove the, the Pulverize with the... Honestly, I'm not sure if you remove the Pulverize Ten with uh, the Inkswell. Yeah, you do. Do you? Because I guess... Yeah, you, re you don't need a Dispel. You just need a stun, right? Well, that... But if he has a BKB and does the Pulverize, then it Dispels. Okay. Well, regardless of that, Lava now needs to pick a pairing here. And the techie seems like a really good one. Set up for the onslaught, a lot of burst damage, two very squishy supports on the side of Boom. Yeah, if this is going to be an offlane primal beast, that Crystal Maiden, uh, yeah, if you get stunned up by the techies with the blast off, then primal beast on top, you're, you're very dead. Crystal yeah, Maiden get your cast. is not any spells. Yeah, it doesn't have much HP. There we go. That's a hero that was totally forgotten about. And I, I'll be honest, I think I've cast 30 games of Dota maybe this month. I have not seen a single bench pick or maybe... I think Insania 
played it a little bit uh, in, in the Terminator minute. casting, but that that's about it. Like, didn't very, he, very, didn't very. he pick and send it? He picked it three times in a row. Yes, but up until that point, <laughs> I there was not like in 735e, uh, wait, uh, in the last patch, I was just not seeing this hero at all. And I think, I think it was C last uh, patch. Yeah, I think this hero is much better than competitive Dota leads us to believe. And I'm kind of a Venge hater. I find a hero to be very boring. It is boring. Well, it's yeah. slightly better these days with some of the changes, yeah. but it's still... Uh, I don't like playing it either because it just feels so dull most of the time. Mm -hmm. But it's a great save, uh, especially against something like an arena catch. Uh, you can save your allies, you die, but, you know, that's a sacrifice you are supposed to make at that stage. Lena as well. That could easily be a Slatter mid Lena or a safe lane Pakaz Lena. So there is that flex potential for them on the last pick. I would be surprised if it's scary. I think it's going to be mid. I feel like you can't flex the primal mid if the Lena is there. And CM Lena seems like a really weak lane yeah, uh, against true. what they have. I mean, it is the sisters so. combo, so for lore's <laughs> sake, it does work, but that's... Yeah. And uh, PA, huh? Another PA pick here. We'll see how good it's going to look. We did see it lose, even though Parker maybe. was relatively farmed with the PA in the last series. Uh, they, they do have some minus armor combinations, and it is a counter to Lina just because of that gap close. As long as you get BKB here on the PA, uh, Lumiere yeah. shouldn't really fear anything. If this is right click Lina, though, it is a Silver Edge builder, so that's one plus against the PA, possibly. True. Uh, Silver Edge or MKB, we'll see what the Lina. We'll choose. Everyone's as, banning the uh, Bloodseeker last phase. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the buff was honestly quite significant, especially when you consider that a lot of the top tier carries did get nerfed. Morphling didn't, though, right? I don't remember seeing any Morphling nerfs. I don't to be fair, I haven't seen Morphling being picked in a while either. It always but it's gets always banned. second phase. Yeah, yeah, it always gets banned, but no one picks it. It's. It's not strong enough to first phase, but uh, it's strong enough to always be second phase ban. It's kind of in a really weird spot right now. As uh, boom, there. Uh, what do you have to ban here? Enough? I guess they ban Razor. I, I'm not sure they were gonna be going for that, but uh, if they feel like they can still play the primal mid, and Razor would be good against their carry. I guess Life Stealer is open. Maybe that's what they're going. They're for They're expecting here. this to be a Slatum Mars, I guess. Which it does. Yeah. It's not the weirdest. Slatum does play Mars mid. Uh, he actually is. Really you mean good. Wonder Kid, right? Uh. Oh yeah, sorry, one, one uh, I'm very confused. Uh, on on the other side, my bad. Uh, yeah. yeah, so they expect the primal beast to be a mid lane, and interesting. That is interesting. I would have expected it to be off lane actually with the techies. Well, they do have twenty three here for lava, so hopefully, you know, ideally. You have to pick a hero that can flex a little bit. You know, DK would have been great. Razor would have been great. Um, Magnus would also be great. All of them are banned as they take away the famous Bakaz Faceless Void. Okay. Oh, there's your flex. Uh, uh, or I guess I mean, not a flex. That has to be mid. <laughs> uh, Unless you're going to do Vengeful Spirit offlane. Yeah, Which I, I hope it's mid invoker. <laughs> yeah, that should be a mid invoker for Wonder Kid. Uh, I mean, the Wonder Kid is a name that does really ring a bell like it's going to be an invoker. Against mm -hmm. the Lena, yeah, that's that's an okay matchup. Invoker should still get completely stomped. Well, not completely, but should have a tough time against Lena mid normally. Uh, but that's because Lena wins against everything. Yeah, as long as he gets uh, reliable EMPs, you know, you, you can actually stand your ground a little bit. She's not going to always be able to get the stacks off with her spells. The first levels are rough, but I think he gets better for the Invoker as Boom. And I mean, Invoker Phantom Assassin, right? Just having that alacrity in the late game fight is always very strong. Minus armor from the Venge. Uh, alacrity with the primal spells. They definitely have a 
this is a really good lineup from Lava. I, I like it a lot. And even though they have overall last pick on Boom, it doesn't seem that easy to get that perfect pick for Akaz. A lot of the good carries were taken away. This Lina, as we said, I think Invoker is actually a good matchup uh, out of the possible ones. So what do you even pick here to counter PA? Uh, Drow is pretty bad this game. Morphling is banned, Void is banned, Bloodseeker is banned. Sven Troll is again. awful. Troll is not bad, but he have some Kite with the Venge. Yeah, but you're gonna have Kite on almost everything. Uh, unless you mm. go for some off brand. Let's just go Pudge. Let's go Rikimaru, Pakas. Rikimaru. Oh, oh my god, I'm amazing. Sometimes you really I'm are. amazing. I, I was like, Pakas, I know he plays Pudge. But I actually didn't expect him to pick Pudge, but he actually did pick Pudge. Okay, that's that's Pog. Huh, Pudge against Primal. Uh, it, I mean, Flesh Heap is amazing against Primal. The damage instances are very small, so you pretty much don't care about uh, Devil once you have level 3 or 4, depending on when Pakas thinks it's worth it to have that spell. Uh, they have a lot of kill potential, right? The Frostbite into Hook, if there's no creeps in between. I do feel like they don't scale as much as Lava, though. I feel like this is actually like super late game. PA should have a field day against their draft. Against most, I think Silly struggles against Pudge as a hero. Uh, the Pudge's ulti, uh, the, the Aghanim Scepter is just obnoxious as everything can be. But they do have saves against the uh, ulti, at the very least, with the Vengeful Spirit swap. And the Primal Beast can always interrupt it with his uh, Pulverize. But uh, I'm going to go with Boom Esports. I think that, yeah, the Pudge is not the... I mean, he is really strong, and PA could possibly the, the team could possibly kill him. But I also think that you should never forget that they're playing with the Slatum Lena, and that is also not. The, he's probably going to go right click Lena. Actually, I'm not sure if he goes right click Lena. They are very squishy on the side of lava. Yeah, I mean that's. Uh, I think Ags is honestly pretty good this game, but. Uh... Yeah, going going for magic build against Invoker is a bit annoying, right? You're always going to be out of mana. <laughs> they do have a lot of gap close, so just having like a pike this game is amazing for the Lina to be able to kind of get some distance from the PA, get some distance from the Primal. I, I, I actually think I prefer the right click, uh, even though they're squishy on Lava. I feel like it's not about how much damage the Lina can output, it's about the fact that she can definitely die to the burst damage of lava and there is the only save is the inkswell shard i guess yeah. maybe pudge shard <laughs> but you know it's a pakas pudge god knows when he's gonna pick the item up uh, pick that item up well it's gonna be uh, definitely a lot of fun uh Right now with Pagaz Pudge, we'll get to hopefully see some fun stuff. That means we're going to have to pay a lot of attention towards this lane. There's a wraparound by Lava. When uh, to where Panda just was, will they be able to get a kill here? Is the big question. Slats him nearby. The smoke gets broken. Yeah, does get should get spotted out there by Slatum, and indeed they do spot each other. Slatum is actually going to walk up the high ground, spot Devil, and just grab the bounty right in front of him. <laughs> That's like the saddest steal I've ever seen. <laughs> well, no interesting engagements just yet, as uh, Knight also gets that bounty. So, boom, we'll start pretty happy here with the three versus one. Now, the laning stage, that's where things get very interesting here. I think, you know, Spud shouldn't really care about the lava lane. Not the same can be said for Panda. Like, he has to be very careful. If he missteps, if they get fast yeah. levels on lava, you can definitely be bursted down. Whereas on the safe lane here, it's definitely more complicated. I feel like this is a lane where anyone can die. Probably it's slightly better for Broom, I think, this lane. You have more control. You have... Uh, Overall, stronger heroes, but uh, PA, you know, it is getting stronger. Just, uh, you know, they, they buff Stifling Dagger. Maybe you can buy a, an early Blightstone. So, we're gonna have that extra minus armor to work with. 
Yeah, one of the, uh, of course, uh, more obnoxious changes is that new item, the, or newer item, the Orb of Corrosion. That one, uh, a lot of heroes tend to go for it. It's very annoying to deal with because the dot also does healing reduction. It's not the worst in this game. I guess Pudge might struggle against it a little bit, but kind of a mini Scotty. Yeah, yeah, it literally is that. Uh, I think it's more of a laning item though, so because Pudge is not in that lane, I think yeah. it's probably not going to be purchased, but it, it is definitely very good against your Centaurs, Timbers, Necros, you know, the Necro is not really picked at all. Did get a couple buffs, maybe we'll get to see it into the end of qualifiers, but I doubt it. Um, the, okay, so the bottom lane is a Vengeful Spirit PA, so it does feel like it should be a pretty dangerous lane. Illich doesn't have a magic stick yet. Okay, now he's getting it delivered, full magic wand. That's why Lumiere was spamming the Stifling Dagger in that bottom lane, because there were no stacks to be gained. But right now there are stacks, so just Stifling Daggering the Mars is not really going to be very effective. Mm -hmm. uh, in the mid lane... Very one-sided affairs here. Zlatim's 11, 10 and 4 against the 6 and 1 of Wonder Kid. Is he's going for... Okay, we'll steal the water rune. Nicely done. Zlatim forced out the tornado, so he doesn't really care that much. And Wonder Kid is missing all these creep kills. That's the power of Lina gaming up in the mid lane. Now, obviously, very dangerous if a rotation might come through topside. Okay, Freeze came in with the Frostbite, oh. there's going to be the charge, and hook. drags Devil immediately back. Panda is still very low, but will be able to just be fine. Courier gets taken care of, but Pekaz walks in range of the Courier in time to make sure that he gets the items out of it. Okay, that was very clutch from uh, Pekaz if he doesn't get that hook off. That's a key one. Panda, we kind of talked about, you know, CM being weak in the lane, but it looks like Pudge could be that ally she needed to feel empowered and strong. Girl power. Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, Latham in mid, EMP, gonna drain all of his mana. Does have the bottle, of course, for a bit of refill, but it is like a bit obnoxious. And uh, the amount of damage that one the kid does, he's gonna try and get the kill secured, oh, but that's the uh, infused raindrops that he just got delivered. From the previous courier that's now flying back, making sure that the uh, kill will not be secured. First blood uh, is for Picasso, and Jenik is going to dive away with the blast off. But that is, uh, yeah, that's Pudge Gaming coming in. Didn't expect him to get first blood though against a primal beast. Also yeah, exactly. in mid rotation from Knight helps that to kill off one kid. Yeah, everything was looking fine, but then you look at the CS charts and Wonder Kid has 12 CS, Devil has 12 CS, this is another game. And honestly, this time with a way better lane, having this uh, Techies Primal, you're getting absolutely trashed by Pakas and Panda. You know, that, has, that has been one of the strongest lane combinations of SA for a long time. That was, uh, you know, the EG that shined a little bit last year, then totally got uh, destroyed, but uh, looked pretty good for a while. Uh, the painful memories of uh, a one's yeah. glorious time for the South America region. The expectations all destroyed. I wonder if it's taking a lot of damage here. Keep it towards mid by Janik. He does have the blast off onto Slatum, does connect a lot of damage. But in response, Latum does still have the infused raindrop, so damage reduction is pretty neat and will be just fine. Panda forced to rotate as well. Now Genix got no mana, when the kids got no HP. And the okay. got no life. He gets taken out in the bottom lane. I'm uh gotta pay more attention to those health pools. <laughs> right now they're diving for Gardic. It will be Knight getting the kill. Double kill for Knight and a killing spree. Again, this Knight Grimstroke. I, I, it's not really a hero that you ban in this patch, but he is doing obnoxiously well in the laning stage. They're being outclassed in every single lane. Like, first CS wise, then rotation wise. Uh, looks like they want to fight for the runes in the mid lane here, but there are more supports from Boom, so there you go. Slotsons just picks that rune up, and you do not want to fight into the shield rune. 
second of that. That's just essentially a second uh, HP bar that you'd otherwise have to deal with. I hate the fact that if you hover over a rune it, uh, in the bottle, it doesn't show exactly what it does. Wait, so... Uh, yeah, that is, that is true. It should have a tooltip where if you hover over it and there's a rune in it, that you it should say what the rune does exactly. Rotation top? Oh, devil. They're trying to kill off Picasso. He is still very tanky, but not tanky enough. But Fleshy won't be able to keep him alive. Devil almost gets taken down in response. Panda is in trouble right now. Bomb is going to latch on, and that is going to be a double kill in the top side with the one to kid rotation. Yeah, mid was going pretty bad, so he needed to make play. And the play was successful. Experience runes to be secured. Knight gets his, and on the opposing side, it will go to Jennick. Yeah, that's that's huge. Killing Pakaz there, he gave Devil a lot of farm. Uh, it enables Wonder Kid a little bit as well. But uh, as you said, the supports on Boom, especially Knight, you have to be so careful about the rotations. It feels like they they, they have it a bit easier with the rotations. Uh, Inkswell, very strong uh, with pretty much anyone but the Lina. Um, this Crystal Maiden just. Carrying blood grenades everywhere. Looking for Ganic even in the top lane. But uh, it's not gonna get the reach. Dyer, uh, currently, Pagaz is still top net with Illich second, slash him third. And uh, yeah, it's uh, the board shows exactly Dire side is having a good time. Lumiere is also not struggling whatsoever. He's actually Maybe rushing Battle Fury before boots. He has oh. a band of Elven skin. A cornucopia and he's going for the rest of the pieces they are charging in onto the PA right now and that will be a kill in the bottom lane arena from the Mars has been used and Knight gets the kill with the ink swell all right they do get the rune on Slatims they also know that there is a center here in the mid lane wonder kid pings and gets pinged by boom lots of sentries Oh, look at the aggressive vision from Brim as well. They have one ward, uh, I guess, in the high ground between tier 1 and tier 2, and they have this other ward. So, pretty much, whatever Wonder Kid goes for, they're gonna get vision of him. Uh, like, the amount of vision in this mid lane, it's like a triangle, Bermuda triangle. Oh, yeah, the smoke definitely gets scouted out. We'll find Mr. Pandita, though. No, actually, you'll walk right past him. It is oh. nighttime, so might not have had the vision to get the catch. They're looking for Illich or Knight. Knight would be best. He has a four kill streak, so that would be good gold, good experience. In the meantime, Slatum grabs the bounty right in front of Wonder Kid, spots out that Wonder Kid is nearby because, of course, the slow comes into play. Laguna Blade onto Gardic. Can they get the kill onto the Vengeful Squid? He is dropping low. Spear gets thrown out. Gardic is dead. Slatum is the big target. Soulbind onto two holds and then placing comes double charging forward. Stomp, stomp, stomp. He has his double six pulverized. Will immediately get interrupted thanks to the science. Actually, he hasn't casted it yet. Will be able to get it off right now, but Pagaz still has his own nom, 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 nom. And it will be a 3 to one trade with Pagaz getting his second flesh heap kill of the game. Top tower. Yeah, I mean, they still force a lot of rotations, unfortunately, you know, because the Primal also rotated, a TP will be not farming for the remaining duration, and if you look at CS here, the difference is astronomical, this is a 4k gold lead minute 10, so... Knight, trying to steal a rune, well, deny it at least. Kaz also already has two pieces of the Agnum Scepter. Arena, Lumiere gets caught inside of it, gets hooked. Dragged towards the other side, eaten up, and Pagaz gets the kill onto Lumiere with Illich on the run. Will still be chased by one kid. Does he have anything left? No, there is no Exhort on the Voker, so he doesn't Sentry. have the Sun Strike. Sentry plays, one to kid. Uh, that's awkward. <laughs> Panda's like, can we kill him? Yes, we can. He walks into the second century, but just got placed huh. by Knight. Silenced up, Inks will stun, and when the kid will be dropped dead, Soulbind gets thrown out onto Gardic, but he's not in range now. He does connect onto Jennick. When the kid is one tap away from dying, Panda really is really looking Ooh. for that kill, but the mines from Jennick save his mid laner's life. That will be a nice double kill with Knight now. 
uh, in a position where he needs to get away. Again, he has a five kill streak. That's good money if they kill off Knight. Wonder Kid somehow like finding ways to be useful, but he's benefiting very little from all of those engagements. He only has one kill. Uh, I don't know when you look at who's getting all of those kills. It's Yannick, not, not ideally the hero that is going to pick up the slack here in the mid game. But you know what? At least Devil is farming. He's gonna get his blade mail. Uh, PA, as you said, getting relatively close to Battle Fury, considering the zero and three. Uh, CS here for Lumiere, he's honestly not that far behind. You want to kill off Bakaz, but I don't think they realize he already has, still has 1100 HP. Can they kill him in time? He is too insanely tanky. And no, he's going to turn around, go for the Nom Noms, swap save swap. onto Devil. But Bakaz is still alive. Laguna Blade drops down Devil and Gardic and Wonder Kid. Can they run away? Soul by Nons 2. They both get silenced up thanks to the Phantom's Embrace. They need to get rid of the silence, otherwise the damage is going to be pretty obnoxious. Janik on the other side comes in with the three-man stomp. Ooh. That is a techies game and right there. Slatim does quickly get rid of the proximity mine and he doesn't actually have mana for another proximity mine. Gardic taken down, triple kill for Slatim. And the TP out comes through, but that is disastrous for Lava. Yeah, they saw, oh, Pekaz has, you know, half HP. They don't realize he has an Ogre Axe, a Point Booster, and a Bracer, aka he has a ton of HP. Yeah, I mean, in level 3 Flesh Heap, right? And then this Primal Beast does literally zero damage. Uh, as, oh, looks like they are going to find a Night Kill. As you said, a huge bounty. The Devil yoinks. Yeah, he'll be very happy with that one. It's a solo kill as well. In the meantime, Pekaz walks in. Oh, oh no, that's oh. a bit of a mistake. Oh, no, the hook as well. Oh, it's with Central. Gardic will slowly but surely melt away. I mean, still worth it, honestly. That was uh, a mistake for Millage even Panda. <laughs> Tips him, actually. Yeah, the, the spear tosses him away, and then Pekaz hooks a creep. Like, whiff after whiff. Oh, and Wonder Whoa. Kid might get his eyes on a beautiful, thick boy, but he is aware. He's just somehow aware. I just don't know how he was aware. <laughs> yep, that's just... Maybe, maybe Janik walked underneath the uh, observer, or what What are they called? Watcher vision. So he saw that... I think he was already in this, but maybe. Oh, no, Janik wasn't. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Wonder Kid yeah. was in this. Genic was walking behind him, I think. True, 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 true. So Lumiere he actually has his Battle Fury. So 14 minute BF when you're 0 and 3 is honestly very commendable, very impressive. But the problem is, there's a 7,000 uh, net worth Kutka with his eggs ready at 14 minutes. Not even that. Slatim's almost done with the Gleipnir. Uh, so that is painful. Kill him, though. Speaking of which... In mid, slap him. God, oh, these guys know. are so aware. They actually scan that they're yep. right on top of him. Like, right, right on top of him. Crazy good from Boom. Like, that's the second rotation that they sniff out. Do they and have you know, all these wards? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think, like, reading them perfectly. I have no idea how they're doing this. They're just good. Radiant like, I, I was going to say, I, Lava is milking water out of stones, out of rocks this game, but... Blue is just playing better, like, it really feels like Lava shouldn't even be where they are, but somehow they're fighting, like, some cool engagements, uh, getting experience into everyone. But despite all of that, Boom is still farming with everyone that matters. Uh, the supports aren't even that far behind, like, this uh, Night Grimstroke is close to Wonder Kid, and they will die Village, they're gonna get Vision. Village in trouble, has the arena. There is going to be a TP coming through, but Panachi continues oh. the TP here. The rest of the team smoked up. Inkswell onto Slats and get close. Soulbind onto two. There is uh, a Laguna Blade that he doesn't use on the Soulbind targets. So use it after the Soulbind, and now Slats is dead. So that's a. Especially with nice. the fact that they had no TP on Pudge. A very strange fight. You're going to get another one. Pudge is yeah. just nowhere to be seen. He has his TP on cooldown. Just uh, 
Honda tries to save someone and it <laughs> totally backfires here. Uh, it was a good position from the Mars. They even had that ward in the Twin Gate, so they felt like they were safe. But at the end of the day, it was uh, yeah, not the right play here for Boom. And suddenly, this game seems honestly winnable, right? 43%. So we're going to increase even more here, Gaben. Definitely feeling the Phantom Assassin now. Yeah, he's got the uh, Power Treads, Battle Fury, uh, also already has a Mithril Hammer coming in, so this PA is uh, recuperated after that fight. One kid still hella broke, he's going for the Hanamitis uh, to try and recover, get some experience going, but in terms of net worth he is struggling significantly. Also, I guess once Picard gets Blink Dagger, the fights become a lot more problematic for the Radiant side. For sure. But, you know, still gotta remember that the gap close onto his Latims. Like, he... He just jumped her and, and dealt a lot of damage. And that was level 11. PA. Lumiere is now level 12. What is his drop? A Dragon Scale. Definitely not what you want. Yeah, that's a strange one. Yeah, must have had, had like, really terrible lethals in. Eye of the Vizier and I don't know Gossamer Cape. Uh, Philosopher Stone and Bull Whip. Yeah, that would probably do it. Uh, Wonder Kid taken down bottom lane. Oh, Slatan gets the arena found. For it. It's pretty deep, but Slatan with the Soul Bind onto two should be able to get. That, oh well, yeah, easy, double kill. That was the Bind, boat, like, Laguna. I've never seen a Lina walking up to a PA under a tier 2 tower with Inkswell, but a uh, really good ward from Boom there, just showcasing exactly where both the PA and Venge were, and they, even with the swap, they get the kill. Village, Blink, Yules onto Devil, hold them in place. He... He was there. Doesn't really have that much. Janik though, trying to turn it around, is gonna immediately get hit by the silence, trying to get rid of the Phantom's Embrace, frozen in place, dropping oh, no. low, trying to throw every spell he has in the book, but it is unfortunately not gonna be successful this time. It is Boom that brings in the numbers. They only lose Panda, but this was is also a amplified damage, Lena. A Pudge with a Blink Dagger, a Mars with a Blink Yules. I mean, we're talking about the other cores, but Illich is really farmed on that Mars. Oh yeah, and Zlatims, you know, was going for BKB, but just decides to man up, gets a Dragon Lance for that extra HP and attack range. Now, Kaz is a little bit out of position here. They get a good ward. Can they flank this big boy? He's not easy to kill, especially with his entire team coming in from behind. Uh, yeah. Even if they go on him, it will probably cost them a hero or two, because there's no BKB on the PA yet. And I think he just dies straight up from standing next to the Pudge. Yeah, he's getting close to BKB though, so Lumiere, least recovering uh, significantly. Devil also getting close to his Mithril Hammer. But yeah, that Mai doesn't wonder kid seems so far away. Like, that Grimstroke is getting closer and closer to surpassing the Evolter. They just uh, body smacking all those bombs, all the mines coming out from Jenik. Just going for the Guarding Greaves. Every techies I see goes for the Guarding Greaves these days. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a weird hero, right? Like you lose HP when you join in, so having the match kind of allows you to. Come in, heal your teammates, you heal yourself, so you live longer, you drop your spells. Uh, it feels like the aggressive potential of the hero did get lost a little bit after the nerfs, you know, when the hero was really, really broken. In the meantime, slap them. Uh, he's got full bots, or at least the, the recipe oh. being delivered right now, so he's going to be everywhere that he's needed, and the movement speed is always going to be a huge plus. That's actually yeah. going for a Lotus Orb. Interesting choice. Don't see that too often. Fine. Oh. Illich oh, gets the blink out. away. Yeah, it's his own use. No damage taken in that situation. Illich gets the arena off. 
And the swap from Vardic will keep his primal at the very least alive. So by comes out, but there's Lumiere oh, no. being eaten away at by Picasso. BKB first usage ain't gonna do anything. Picasso just gonna chase for more. Devil Primal Beast dead, one the kid's melting right before his eyes, and this Picasso safe lane Pudge is still a deadly threat as ever. Nothing they can do when they're just being ran at by the fat man. Yeah, that blink away was ridiculous. Uh, I think if you plant an ice wall there, maybe that doesn't happen. And the fight's just over. BKB, as you said, gets wasted. They have no map control. A safe place probably just for Roshir as Boom. You have control of the Radiant side. But they are poking high ground here. They, they want a really fast series, apparently. Slatum with almost no HP. Ah, I'm saying that he still has 1000 HP. He's very tanky. 2500 HP, 14 armor. That ain't too shabby on Lina. Oh, that HP talent definitely makes her deceivingly tanky when you're ahead. Um, you see in the air, you know, just trying to get some farm going. Oh, that's another amplified damage. <laughs> that's, uh, that's unfortunate. By the way, when you hover over the rune now, it does tell you about the spell amplification. Yeah, right. but, but if you use it, then it doesn't. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, this is at least... We were halfway there. Please. I mean, the game, to be fair, is still in beta, so... <laughs> They'll never even change that little... Uh... Literally a folder name change, that's all they have to do. <laughs> Well, I do hear that programming big things can be very complicated. So, you know, where is that folder? Does anyone know what the name is? Maybe the old janitor just uh, hid it away. That's the main folder. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally in the Dota 2 beta folder instead of a Dota 2 folder. <laughs> oh, speaking of beta here, looks like Invoker is going to be beta right now. Just gets killed. He's dying beta? up by the alpha. What? He's dying beta? Like... Or is or is it like alpha because you're you're putting yourself at risk? Well, no. Sacrificing yourself is alpha. Dying, like, completely uselessly, that's, that's full beta. Actually, it all doesn't make any sense. I read somewhere that wolves don't even have an alpha. Yeah, yeah that, that is mostly uh, fake news, but uh, well, people still don't care. They don't seem to care about that as Slatum's definitely the alpha may I have no joke to, to do with that. Uh, this uh, this Lena is just out of control. The alpha female, yes. Alpha male? It doesn't sound what well, doesn't sound right. It just sounds like alpha male. Okay, the uh, matriarch, I guess. Matriarch, yeah, sure. That makes that's that's, better. That, that's that's I guess an alpha female. True, true. Um, all right. So is the PA close to death? So not really. They do have BKB on Primal. They do have Midas about to be completed for Wonder Kid. I mean, he's so poor. Yeah, that's the problem also with Invoker, especially if you go for Spirit Vessel first. So you go for the Class Wax build. You just have nothing in terms of farm at one point in the game. He sacrificed so much to get those rotations going. Knight is actually going for Hannah Midas as well. It's really funny to see that <laughs> he has more net worth than Wonder Kid. <laughs> yep, and well, Wonder Kid does have a Midas flight. This is Courier, where is this Courier? The Courier is just sitting in the base for some reason with the Midas. Yeah, it's just hovering over no man's land. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, he will TP. Oh, we'll Tormentor. Get his spot out Tormentor's nearby. Yule Zepdar on Illich trying to stay alive. It's all by. In There's going to be a chase forward. The soul bind is still on the devil. Slatum is still alive. Has that eight at the ready. They did lose the Mars. And a buyback did come through. Lumiere quickly has to sidestep his BKB has ended. So looking for more is probably going to. Uh, be successful actually because they do get panda in the end and they get a clean 3-0 and it's still a 16 key goal lead for boom it was a kill buyback by techies 
not. Oh, sure. sure. And also, yeah. they took the shard from the tormentor, so. Well, but it's still worthwhile of a fight. It was a really weird fight from Pakaz. Like, he could have dismembered the PA. He could have also hooked to save. Uh, I'm surprised the Lava got, got so much out of that. Like, they, they were really forcing this fight. They, they It was nighttime. They had no... Uh, I guess they had that one ward close to the Ancient that the Lumiere was farming. As the Garnet is going to get eaten up. Gotta be also, cool. really do like Pakaz's item build. He's mm -hmm. got the Load Sorb. He's going for the Shivas. He's already walking around with 41 armor. Like, PA, who? I don't... Uh, PA, oh, you yeah. could go for that magic. Uh, oh, no, wait. Revenant's Bruce doesn't work anymore with PA. Oh. Ooh. Oh, Lumiere will find the panda here. Doesn't have his BKB, so... Oh, oh still has the sentry. Underneath the sentry. TPN. Oh, and the T... Creep gets killed off, so the TP gets cancelled. Okay. Pretty bold here from Lumiere. Kind of feeling himself after a couple of those kills. We'll get his level 20, has the Desolator. Still a gigantic uphill climb, it looks like. But Gaben's giving PA 15%, so that's honestly pretty generous considering the state of this game. It's still a PA. It's always still a PA. They're looking for... Opening, he does find Illich, there's going to be an arena onto two, Soulbind is well thrown out. With Lumiere, BKB uses, but he can't jump because of the Soulbind, it's doing too much work. Slats is going to lose his first life, they also lose Knight and the back end. But Good swap. Just, oh, that swap save was just in the nick of time. Gardic is the one that has to pay the price for that, is a price he is definitely willing to pay. Genic with a bunch of mines, being a pretty big nuisance, will still be blown to smithereens by Slatten, but big problem right now is the BKBs on both the Primal and the PA are going to be on cooldown, so they might just as well knock on the high ground if you are boom. Very true. Hopefully, uh, we're going to see Cost connecting there to the mid lane. Uh, actually don't seem that interested, even though they have the BKBs, even though they have the massive advantage. Very... I'm not sure if this is Boom being afraid or Boom being just cautious with the just waiting the next ages. Yeah, they might uh, wait more before they go for the high ground push. I think the fight towards the enemy storm enter did give away a little bit of a uh, scare. Uh -huh. Lina is going for that MKB, so maybe once that is up, they're gonna feel more confident trying to outfight this PA that is going for a basher and has the nemesis curse so neutral wise that's the probably the best one you could have asked for Radiant are scanning. i really find that neutral item too scary to go forever <laughs> i'm like no nope, you're I not going to go glass right? no nope, no nope, i i mean i've had games where i had just such good farm that i you turn into a carry player on some heroes, but I see Nemesis Curse and I'm like, nope, 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 that's, that's suicide. I love it. I'm a Ricky player. That is, that's just ah, that's my wet disgusting. dream. disgusting. If you yeah. get caught on Ricky, you're dead anyway, so might as well go all out. Exactly. Now, boom, they want to go all out, but, you know, the BKBs are now up, or at least they are posturing aggressively here as they're looking for Mr. Gadiko. He should be okay. Okay. TP out. Ooh. A little bit too late there for the catch. Good awareness. Yeah, he's going for the basher next. Because uh, Kaya Sanj. I mean, why not? You already have stupid amounts of armor. So I'll get some extra HP and regen. And damage, of course. Uh huh. Going for the Kaya Sanj, still keeping a neutral, an armor neutral, just for PA's sake. I wonder if this is a, if Lava can smoke, right? I feel like contesting Roshan is, is huge, and they might, if you find the right opening, they have the heroes, like you just electric this PA, and you jump someone, you could even one shot or like, really kill this Lina if you're fast enough. Okay. 
Mir is really looking for a catch. Lina is closing in on the MKB. That means Lumiere it needs to be careful. He actually needs a bit more HP at that point. Actually, the Aghanim Scepter could definitely be a lifesaver there. The instant blur. Yeah. Getting the reset in, in between the fights as well. is huge. Uh, the Roche Spawn timer, it's honestly on the side of Lava, unless this is a gigantic timer. They could be in a position to fight it, although Boon already anticipated well, the move. Yeah, boom, just took the gateway. Gaz gets more fleshy stacks. 15 at the moment. That's an extra 30 strength. Damn. Almost no strength items, only the eggs, and he has 3.2k HP. Yeah, he doesn't even have a oh, wait, BKB. Oh, look at this, look at the air. Fudge. We'll find Zlatam's under tower by himself. This is a huge opening. There we go. Crit baby crits, Lumiere gets the kill on to Slatham. Seven kill streak. That's a lot of money. That's a, a very point. big mistake. Yeah, that was saying a mistake or a good positioning of the PA. Hard to tell, but look at the experience here. Level 23 now. We're approaching the triple stifling dagger. Uh he's now going for a nullifier just so they can deal with the ink swell, just so they can deal with some of those uh spells. Yeah, and the Ghost Scepter that Knight has as well. Uh -huh. Did he actually go for that Hannah Midas? He, he, he actually did. Out now. Okay. Huh. I mean, you're playing against PA, I would Dyer's assume you go for the Ags, but... Roche uh, just gets... Gets scouted Is he this game to go so long? Like, I'm I guess wondering it feels why like... Hannah Midas. Oh, wait a second. They find oh, Mark. Sunstrike in. It is taking a lot of damage on the mark as the arena oh. off. And this. Oh my god, that's just the biggest. Lumiere yeah, is so sad right there. That is the saddest moment he's ever been, been feeling. Lumiere yeah, does get the kill. Needs to be careful. Doesn't have a TP. Lumiere jumps back in, gets another kill. He's going to get dragged back to oh, the side. The Pagas healing. Is going to eat up Lumiere. Lumiere is going. Nope. Paka still had the dismember and will be able to get himself a triple kill. When the kid with the TP attempt, Inkswell stun, interrupt, and Paka can blink on top to kill off when the kid to get quad kill. And that is Fatty Boom Boom Pudge going ham and cleaning house. Lava get taken down a peg. Man, if that Mars doesn't have a shard, that is such a different fight. Like, Pakaz, uh, Lumiere lost half his HP from the spear and, uh, and the trail of damage in the arena. And that, that could have actually been their comeback. But now they will lose Roshan. Uh, obviously gonna be the Slotsons, I believe. As he's the one hitting the high ground. Yeah, that was uh, very unfortunate. The, literally, the moment the fight starts, uh, <laughs> yeah, he just jump. Lumia just jumps onto the Mars and gets cast away instantly. Really Even if you pop BKB there, they would have probably instantly killed off the Mars and then been able to jump to another target. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, well. This is still somehow a 14% chance here for Lava. That PA is very big. I mean, the, the, these fights show that they can win. Yeah. It's just they need uh, maybe a little bit of extra luck. You need the Snullifier for sure. The Ghost Scepter and the Glimmer Cape on the Crystal Maiden. Uh, I can even deal with the U Scepter on the Mars as well. Mars has a Scythe of Ice now, though, so you gotta be careful of the Hex. There was healing that came on the PA in that fight. I guess it was a healing Lotus, because that's the only explanation. Like he, he got like 400 HP at some point, there's no lifesteal, there's no... He must have been a great healing Lotus from the support. Or maybe the Techies, but I think he was dead. Oh, Lumiere! Oh, Panda. Spots out Gardic, Slatham will be able to get that kill, the swap comes out, Gardic to be taken down, Slatham underneath the Tormentor. It's a dangerous area to fight because the return damage can be very strong. Yeah, there's one thing PA's learned, last patch is that 
tormentors are very scary once you're level 25, which Lumiere just picked up. Stifling Dagger, that is normally the norm. I have seen games where people go Coup de Gras, but it's not too often. Yeah, I mean, you have the death, so it's just, just really it's straightforward. As they're looking for this courier with the Sacred Relic. Can they find it? Oh, so close. Ah, and uh, no nope, one hit too far away. And even go. the tip thrown out there, so that should oh. okay. He's oh. still a little bit off for the nullifier. He's, he's angry. Panda is angry. Got tipped and up. Now he's quickly gonna call him up. Oh, Discord. Yeah. Discord. Discord. <laughs> yeah, there's inner Discord amongst the team. <laughs> oh, maybe they feel like this, this is a uh, maybe they feel like this is a rapier. Yeah, they might have thought that, but... Oh, yeah. Because they waited so long, they gave Genic all the time in the world to plant 50 million mines in the Radiant Base, and that is never fun to deal with. A good swap with oh, a rise. That's very quick death, Soulbind onto two. Knight needs to get himself out of there. In response, Devil picking a heap of damage from Slatum, who has a... MKB, oh, so, so his close. damage output's pretty big, and Pekaz is actually going to be able to get the kill onto Limgear. Pekaz was considering going for a meat hook on another target. Slatham's gonna lose his first life. Janik as well. Or Slatham, is he actually gonna lose his life? Sunstrike? Well, nope. Not. The Hurricane Pike force forward, and he's still not dead on the Lena. That was... Had Pekaz survived that is insane. That was a really unfortunate fight. Like, the PA, after they get the Mars kill, buys the Nullifier that never got to her and dies with no buyback because of that purchase. They will go for Slatum. There's a lot of mines here. Oh, Slatum almost taken down, but because he's Slatum munching away at dead. Wonder Kid, gets the kill. Slatum, actually. Uh, Wonder Kid actually managed to together take down Slatum, and with the techies back up and no Lina, there's no pushing coming out from who. They hold on, even without the PA. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that lane is so important, and they have the means of killing her, as we've seen time and time again. No shard on the Putka, no real save besides the dispel and Inkswell, but you cannot dispel the physical damage. Yeah, this is uh, getting a bit rough here for the side of Boom. It's not going to be, obviously like the biggest problem for them, but it does show that Lava can defend. And now that there's also a nullifier on the PA, the supports are easy targets. Like Panda doesn't, his tools all get dispelled. Uh, Grimstoke, same thing. Those Ghost Scepters are gonna be useless in a fight. Yeah, he bought a, a Neon Disc. So... Just get also that gonna... scepter. Get the PA illusion and let it kill the enemies. Easy. He did, he'd get a timeless relic though. That is huge. Only for the duration of Soulbind. That's like, it's eight seconds, right? So when you get the uh, debuff duration, that becomes uh, 9.6 seconds of Soulbind. That's pretty long. That's actually insanely long. Does he have any? Okay. I've never seen anyone go for the soul bind spell damage talent. Yeah. I mean, they have some decent spells, right? The Laguna, the Dismember, it's nice, but. Yeah, maybe think... if you were playing like a mid Grimstroke or something that Copson used to play, that could be cool. We get like yeah. the E Blade, Dagon. Pog. I mean, E Blade as a, an amplification. Ever since they changed the stats thing, it, it's so weird, right? Like, it it can be good against some heroes, it can be awful against others. It's still 40% more damage from magic, uh, more magic damage taken, so... Yeah, good. it's fine. And also, uh, on Grimstroke, it would be you E-Blade someone and hit them with the Phantom's Embrace, so they can't kill the Phantom's Embrace. True, but it was better when it was based on Kaya, oh, right? Cause... Yeah. Walking out, wants to go for Pekaz, Knight is behind it, there's going to be a jump in, and this gets popped, but he already used the 
tool onto the big boy and the big He's boy. healing. Gaz is actually healing up. The swap comes out. Gaz is still doing a lot of damage here, surviving with a little bit of weight. How is he not? Just dude, die. What? Wait. Six K HP, my friend. I I know, but he was at like six hundred HP for a solid ten minutes there. <laughs> well, what? yeah, that was the ink swell. I I mean. I'm not sure if it was this member or the Inkswell heal, but uh, regardless of what it was, you know, choosing the tankiest hero to go when you're 30k gold behind, usually not the brightest idea. Because you're not gonna break the flashy, you know, that's what makes him tanky. Uh, breaking the pudge just. You, you don't break the active at least. So. And he has a stupid amount of armor. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be game. But... Oh, yep. That was uh, an interesting one. I actually swear I thought I died there. Nonetheless, boom, take game number two. And with that, the series will be concluded. Yeah, you know, the results we expected. I, I honestly feel like in both games, Lava put up a pretty good fight. They were behind for most of it. They had signs of life. Very similar, honestly, to, to the other series we cast oh, between... Uh, heroic and infinity so i think boom scary team moving forward but i wouldn't really put it past lava to maybe surprise a couple of teams they, they honestly look pretty solid yeah uh they do look pretty good unfortunately they do drop down to the lower bracket speaking of which uh there is going to be another team waiting for them which is uh, a starbucks it seems uh i think Oh, really? I don't yeah. They lost see, to... Yeah. Beast Coast beat a Starbucks 2-0. That's a bit of a surprise. Um, to me, at least. That yeah, means that it will be a Lava versus a Starbucks in that part of the lower bracket. Infinity versus Akatsuki will be the other match. And I think we're doing the Akatsuki match... Yeah, we're doing Infinity versus Akatsuki. That match will be up in two hours. Yeah, two hours. These matches are pretty fast, so we got a long break timer ahead of us. All right. Yep. Yeah, going to be able to rest a little bit. The viewers are going to be able to get some refreshments. It is Friday, after all. They're going to be all cozy and ready for some great Dota 2. And this time, an elimination match here, Vider, Infinity, or Akatsuki. Uh, Two teams that, you know, I could see going far. So uh, it's going to be sad to see one of them go. But it is a ruthless qualifier with just one team going forward to the Dream League Season 23. Yep, indeed. There's only one team from South America qualifying. There's also only one team from North America qualifying. And that match is currently being played. Grand Finals, Shopify versus Nouns on the Dota 2 Tango stream. You can go and check that one out. I mean, you still have time until the next series of our starts. We'll be back for that match then. Have a wonderful evening. And in case we don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.
It starts with this A person that you miss Mind draws a blank I wanna go back Back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait For better days I lost myself In your reality I lost myself
It starts with this A person that you miss Mine draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself
It starts with this A person that you miss My hand draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself
Welcome back, ladies and gents. It's late night Dota here on the Dream League stream. My name is DK Truman. I am joined by the wonderful Bowie, and we have a lower bracket round one coming up next. One of these two teams are going to be eliminated, and who is taking the main stage, Bowie? Well, uh, time will tell here. Looking at Infinity and Nakatsuki, I, I think it's hard not to go with Infinity, right? You have Jim Park, you have Oscar. Uh, PP has been a standout mid laner for a long time. I think Nakatsuki has some talent. But once again, it's, at least in my opinion, another series that has a clear favorite. You know, whether it's a 60 40, 70 30, people will have their, you know, their opinions. Uh, I do feel like this is, this is like, this is Infinity's game to lose. Yeah, I definitely think that uh, Infinity is a pretty scary team to deal with uh, for obvious reasons, Parker. But uh, Akatsuki, not a team to scoff at either. The rank wise, at least, they are looking uh, about the same level maybe a little bit higher as well than Infinity uh, collectively because Infinity don't have a single player in the top 200 of Immortals. Granted, Parker's ranked 300. That might just be a slightly I mean, Parker, different... Yeah, I mean, he yeah. got his account banned as well, right? So, yeah, the, there it's... might be some other things included in the fact that his rank is not as high as you would expect from such a talent. Are they Toxicity all playing Europe? also one of them. The Infinity boys? Uh, I don't actually know. So apparently, I... yeah, Oscar PP and Demon are. Wow, Demon's actually pretty low MMR for Europe. Uh, and Yadomi. Yeah, apparently Yadomi is the only one that doesn't play. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, regardless, wow. though, I, I, I can't help but feel like infinity yeah the mmr thing could mean something but we've seen like lower mmr but like lower MMR teams that actually have great synergy and great ideas beat the team that is let's say higher mmr but uh less uh, i guess integrated less uh i guess prepared let's put it that way yeah, well, we did see in the previous series at least the uh, performance coming out of Infinity. They had okay-ish games, I would say. They weren't great. Uh, obviously, they were up against uh, Heroic. They were expected to lose. Game 1, they definitely had a chance to come back. Game 2, same story, actually, where they had the PA yep. plus the Shrek. You know, there's always that threat. Game 1, well, they actually should have won, but they kind of fumbled the ball. That was uh, Heroic's uh, prowess coming through, and I think the um, analog DK was very surprising in that series. But you definitely do see in the laning stage that they are very capable. Uh, they made it really hard for Heroic during the laning stage in both games. Yeah, and I mean that—that that is exactly what you're saying. Like in this that series, heroic kind of lost the laning stage uh, both games. So let's say that uh, I guess MMR wise or skill wise, we saw one team doing really well. But once the mid game comes, things can change so quickly, right? One or two good rotations, uh, or just a move that doesn't make that much sense can quickly turn things around. Um, it's going to be interesting here to see if Akatsuki is going to be able to hold uh, their own. I mean, we're talking about odds in, in the other series. Do you have any idea about this one? Because I wouldn't say it's that big of a gap, right? I would say like maybe one to three for Akatsuki. I wonder yeah, what the uh, odds would be. The odds are pretty much 1.6 against 2.1. So they're okay. very close. Yep. Uh, it's almost 50-50, I guess. 60-40 uh, split in favor of infinity which i can concur with it this wouldn't surprise me if this goes to a three map series true true definitely looks that way it looks like i do feel like infinity has been playing a bit faster than i expected um especially oscar i think like in the past uh, to me he was a very greedy player wouldn't really 
play fast at all, but uh, I do feel like PP helps a lot. He's a very proactive player. Demon and Tiger, their support play was pristine, honestly, against that heroic match, especially game one. Uh, unfortunately, that they didn't win. But uh, yeah, we'll see how fast Infinity can, can take this, because... The longer it gets, I, I do feel like these uh, SA players, they're, they're honestly pretty good at handling the, the late game, but I feel like mid game is really the, the biggest issue with SA teams in general. And we did see, you know, Heroic probably reinvigorated or uh, after learning a lot with uh, Screaming EU teams, they, they do seem to be much better than your standard SA team that hasn't haven't played a lot of international tournaments. Yeah, that might uh, be a little bit of an issue, of course, with uh, the slightly newer formed stacks compared to Heroic that has been honestly breaking waves in the South American scene. Of course, in the upper bracket we have for the matches tomorrow, that will be Heroic versus Midas Club. That one is, I mean, that one I'm looking forward towards watching so mm -hmm. much. Uh, then Boom Esports versus Beast Coast. Uh, on the lower bracket, there is Infinity versus Akatsuki on this channel. And on the other channel, it will be Lava Esports versus Starbucks. And that is honestly the only one that I found surprising was that Starbucks got dropped in the first round by Beast Coast. Yeah, that was in 2 0, right? That was very, uh, very impressive uh, showing. You know, Beast Coast, they've been. Known for being like one of the powerhouses of SA, and once I saw their new lineup, I was, I'm not sure disappointed is the ready, but um, uh, the word, but maybe a little underwhelmed because a lot of those names weren't new, but they've been fostering that talent. And, you know, people say that time usually pays off. I would say that taking Starbucks as, as a 2 0 definitely showed a lot of promise here. You know, uh, they were very close. I mean, they, they got to the finals for the Elite League qualifiers, unfortunately, did lose 3 0. Hopefully, you know, maybe that's a, a time here for Bisco to finally get their first LAN after after a while, right? They Ever since TI broke off, they, they have been a little bit uh, uh, on the back foot. Yeah, they've, uh, I mean, that's uh, the problem with the whole South American region right now. But hopefully we'll get to see some uh, fun stuff happening once they actually uh, do manage to get some performance going on at tournaments internationally and especially LAN tournaments. I think that's where South America shines. I think the online Dream League, it's great. But the problem is with them that uh, unless they're boot camping inside Europe, you're going to get... Uh, connection issues you're gonna have that nuisance coming up the entire time and it, they thrive off of the audience that's why you saw you used to see the eg team look really impressive uh previously uh but yeah currently there was a slight delay with the players getting everything ready however the draft is starting right now so finally we get to talk about something that is not us showing our faces the entire time, but we have hopefully a couple of very interesting pants and picks. I am looking forward to seeing if we get uh, another one of those fun drafts from Infinity. They had the lean, uh, lean up mid plus lean drow. drow ranger safe lane. That was a pretty, I think their game one draft was a lot more fun. Yeah, Lina draw Mars, I think. And then they had the PA uh, Primal Beast, was it? It was uh, something. I don't remember the, the other course. Yeah, the game two, they had the uh, PA plus Lesh. Oh, yeah, you're the right. Blue Master offlane. And the position five uh, Dark Willow. That actually worked really well against the Primal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're talking a little bit about lands and that kind of, you know, it's, it's not only about playing lands, but I feel like when you qualify to one, Suddenly, your overall perceived value increases, Five right? So you get better screen remaining. partners. It's not only a question about the ping, but I think it's a question about you're probably not going to be screaming, I don't know, Falcons if you're 
Infinity, right? I I'm assuming they don't. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but if you do qualify for LAN, if you are in Europe and you're maybe you're going to play a different group than Falcons, then, you know, suddenly there's a chance you get to scream a team that is the crop of the, you know, the best of the best, tier one Radiant of tier one teams. Back. And I think this is something that Heroic benefited from uh, with Dream League Season 23. We'll see who's going to be the the SA team that you know gets to go. And, you know, remaining. even though there's the whole, I guess, debacle with the DPC and people saying... I know a lot of people miss the DPC and I, I miss it too. Nah, I'm, I'm happy. Let talk. me say, let me say it. <laughs> now you have way more teams playing internationally because like there's so many tournaments there's so much stuff that eventually right your falcons are, are doing well Five so you open remaining. up a slot in that region for your enigmas to qualify same thing with elite league heroic got invited and now you actually have uh, a different back. team qualifying i think it, it might actually be better in the long run for sa i might be wrong but uh you know Things are just different. Uh, I can say it's strictly, it's strictly worse uh, now that DPC is gone. I can say it's strictly better remaining. as well. I think in general, Dota is better. Uh, I loved watching and casting a bunch of the Tier 2 matches. And obviously, there is a place for the Tier 2 scene to be. But uh, there were also like some matches that made no sense. Um, that mm -hmm. we've definitely all watched and collectively seen which was uh, a bit of an issue of the dpc league but also uh, it really just swamped the entire calendar and there was no chance for anything third party to exist so i'm happy that it's like it was a nice attempt maybe if they handled it better it could have been great but it died uh very quickly we saw that in the South America region where the entire broadcasting rights were just thrown out the window and nobody cared. Well, then it just ends for me at the very least. Nonetheless, that's the DPC. It's over. We're going to focus on this game, on this series, where we have Akatsuki with the first big Fench that we see uh, saw in the previous series as well. And the Gyrocopter for Infinity. They played that in game number one of their series against Heroic. And I think it was, it was a... Heroic playing the Gyro, right? Or you mean was the Venge? Yeah, uh, no, the, the, the Venge was in Gyro. the second series, I think, that we casted. Yeah. It was uh... in the Boom Esports series, I think. Yeah, it was in the second game of Lava Esports versus Boom Esports. But in game one oh yeah it was heroic that played the gyro yeah first yeah. pick kj they they swap it between the supports i it's it's i think you know we were we were seeing a lot of support terror blade or seconds. let me rephrase it terror blade first pick and you flex it as to support i feel like gyrocopter is the better version of that i feel like gyro is a solid support he is a solid core and, you know, he deals with Enigma. I think he deals with uh, even Beastmaster sometimes. I I like it a lot. I understand the whole thing with Terrorblade, but I do prefer the Gyro first pick as the Centaur will be picked up here. So probably, I guess it could be a support, but uh, probably going to be the offline here with uh, Venge being the five usually. Yeah, the pluses with uh, Stampede running away from call down from Gyrocopter is pretty easy. Uh, if it's a safe lane Gyrocopter, the plus side of Centaur is he's got a great HP pool and he's got really high base regen. And Gyrocopter does high damage, but it's all magical, so it doesn't really matter that the Centaur has no armor. So in that sense, uh, it lanes pretty okay against the Gyrocopter. Uh, if this is a position 5, for instance. But it is Parker on that team. And Parker also really does love playing Gyrocopter. Grim Brewmaster Grim. So probably going to be the support uh, of the Brewmaster in that offlane. And you also... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're probably going to be there because if Gyro is going to be... Remaining. Support, uh, I think he is a better five right now. Five they do ban a Crystal Maiden on Akatsuki. That's interesting. 
Uh, Crystal Maiden in general. If this is a Crystal Maiden plus Gyro lane, uh, it will be very mm. problematic. Centaur as well hates Crystal because you stampede, you still get frozen in place, uh, which is slightly annoying. I don't think it's like game breaking, but not fun. Uh, and in general, the Grimstroke plus Brewmaster lane is nasty. We saw it in the previous series as well. Grimstroke going nuts uh, on night. So. Maybe they saw that one and were like, oh, Grimstroke actually works still. Yeah, the here is very strong. <clears throat> Do you pick Invoker here as your counter to that Inkswell? We did see that in one game. We did, yeah, we did dispel Inkswell, but uh, they lost the game anyways. Uh, yeah, they have. I mean, there's so many options that you can go for. You could also just get the uh, Enchantress to try and win the that lane. Get rid of the Inkswell with the uh, Enchant and throw out some Impetuses. Lunar. Lunar. Okay, Lunavenge, it's a lot of auras. It's very good push. I think you that's an though. important factor as well. I like your Ench idea. I wouldn't mind seeing this Venge being a 4. Uh, that Enchantress just remaining. destroyed, crippled the Brewmaster in that Heroic versus Infinity remaining. match we watched. I think it's obnoxiously strong here. also have Pink Swell to dispel. But they will go for the Snappy. Did get a couple okay. of buffs dispatch. Okay, that's an interesting one. It does get rid of the Phantom's Embrace pretty nicely. Mm-hmm. And that's about it. Well, it lanes it's amazingly combo, with yeah. Centaur, though. It's just that Centaur, like, stun, stun. Uh, tons of magic damage between them, and then you get the kisses on top. It's Life just really gaming? good. Is that it? It does feel that way. Right? It's the Centaur counter. You don't care about Eclipse. Swap is annoying, but besides that... I think it actually pairs well with the Grim. You have a decent lane with the Gyrocopter as well. Maybe we get to see a Bloodseeker. Oh. I feel like they have Part too much the burst, though. Too much magic damage for the Bloodseeker. Uh, probably. Dire team I'm just waiting for the first one to actually oh! pick it. Okay, that one I did not expect in the slightest. This hero, CK. it's been so long. It feels like a year since I've seen this hero being played. Yeah, I've... In professional play, that hero doesn't really get picked ever. I, I think uh, during Dream League 22, it was like one, one of the uncontested heroes Five completely. So I'm looking here, it looked like this hero actually had zero games played, but now looking at the two pro tracker, there are there's a lot of green. So people are playing it. We have uh Kirtich, Getsu, Arms. Uh, so definitely a lot of people here just trying. We kinda talked about the armlet heroes, right? Uh I think in, in one of the games we cast recently. Armlet definitely something that works here in the Chaos Knight. I... Wait, you, you're checking Dota 2 Pro Tracker? Yep. How? Ten seconds. I'm seeing a 41% win rate. Yeah, 44. But if you look at the actual games, it's all green. So the, the it's like Pepega's oh. playing, but the, the actual the actual pros running the hero, they, oh. they are mostly winning. There's like two, four, six, eight game, oh, eight Harry wins, and three losses. Yeah, he did. He bought a rape here. Okay, that's kind of weird because Sobo Harry is a support player, but uh, <laughs> he plays offlane too, right? Uh, must be. I doubt that he played that game safe. He has a lot of Jakiro core games. I, I I love seeing he's, him play. He's plays like twenty four seven Jakiro. That that's yeah. his, that's his boy. I love him. It's his, he's a great streamer, actually underrated. I uh, didn't even know he streamed. <laughs> really? I just know no, him from watching my friends play with him all the time. I see. Wow, Leshraku here gets picked up as maybe a soft cover for the CK, right? Uh, having those illusions up remaining. is nice. And uh, we saw PP absolutely stomp in that second game, but unfortunately it wasn't enough. 
Uh, the hero does look really strong in this patch, and they're going to need to get a good counter for it. In that mid lane, they also banned the Linus themselves, so that one of the strongest Leshra counters has been removed, mm -hmm. which might be a bit of a problem. Sniper? What do you do now? Sniper seems fine, especially the Centaur, but you are playing into CK, into Grimstroke. Yeah. Ooh. Pop into Grim, though. It is it's a bit it's sus. dangerous but yeah. it's also like gyrocopter mi missiles really slow to connect grimstoke it, it there's a van towards you you have a fence save even ck stun is dodgeable flesh is a skill shot that if he plays really well on robo z he can dodge half the spells that infinity throws his way mm -hmm. i don't know if hmm. Akatsuki have enough damage for big boy CK and Lesh with Bloodstone. I feel That's like you hit a point on the Luna where eventually you'll have it right with the Kanda and the level 20 talent. You Ten should be able to, to deal with it. But there's definitely like the heart, Five the armlet hard remaining. timing on Jim Park or even just armlet BKB that is definitely going to be tough for Akatsuki to handle. But I think their early game is really good. Like when you when you look at their lanes, they supposed to win them, right? Venge, Luna, Center Snap. These are very strong lanes. The CK, like they nerfed his life steal a lot on creeps, and no one I didn't even see the hero being played ever since they changed that. So I want to see how his lane is gonna look like. Cause I can't say right, like maybe that life steal change may, makes him awful in lane still. Maybe it doesn't matter. It's still like good enough, but I, I would assume Center Snapfire should win even against CK. Uh, I'm, I'm actually expecting the CK Gyro lane to uh, win that one. Uh, actually, wait, isn't the Gyro plus four? Actually, yeah, it's gonna be Grim. CK. Oh, then I definitely think that they're gonna win. Uh, CK Grim Stroke. Uh, the biggest plus about the CK, I think, in that lane is going to be the minus armor that he has, uh, that he pumps out from his second reality rift uh, against Centaur, who has no armor. Obviously, he's going to buy some ar armor items at the start, but once you get reality rift, you just melt him down. And I think that this could be quite surprising. I mean... Parker seems to have faith in the CK. Not a hero that I would have immediately expected. I'm a I'm a go with Infinity. I believe in their two main cores. Okay. Uh they did buff the cast range on uh Reality Rift, so it's even easier now to use the Ink Swelling Lane than it used to be. A 50 cast range might seem small, but can definitely be the difference here. They also buffed the pull distance from uh uh, and the other patch. So, I mean, this, this hero, we got some okay, small nerfs here. Super slight buff. Creep damage multiplier increase from 1.9x to 2. So the damage on creeps is a bit better, but the lifesteal, like they, I think they, they ha you have the lifesteal on creeps, maybe? I think even it was less like than reduced this. to like 30% or something. 70% reduced by 70 so it's 30 off the total value yeah which makes sense I, I mean it's still if you crit higher you technically heal more sort of yes it's so hard to calculate right because you have a crit percentage but then you have a crit lifesteal percentage so it's like if you crit 140 yeah. Bro, what are you doing? So you, you hit 100. 140% would be 140 damage. You life steal 24. So that would be, uh, I don't know, 30. But then you, your life steal is 30% of 30, which is 10. <laughs> which is pretty low. <laughs> it used yeah. to be 100% of that. It, it, the difference is gigantic. Yeah, it is, but it was too broken. Uh, it, you could really just was. like... You saw them also. They had like massive dots on them. They walked to some creeps, pop, 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 and they're back to half HP. You're like, no, this this does not add up. Um, yep. But of course, you can just eat up the enemy support or core and then just gain it from that. 
Take the level or more. you get the level 10 talent for 35% Chaos Strike lifesteal. Uh, but I feel like the other one's better. But, you know, it's it's something you can do. Probably the other one. Actually, how yeah. much? Okay, level 1 Reality Rift does 4 armor reduction. That's... That's quite meaningful considering Centaur has three. Six seconds, right? Yeah, it's pretty pretty decent. I mean, level one, it's 18 seconds, but... Also, the uh, one thing that you should never forget is the shard from the CK uh, later in the game against the Luna. That is going to be massive. What do you mean? Luna, you stun the Luna and then the illusion pops up. To smack the Luna from behind. I mean, it's so slow. Like it's it. You just meant to dodge that. Like that. It's a. If you get stunned by it, I think it it's is better on the support. Stupidly long stun. Yeah, I feel true, like. But if you do get stunned by it, it is a stupidly long stun though. True. True. That's true. the one big plus. You get the your CK illusions, uh, especially if it's your level eighteen plus. And you just bash away at the enemies. He doesn't have a great Aghanim Scepter target game, unfortunately, for the CK. Like, mm. Maybe Brew Master's okay, but the rest yeah, of his team bad. don't have any great heroes to gain. That's a little bit disappointing. Yeah, that and also, like, there's no dispels, right? I think in the past against Triant, there, there was definitely a couple of heroes where you could go out of your way to help your team and get the eggs, but... Uh... This game that that global dispel isn't really meaningful to. Okay, Robo Z under Ward Vision. In park, walking oh up, just on onto Robo Z. Robo Z is gonna get huh. first blooded. Adrian in the tower. So walk away. Can they get the kill? And yes, they do. Tiger gets a double kill. What's up with all these Grimstrokes getting all the gold? I mean, it's the. I guess it's the set, you know, Chinese New Year, and uh, I mean, it, it's been so long, it's, actually. It's, it's, it's a know? while ago. It's I two would... months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have the dragon somewhere? No. Yeah, no dragon. Anyways, so again, in, I think Infinity got first blood in both games that they played against Heroic, and now they get first blood as well. So they've been you know, pretty good at uh, this first blood thing. Let's see if it's going to pay off. That was a nice rotation. They also have two wards towards mid, one on the uh, radiant high ground, but also one behind it. To the... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to sneeze right there, and I uh, it, it was I couldn't find the mute button. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's totally okay, my friend. So let's look at the lanes here. We have Prada and Shido, uh, or Neko. He, he did change his name. In this bottom side against the Gyrocopter Brew. I would say this is definitely Radiant favor, right? Have uh, double RS, blue heroes, a lot of synergy here. You know, I'm actually surprised. I, I was looking at the, the item builds on CK and I would have expected that the hero would pick up Kanda, but no one does. Huh. Oh, speaking of Kanda, they're gonna... No, that they doesn't work. Yeah, no <laughs> joke. <laughs> but the deep kill the that fire. Uh, there is a TP available though, so this is not gonna be a problem. Ah, uh, that was uh, uh, a great start for the Grimstroke Tiger, already uh, being able to send out his boots. On the position, five Grimstroke so far, bottom lane. Let's see what's going to happen there. It's Brewmaster Gyrocopter lane. They do have a lot of damage if they can get on top of the enemies without support uh, creeps nearby, but they're not getting the chance to pump out damage. And towards mid, I think Queen of Pain is actually one of the better heroes to handle Lushrak, even though Lushrak should still be fine, but... At least you'll be able to steal all that HP away with uh, Shadow Strike spam. Yeah, I feel like in the past you would see Cops going for the screen blink build against Lashrak just because if you went for the dagger, he would go for Split Earth and it's just faster to hit you. But uh, it's 
Spiller, Spiller has been ignored, although in this game, PP did go for two levels. So I do like his build. I think that's how you punish Bob. And sure, you're not going to have that Edict that got ridiculously buffed. But uh, you do trade very well in HP if you get those uh, consistent Split Earths off. Yeah, it's uh, of course a bit problematic to get the bottle Ooh. sipped going when you've got the debuff on you. Gene Park! Side, Adrian. Yeah, he's really struggling the lack, uh, with the lack of armor from the Reality Rift. Yeah, those horses, they are big, but their hoofs just not very strong. Have you ever... To be fair, the other one's also on a horse, so... Have you watched those TikToks, like, where they clean hooves of horses? Yeah, it disturbs me, even though it's technically normal uh, and what they're doing, but it disturbs me in how much they cut off. It's, it yeah. gives me the creeps. It's so weird, like, it, you know when you're uh, cutting your nails and, and like, it, you get afraid because you're, you're cutting too deep? It feels that, but, like, ten times worse, because, like, it, those hooves are so big. Yeah, they're, the, the horses are a, a weird animal that they, all of that is, they just don't feel. And it's, they grab like pliers and like, yeah, things that actually cut it off. And it looks like, oh, they just, it's like you take away your fingers, you, like you cut it off and you're like, no, I'm just fine. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yep, that's very true. Uh, well, looks like they want to take some of those hoofs off, Adrian. But, uh, Taking oh, yeah, a lot members. of damage from the gyrocopter there, and that looks to be a kill. Nope, he has enough healing going on to stay alive. Once again, it does not get taken down. They tried their best. And we'll another, another game run where soon. The laning stage just seems to be so uh, strong on uh, one side. It was a 2k goal lead, it just bounced back to one, but it does feel like infinity. Every single core having the better time on uh, the dire side. That's with us kind of agreeing that their lanes are super strong. Okay, really? Up and pretty low. There's the little reality rift dragging back. Mikiri is taken down by again. Tiger dominating streak coming out. Adrian wants the man fight. Prada. Besides, but there's the Prada TP coming through. Tiger gets stunned up. Jim Park. Tiger would be a pretty nice kill if they managed to secure it, but with the Inkswell coming back up, it's going to be a jump onto Adrian and the TP from Kiki Aww. joins in the fun. Prada will be smack daddy down, destroyed, while in the meantime, Who's bottom lane, Shido dies because his vengeful spirit left the lane. So all of a sudden, both side lanes in turmoil coming through with that rotation from the Venge. If you look at the win probability right now, it is 19%. Because I think Gaben's like, well, these lanes are supposed to be pretty strong. And there, there we go, Adrian here. He's level 3 against level 5 CK. Oh boy. Good rotation. And good rotation indeed from Robozy coming through with the Sonic Wave. They needed to recover somehow. What that means for uh, mid lane, BP is. Uh, Having a pretty good time on the Lishrak. Top net worth by quite a margin at this stage. Yeah, everyone. This uh, 400 difference between the carries. A thousand net worth between PP and Robo Z. And there you go. That's another kill on Revenge. Yeah, he tried to take Gateway. Got himself. God, PP is going to dive underneath the tower. And the pulse damage is enough. Jim Park pushing the tier 1 tower. Jim yeah, Park's almost level 6 done. as well. Wisdom room picked up by PP. Their own one is not even picked up just yet. But here he is. Done and dusted double kill. Yeah, they're just... They're angry. Infinity want to win this game, it seems, within the next 10 minutes. Because they are well aggressive on their approach. Kind of crazy how the odds between Heroic and Infinity were that far apart, and somehow these odds were close, but Infinity is just cooling Akatsuki, even though they honestly have really strong lanes. They are just outplayed through and through. Yeah, sure, there was the first blood, but it, it should never have this much of an impact in the early game. Yeah, yeah, once uh, if Gyrocopter gets a quick six, same with uh, the Grim Soak, which both of them are almost level five. 
Jarokov just knew ulti is really good in the early game. Yeah. Prata. Ooh, nice, nice that was a nice sidestep, but will he be able to stay alive? Nope. Is gonna get taken down. Robo Z though with the Sonic Ooh. Wave counter kill onto PP. That's a big one. Demon needs to be careful. Robo Z wants to blink it. Does do it. Gets the kill with that amplified damage and the healing self in response. Jim Park coming through onto Robo Z. There's the signs from the other side. Tiger gets the Phantom's Embrace looking for Kiri. Another Phantom's Embrace, but Kiri should be able to walk it off and Jim Park. Looking to push the tier one tower towards mid. I have no idea how Jim Park came from that angle, but he was he was definitely there. Uh, they do punish the Quapo though. Pretty sure Robo Z is still very happy. He was being absolutely demolished, and now he is you know, not that far behind Jim Park and the Dire Boys. Uh, the scarier part is Oscar's been just AFK farming in the bottom lane, and he's close to the Sacred Relic. Quick Radiance on him will be disastrous for Katsuki, because their heroes are nowhere equipped to actually fight against it. Yeah, they really aren't. They don't have that much damage on the Brulings, and they're already going for a smoke play here. Maybe looking for Robo Z, looking for the Luna. They don't have vision on her right now, but they could assume where... Yeah, they know. Prada is nearby. There's gonna be the silence, Inkswell stun as well, and the Luna should drop down. And then attention to Prada, but he's already a little bit too far back. Shido taken care of. Tiger is close to Shido's net worth, and I guess I need to play more Grimstroke in my pubs again. Yeah, it's just winning every game, right? Is it 100% win rate from the games we cost? I think uh, Yes, yes. So, huge stacks here coming from Akatsuki. They understand they need to kind of find a way for Shido to recover, but he's only level 6. He doesn't have the levels, doesn't have the items to really go through those stacks. And to be honest, even Adrian doesn't, right? I guess in the past, when Vanguard was more popular item on Centaur, you could deal with those uh, tanker stacks. I'm not sure they can actually it though, but... kill it. Okay. The double edge is pretty nice, and uh, uh, I'm the Iron Will does keep him alive for a bit. He does need to does be very it? careful, though. He is not going to take this. Not alone, at least. And oh. actually, he can't use... Uh, oh my god, this is so oh. 10 HP. <laughs> Alright, they're uh, going to do it. Oh my god. There you go. That's that's dancing <laughs> so with the cool. devil. Uh, in the meantime, the mid tier one tower is being pushed in, while both of those heroes have no HP left, so they can't actually contest. Jim Park is farming away, but Robo Z actually has recovered nicely. He's going for first item Witchblade. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I think it's the item for this hero, to be honest. It's, it's not it's not much variance. It could go Mage Lair. But uh, Mage Slayer is definitely not bad in this game. But Witchblade, I think it's... Yeah, he's, potential, he's right? going Orc Orchid. I think that's a slightly oh. better choice. I, I... Against Slash, though? I mean, Witchblade doesn't really... He Lush already has use after. Yeah, he's very farmed. I don't know. Witchblade feels to me like it's in a game where it's even, so you can kill the enemy supports. It's nice, but if you're behind, it just feels really good. Oh, Oscar. I think the same for Arky, though, as Oscar. They do get the stun. Second stun. You don't have the damage. He doesn't even have to split, technically, but is still going to go for the split there. Adrian on the run, but there's Jim Park, son, in from behind. And with the Phantasm Illusion, Adrian is quickly removed. Chasing on towards the other side. Soulbind onto two. Oh, the double lightning sword does so much damage. Sonic Wave. Yule the, the Yule's dodge of the damage from PP. Great stuff. Looking for more. Won't be able to actually get a kill with that play that they made. I, I don't know where Tiger is popping up from the entire time. He is literally just magically coming from the Aether to snatch away a, a couple of kills yeah I don't five have zero four either. on the grim <laughs> that's crazy i mean they, they had a really strong lane and i guess the ck 
showing that you know with a lot of those other carries being nerfed he can still hold his own uh, that that's why i like grimstroke when you pick it with a strong lane right in the past it used to be jugger or uh, i don't know like an anti-mage can be very strong with it sometimes as well ck is definitely uh, one of the best pairings uh, definitely as like a lane fighting kind of hero i think ck trumps all other safe laners maybe wraith yeah. king can be also pretty that annoying because uh skeletons uh, in the early stage monkey but... king's decent yeah monkey king has its monkey king's downside though is that it's really squishy which i think is the one big issue that you have when you play monkey king that if the enemy has technically Radiant you're... Up on oscar Oh, that's no a good guy, but he walked right towards his enemies, and as you said, no Primal Spring, Sonic Wave pushed him back, he is at half HP. He got the Cinder Brew off, he, he has so much evasion. Not dead, Kisses comes through, he's gonna look towards Product. he will drop dead, rotation from the rest, PP, control on Robo he jumps on towards the high ground, he's now stuck, holding Missile, chases him down, and a 3 for one pick off trade comes into play there's also a blink dragon now done on pp he's going for the kaya next this game is over like this this game is i just i can't see how to come back like you'll find this brew with no ot by himself you orchid ot use all of your spells and he survives he he just popped the cinder brew too fast he had you know how much evasion really is it it's like Thirty percent times two and a half, so you get seventy-five percent evasion. Yeah, that's way too much. Which is pretty decent. Uh, in the meantime, PP finds Adrian with the haste rune top side. It was farming behind enemy lines. No gym park. He is aggressively running around. Gets orchid silence. Oscar has the radiance. Uh, turns. Oh. Kiri will be dragged in, and yeah, Jim Park with the level 2 Phantasm. More illusions, the split was used onto Shido, the Luna lifted up into the sky, dragged back by Jim Park, and kill secured for the CK. I'm loving this aggressive Jim Park, because most of the, obviously, when he plays play CK, he plays a bit more aggressive, but a lot of the Jim Park games are tend to be... You know, farm for 30 35 minutes and then win late game with a terror blade or do so that stupid farm but this is this is fun i'm gonna kill everyone i see jim park and he's trying to do that right now but robo z gets swapped out soul oh, no. no tiger with a great catch and there's gonna be the drag back on both kiri tries to help out his buddies but you know, again they get one they lose three that's just the way the game rolls way too greedy by by Robo Z as well. Like he sees the Grimstroke, they had that high ground ward and he, he just didn't blink. He was like, yeah, I think I can chill. Then he gets so bind, he can't really do anything. This game is a 3%. Like the, uh, this is a draft where Akatsuki should be playing from ahead or shouldn't be playing from behind at least. And look at Jim Park already setting up where he thinks the Luna's gonna farm. The awareness. Let's see. I think he's gonna be lucky. Although Shido does have the night vision. Oh, it doesn't matter though. Ooh. I go walking forward, looking to possibly play some wards. Uh, is also going for the shard next. Has the glimmer already done? Yeah, it's also gonna be a heart CK at a very good timing. You're not gonna have the damage to kill. Luna, good stun. This has come in. Tiger, Glimmer Cape, Jim Park walks away, Soul by not to two. He drags himself back in. He's trying to get some kills. Hey, I'm we'll toggle. Adrian. One toggle was all he could get done. The rest of the team was a bit too late on the move to try and help them out. Yeah, a bit too greedy there. Just trying to get the Luna. Uh, great awareness from Adrian getting the sun off, but uh, remember. He's 0-7. Uh, just just look, the only player, like, all of the kills on Akatsuki are Robozi. Everyone else has zero kills. <laughs> this is just... <laughs> That's, this has uh, to be frustrating. Yeah. So many deaths as well on everyone. She know the least, but 
you know, he's just been farming as safely as he possibly can, and that's Radiance not even the easiest. Definitely not. Even if all the night vision still being threatened all the time. BP is close to his Kaya Sand, so that will keep him alive a decent amount more. Brumas is going Manta style to get rid of the Orchid. He is going to get dragged back. Do they have a way to get the saw to Bruce put off? No, they do not. But they find Robo Z, and that's the only one that actually has a chance at killing an Infinity Hero. That's now they know kill oh. on the Quap. Still, a hundred percent of Akatsuki's kills lie on the Quap. Yeah, it's, it's such an easy game for Infinity if they just kill the Quap at this stage. Because statistically, yep. he's the only one that can kill them. It is a fact. It's, it's kind of how statistics can fool you. Very true. And look at the track. Kaya up has a Whisper of the Dread. Just doing absurd amount of damage. We'll get the Sanj for all of that extra tankiness and finds a Kiri. Bam. You see cleanup. Demon is also in the meantime Adrian. going for some nice defensive tools. Has the shard coming up. Top side Adrian Center is just being killed. No stampede of available. The Bruce split was used for this. And one rock being thrown out in the end. What does he yeah, he does have a blink dagger on Adrian at the very least. Can't use it, Jim Park looking for Prada. They actually dragged Robo Z oh, down that's and a spell. That used the shard from the Grim Show coming into play. Prada is going to be the next target. There are Phantasm Illusions. He needs to gain vision. Oh, Prada gets out of range. Drums. Drums and Gossamer Cape. Gossamer Cape is so good. I think that's the biggest problem with playing CK and Raven in this patch. Freaking Gossamer uh -huh. Cape. Yeah, you rely on that slow from the first hit. But, uh, yeah, it's not gonna be happening so far. How many Gossamer Capes we have? So, it's a Philosopher's Stone on the Snapfire. Whip on the Cob. Makes lore sense. I uh, like that. Center with the Sids of Serenity. Doesn't even have a neutral. Advantage of the Gossamer Cape and Special Serenity. Here he That's a double kill. Oscar. Oh, the Tormentor and neutral. Prada, actually. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, an interesting death coming out. Robo Z, Sonic oh. Wave, get rid of the Dlesh. Speaking of which, he's now stuck. He wants to blink. Okay. Has a blink in a second, but had to wait. And now Kiri, uh, uh, PP actually has to man fight them. Gets swapped in underneath the tower. Adrian with the sun. The clip comes out. Cheeto almost dies by just being near him. And Prada will die back but they find the kill onto pp and that's what they were looking for let's see fair amount of gold a thousand gold for shido definitely the hero that needs it, needs it most finishes his manta not that far away from bkb but he's far away from that 20 from the shard and that's what he needs this game he needs to be able to withstand the initial burst of infinity also, uh, PP got the free shard from the doorman. Oh, that's... How did he... Yeah, does everyone else have a shard? The, both their supports do. have the shards. Huh. So, oh, that's... I, this ma this makes me really happy, because I just hate it when I see Lashrax not buy the shard for so uh -huh. long in the game. I think it, it's just... It's, it's laps. It's game winning, how good that shard is. It really is. Oh, Jim Park's got the full heart. It's going AC next. Yep, more HP. More! More! They're showing the Lash bottom, by the way, as they go high ground, but they will quickly TP here to find the Robo Z with the TP up. Where's the missile? Oh! Ooh, that's so gonna be close. a long sprint from the missile. Fly! Alright, keep following it, Observer. Don't, don't, don't. Observer. No, no, no. Focus on the, the, missile. Mi the missile. That's the what missile. matters. It's flying in the trees. Above. No, above. no, above. It's it's almost at no. the... No! Oh. Oh, it actually stuns Robozy. Yeah, he did. It was glorious. Reported right there. What a shame. Well, uh, Shido is farming in a pretty deep area here. So, Infinity will not be aware of uh, where he is so far. But it also means he's not pushing the waves. 
They're going for Roche. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah, I get that age is walk up the high ground. Give that age, of course, to the less so that he can't get the diabolic edict damage on the high ground. Could also give it to CK, but that's a sucker's play. I'm curious to see if it's actually going to be There's an argument for Jim Park to hold it, honestly. But uh, considering that PP did make room for his inventories, I think it is the Lish Track that's going to pick it up. Yeah, uh, the CK obviously is great if he comes back from the dead, but it's already going to be a tough challenge to kill him, and Lesh can die a lot easier. And also, he just does so much building damage that you, when you're playing against a Feng who's now 11, they don't know how far he is for 12. The swap is oh, a big man. threat. Hello. Ooh, Wait, Prada. Use. Yeah. Huh. Okay, doesn't have the range for it, but up the high ground they go. And they're with the shard. He's gonna stand in his little defensive area. Speaking of which, but he, huh. what? Period. Okay. Sure. He, okay. He just literally is like walking by, and he got grabbed off the street by Jim Park. Like, nope, mine. Yeah. Not only Space, that fire's there. The entire base is theirs. No response. There's a Luna BKB, but they are. Okay, looks like Shido is now walking. And the splitters as well. Really tough to fight in that area. We're gonna need to get the Prada swap, which they do onto Jim Park. Really good. Him down. And Jim Park is dead. They actually popped the eggs as well with the eclipse damage coming through. Bruce Blade comes out as well from the panda looking to continue the fight robo z bkp reveal pp is actually in trouble they might just get a double here and if they're not careful a triple this brewmaster is in a bit of a predicament here does still have the man to style to get rid of the any debuffs possibly coming through but oscar on the run right now arming missile stun onto adrian oscar he does still get chased but should be able to disengage. That is a lot better than I expected it would go. That swap on Parker, I know he's 4 KHP. You would expect him to be tankier, but only 15 armor. That uh, Luna with the with the shard and the damage. That was okay. That was a respectable amount of damage. Also, no dispel on the CK, right? No Manta, no BKB. Which means that the orc it does have extreme value on the swap still. Yeah, the thing is, I would have expected the Inkswell to like pop him up and be okay, but uh, yeah, he could. He, he didn't even get anything off. He just got blown up. So this yeah, I mean, it's the did... swap, right? That's that's yeah. It's, it's hard a bit too far. Too. He doesn't have. Well, he does have a blink now. I don't know if he had a blink then. Yeah, I think it just got it, right? 15 gold. So that was extremely recent. Yeah, that might be a saving factor in another attempt. But right now, luckily enough, they got the bottom set of racks already in the tier 3 tower mid. But this might significantly delay the game because it would not surprise me if Infinity wait until the next Roshan. Yeah, probably. Although Max Roshan is very far away. Could give... Akatsuki some time to farm. They did go from 0% to 4. So, you know, still, still in the game. Yeah, it will actually go up a little bit more. I think so. And and the thing with CK is that out of all of these strength carries, I would say he has, you know, the, the biggest curve down the bottom. He has one of the, if not the best, early game of any strength carry. But... Um, he does fall off. He, he has a weird kind of thing, because he falls off in, like, man fighting, but at any stage in the game, he can one-shot anyone. So yes, if he, like, right. phantasms in the trees, and then he jumps on you with a three-second stun, you're dead. Yeah, he's very, like, Sven in that regard. Uh, he doesn't have a blink dagger yet, but he is going for one, so can probably sell the bracer and Get this bling dagger so that this one shot thing he does gets uh, 
amplified, let's say. It's going to be easier for him to find those openings. Uh, the uh, also has that CK shard at the ready, so we'll be able to uh, bump that one out. It's going back towards the AC. Wait, I like the blink CK already? shard. It's insane. Oh no, good. so he is going AC instead of the blink. All right. Increase the scout range of Chaos Bolt and cause it to create Phantasm Illusion to attack the target. Yeah, supports just die. If you throw it on a Vengeful Spirit, he just gets top, top, down. Luckily, Prada is very close to Zagnum Scepter. That is a, a very big item. It's the only reason Vengeful Spirit actually works. Yep. 900 gold away. Not too shabby. Roche still pretty far. He could be... Possibly getting it. Uh, also, thankfully, Snapfire does have a Philosopher's Stone, which means the Vlads, the Swar Staff, they are all going to be completed. And the Vlads with Vanjara? Oof, that feels so good. Uh, wait, okay, Tiger is going for an A on this guy. I want to see that Aghanim Scepter on the chart. A Grimstroke. Again, you're playing against Luna, so. Luna illusions. Even if the, he pushes out the wave with the Luna, you get that illusion and it just messes with them heavily. Oh, well, for sure. That's really strong. And look at that Shido. Got a Nemesis Curse. Very strong once you get to level 20 with the Moonglaze fired. And the uh, Kanda, which is almost done as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're getting at some pretty good territory here. And there you go, 5%. That's uh, the highest they've been for the last Radiant seven minutes. Well, they will find themselves Prada. No TP out for the Vengeful Spirit. Will drop dead. Robozy pops the BKB. That on cooldown against the Lash is a bit scary. Radiant yeah, no buy on Venge as well. No Glyph. This is maybe... Two sets of barracks? Is the game over? Yeah, they're about to get mega. Huh. Luna right is level 20. Has armor. I think you that's also fight right now. And yeah, it's gone. If no Venge swap makes it really tough to start an engagement. You could go for the jump in, but that puts you in position where Tiger could help you out. And huh. they're just gonna get mega? Bruce Blood even committed here to kill it with the demolish. Center tries to snap it out of there, but he's gonna get taken down Robo Z. Chased by the homing missile, will get bonked on the head. PP is gonna chase him down, and Robo Z is gone. Buyback is available. Shido pops the BKB and Eclipse, but Jim Park doesn't really care that much, or does he? The Sonic Wave does push him back a bit and makes it a bit scarier, but nonetheless, GG gets called an Infinity Take game at number one. and couple of moves that cost them a bit, but overall, Infinity were way superior in this first game. Yeah, absolutely demolishing the lane stage. This is probably the hardest stomp we've seen in the lanes. And we've seen a lot of those today, a lot of two zeros. Just want to point out though, CK did go for life to talent, so I was, I was not wrong there. Okay, just want to make that clear. Just want to uh, make sure you that, were uh, indeed not wrong. I will give you that, Bowie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I wanted to say. I don't have anything else relevant or meaningful to, to say about this game. Okay. The more you know, he has nothing meaningful to say about the game. So we're going to go towards a quick break, ladies and gents. Get everything ready for game number two between Akatsuki and Infinity. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, ladies and gents, for game number two between Infinity and Akatsuki. As you could very briefly see, our faces are immediately removed from the screen because we have something more important to show you, Bowie. Wow. It's going to be game number two. All right. TA first face bad. I don't remember that being there, so I'm assuming this is a pretty different approach here from Akatsuki taking the lash. I mean, honestly... Yeah, the Lash is strong, but I feel like Robo Z had a nice time against the Lash, all things considered. Like, the sidelines were atrocious, and they had really good picks, in my opinion. Like, I'm not sure it's gonna be that easy to, to get, like, sidelines as strong as they had in game number one. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was a, a pretty impressive feat in game number one by Infinity with how dominant they were and akatsuki well obviously they want to get rid of the parker ta it's not like you want to ban ck uh but i do like the pp lash ban because pp was really good in that mid lane and even uh the queen of pain as a counter didn't really work that well as they would have liked bat rider being first picked okay so we have immediate flex potential but Grimstroke. I I just I'm just yep. thinking another Grimstroke game. It's mm -hmm. looking too good right now. We're right on the money. Just pick Grimstroke again. Get the dispel eventually. Sure, in the laning stage, it's not that good. But you know, the bad rider wants to be on top of you, so you can still just sync spell yourself and and kind of get that stun to move away. Or you know, if you want to be cute, you can pick tiny. I think that used to be a very common response to the Bat Rider support, but usually it's either one or the other that gets banned. But we were seeing some pretty weird bans, you know. Wind Ranger, Lashrak, TA, they're all not really heroes you see first phase banned. Also, uh, just quickly want to let you know that Shopify Rebellion did win game number five, so they are oh, qualified. All right, congrats to them. They, I mean, Kudos to now, so taking that to game five. Shopify were pretty close to even going through uh, the the second stage of Dream League, so they are a formidable team. And Nouns did make it very hard. Uh, well, this game now is absurdly hard here for Akatsuki. Like they they got so demoralized, and they're not banning the CK. Like I look at their bans. I can't help but feel like the CK was a bigger problem than, than Lashrak. Like, what stops Infinity from just speaking CK again? Like, as I mean, 16, that's 17. definitely going to be on their minds right now, especially with the Grimstroke already being secured. The uh, Inkswell on CK is great, and the Soulbind with double stun, double drag is both phenomenal. Uh, yeah, that's... I also like the Grimstroke against the Batrider because you can immediately get rid of the Lasso, which is an important factor. You get him soulbound to anything. Batrider is dependent on movement. So that will be taken out of the game so far. Centaur for Infinity this time around. So that's going to be their offlane. And could also be their offlane duo because, of course, the Grimstroke doesn't have to be a 5. It could also be played by Demon as a yep. pulse 4. Very true. Nothing stopping them there as they will pick the tiny, the response against the bat rider very often. Um what else do you want to play? Do you wanna steal the CK here? Do you think it could be good against Centurion Lane? I think it could. Special lives they're already being banned. I'm still waiting for the blood seeker. Come on. Hmm. Dire team. It's actually not that bad. Yeah. Uh, maybe it lanes terribly against. Oh, Core? Batrider or Tiny then? Uh, yeah, they still have a lot of flex on the side of Akatsuki. The Tiny Batrider, hell, even Marana, if you're wild enough, could be flex. Kind of crazy that you might be playing Batrider Core here remaining. and you ban TA first phase. It seems a bit counterintuitive. But uh, maybe the first levels are hard if you're playing Mitie. I don't know. I I haven't seen that matchup in a while. Well, if TA gets picked, I assume it's going to be a 
Parker TA more than anything. True, but maybe this is offlane bad, right? Yeah, it could be offlane bad. Could be offlane tiny. We've seen a couple of those recently. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Although if it is offlane tiny, Siki should just destroy him. Zero armor boy. Doesn't want to buy the Ring of Protection like we see a center do. Uh, usually it's the Wraith Band. Kind of takes longer to get and it's it's less armor anyways. They get this Lina, which should be able to beat the Batrider mid if that's what they want to play. And also would beat the Tiny mid if they want to do that. Beats anyone else mid. Uh, yeah, we saw the Invoker, keeping. right? Doing decentish yeah. against Lina. He Guess got kind of stomped. It. Yeah, I, I think that was an outclass, though. But like, I, I feel like it's a 40-60 lane for the Invoker. Maybe 30-70. 37 43 so I'll, I'll give you. And I know uh, that doesn't uh, amount to 100, but that's that's what I'll give yeah, you. Yeah, that's, that's just weird math. Uh, but it is a PP Lena. That's oh. pretty scary. Ogre Magi. So Ogre 5? Yeah. Looks like Orish 5. Grimstroke 4 with the Centaur. And then uh, let's pick... Parker hero. Unless he goes Parker Lena, which he also does play. I don't True. know if he played it recently, but he has played a lot of safe lane Lena. And if you lane it with an ogre, that is a disgustingly strong lane. Yeah, no, you're right. It's actually it's actually not bad. You have a setup for the LSA. You're a tanky booky boy. You don't care about tanking arrows and just helping the lane as they will coddle. So this might be their mid hero here for Akatsuki. It could also smell. be another pulse four. They have four possible pulse four heroes in their lineup. <laughs> they do. It it does make me very much question their lineup right now. <laughs> yeah. So well, that said, that said, just just looking at the lineup we have in front of us, uh, I just feel like it's gonna be a mid Kato. Uh it when you look at their mid player is. Unless it's a mid bat rider off lane tiny. Or it's a mid tiny off lane bat. No. Robos is a quarter player. Duracho played a safe lane bat rider. <laughs> Duracho's crazy. Safe lane Mirana, maybe? Safe lane tiny? I don't know. Uh, mid Mirana is a thing as well. I've seen a couple. Ten seconds remaining. But they nerfed Maelstrom, so maybe that's not that good anymore, Five to be honest. Remaining. But just looking like at the competitive games here of uh, Rinengan, also known as Robo Z, he has uh, 18 Kato games in his professional career, 72% min rate. So that is pretty promising. Bat rider wise, he has uh, 16 games with a 56% min rate. So, yep, uh, after careful consideration, I'm betting my uh, chips here on the Kato, especially because they're betting a number. Both good against both Batrider and Kato, but, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Indeed, exactly that. Uh, it is see. late, all right? We've been casting a lot of Dota 2 today. Please be kind with your co-caster. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, oh wonderful Bowie, Lord and Savior <laughs> of Radiant South Dota American Dota. They ban the troll, they pick a Sven. So it's gonna be a what are these lanes? Bat Sven five? Marana? Yeah, you're right. Is this core tiny lane. then? Bat tiny? I think bat post four tiny uh no a uh, tiny post four bat rider yeah. off lane? No 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 no. I think it's the opposite, right? I, d I mean, I don't actually know what the offlane is. They don't know play. what they're doing, but they have a lot of flex. Oh, I love this White Spirit, by the way. We kind of talked about it today. Uh, I think Kato is another hero that you want to play White Spirit against. You have the gap close. Uh, Kato doesn't really do anything. And you also have a way to dodge the Illuminating Lane. And they did buff that exact spell. So I just love Infinity's lineup. They trashed Akatsuki. And Akatsuki actually had solid lanes. Like they honestly had a decent draft. This draft is all over the place. So it is a Kato mid. 
Uh, They're still deciding who's playing what because they haven't picked yet. It is Mirana 5. It just the uh, Bat Rider yeah. Tiny that. Wait, so Bat Rider 5 or Tiny then, right? Please? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Five seconds. So four Mara. Wait, so then it's Bat Rider Sven against a Centaur Grimstroke. <sighs> Tiny Mirana against Ogre Lina. Well, they're pretty okay lanes. I think Tiny uh, might struggle I, a bit, though. I think this Batrider's Sven lane is trash. Like, you have no damage. You have... I don't know. This is a center Grimstroke. I feel like they're, they're going to be destroyed in the lane. Possibly, yes. I mean, obviously, center is one of the strongest laners in this patch, which makes it problematic. But it is... I don't know. I mean, he's oh. a good CSer. I wouldn't say he's a strong laner. Like he's he's a weird. Like he he CSs well. He he doesn't die easily, but he doesn't have any kill potential. Like he has very mid kill potential, and I don't think Batrider is the hero that enables that. Right, a Crystal Maiden, a Dreamstroke. There's there's definitely heroes that are better. I think they have good heroes in general. You know, it's Batrider. It's gonna be is always powerful. It's one of the best supports in the game. Kotto can play fast, and they have a lot of amplified damage with the Kotto spells. But like lane, like they had amazing lanes game one, and they got destroyed. So these games are a clear downgrade for every single lane. Yeah, uh, I think Robusi should have an okay time in mid, though. I obviously when you lane against the Kotto, it's like free. <laughs> That's just how Cotto yeah. works. You you get a yeah. free lane. Uh, that's why back uh, a while back you had like the enemy picked a Cotto, you knew it was mid, you picked Alchemist because you just farmed like crazy and won the game mm -hmm. that way. Yeah, um, very true. We'll see if they're going to try and block some of the Cotto camp so far. They're not really worried about that. Maybe they feel like if this Cotto is just stacking for himself, they can just play aggressive. I've, I things. find this Akatsuki draft as well a bit weird. It's... It, to me, it's very weird. Like, Ogre Lina, how in the actual earth are you laning this zero armor tiny against Ogre Lina? That is indeed a question that we will see answered soon enough. He's actually going for a Wraith Band on the tiny, which is yeah. not that bad. Yeah, it is. It is the solution armor-wise, but you know they nerfed that armor, uh, and it is a very expensive item. Like, he, and he might need two in his lane, as he should be. Ooh. Let's say very misses, fast. but a two-man slow comes out. There is an arrow leveled by the Marana. We'll throw it out. Adrian walks away, and should still be three bounties for Infinity. Mm -hmm. The. Shido Sven is here in the bottom side. What is Jim Park oh, and Tiger's position? They're looking to kill yeah. Adrian. Oh my god. Saving the LSA for the for the TP. Should still get the kill anyways. Beautiful. Yeah, that is gonna be Oh 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 Tiger, just yep. kill it. <laughs> <laughs> is this another kill? He has a blood grenade as well. This is a big boy. Beefy boy. He's not going to tower dive for that kill, but they're just going to tickle each other. Oh, the Observer Ward gets placed. Wow. Oh, Sidestep, side dodges the arrow. Beefy boy on the run, and Kiri can't chase him down. And now an Observer Ward is... Actually, Tiger probably wants to deny it. Oh, you <laughs> remove it with the Sentry Ward, but he's just going to die to the neutrals. Well, in the meantime, in the lane, Jim Park's going to be chilling. But they did manage to get first blood secured. Yeah, and I mean, Jim Park's going to be really happy about it. This is a free lane for him, and now that he supports, not leeching experience for 25 seconds, which means he's just fine. Guess they could try to avalanche arrow. Nah, they just want to push the lane, maybe pressure Jim Park under tower a little bit. It's an act of mercy. Uh, and in towards mid, PP versus Robo Z will be. Uh, I mean, there's definitely kill threat there for Robo uh, for PP. Robo Z probably not because 
I mean, unless people really make a mistake. And then bottom lane. No idea how that's gonna happen. Top lane, Jim Park. Okay, yeah. I, this is kind of. Expect this lane to not go that great for them. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about this. This lane is so weak considering what Infinity has. And I, I, I'm gonna say something that the bottom side, Shido is also struggling to get CS. There's already uh, 10 CS here in Oscar, and I don't think he gets easier. There's already Inkswell available here. You just get one Hoof Stomp with level 2 Inkswell. Good luck having the HP to come back to lane. If he ate the nice mid up against the Gato. Oh, Kiri. He's gonna die again. Uh, that's, he just came back towards yeah. the lane, so TP is on cooldown, top lane's over. That lane is done. Um, we can just ignore everything that's happening there, let's focus on the other two. Yep, let's look at PP. He has not learned to simulate. Okay, finally gets it, because I think this is the key to be able to withstand the Kato in the later levels. Bottom lane looks like Demon was looking for a courier. I'm not sure what he was doing, but he is... Not gonna be there for the Lotus. Um, yeah, this is the only lane uh, that is looking remotely good. Like, even Robo Z is being trashed. 99 on PP. Lee versus range. Always fun. Uh, yep. PP just sidesteps it every single time. Doesn't care about the illuminates. If a rotation comes in, it will be very dangerous. And top side. Adrian oh, we didn't talk about this some. as well, right? It's the Void Spirit with a Grimstroke. So, ah, uh, yeah. That inks well. Very good at finding the Kotal. You can dispel the lasso, you can dispel like so many things. Uh, so, the Void Spirit feels way more confident going in. If you get a base layer, like you're never killing PP, and he might not even feel like he needs it just because how well he's displaying the lane. Yeah, the uh, Void Spirit is going to be pretty active this game, has so many targets, but the plus side is also Grimsock has choices he can use on the uh, Grim uh, on the center, on the Void Spirit, they can just go wild wherever they want to. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, yeah, there's the Stampede on top of it. You're going to have Bloodlust. The Moose Speed and the Kite that they have is really powerful. There's going to be Moonlight Shadow if Marana ever gets to level 6. Right now, Kiri is level 1, very close to being a 4, which is definitely not ideal. Uh, I think it was a big mistake, by the way, for him to learn Sacred Arrow in, in, in that engagement, like when the when they try to go on the tiny level one, it, like they, he was already fine once he skilled the air and used it. I think this really kind of destroyed his lane because having Star Storm or Leap level one is almost always better than the arrow. Like it, this is a tiny, right? He can secure the range creep. Like he just gets the tree grab, gets some melee creeps. Once the range is low, you just throw the three. Shouldn't really struggle CS wise. It's not like they have a Veno Mancer. Like if you have a Veno here, it can't secure the. The range creep, then the arrow is definitely a bit better of a level one spell. Yeah, right now you can only use the arrow to really just farm up the creeps. Uh, but now that camp is also blocked, so they won't be able to go for any pulls or kill those creeps, making it even more problematic for the Marana. PP in the meantime towards mid is uh, not too much experience. Well, he still has two creeps to kill, so it's decent amount of experience ahead of Robozy, about probably half a level. And bottom side, Shido is doing an okay job in laning so far. It is really that tiny. It's just not getting any creep kills whatsoever. Making it really tough to uh, get that blink dagger at a decent time. I mean, even boots seem like a fairy tale for him right now. Six and one on Adrian. Yeah, just not the not the start that they wanted, and we talked about it. They're just really weird draft, just flexing four position fours as their first four picks, and yeah, just this DC from Kiri not 
and then in the end choosing the one that I did not expect to be a position four to be position four. I expected Murano to be because I I thought he's going to lane with the Sven, so you have easy Stormhammer arrow. That's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and also and... if you have the Bat Rider, you have the Taws into uh, Flame Break. You have way more displacement with those two heroes. I I agree. I feel like it's just a better of a lane. Well, luckily enough, Kiri is now back, so hopefully the technical issues have been put in the past. And I am pretty happy to see Void Spirit again. I have not casted a Void Spirit game in a long time. I agree. That here is so fun. Like, he is... Everything about him is cool. Like, his attack animation, his voice lines. He is a hero that was definitely overtuned. For a while, then got dead. Then they introduced Universal Heroes. It became really strong again. Then they destroyed it. And finally, looks like Ice Frog is ready to redeem the Void Spirit. I mean, to be honest, it was not even that big of a buff. But uh, I I'm glad that it's been played today. Is it only that as a buff? Uh, oh yeah, only yeah. disseminate buff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not enough. I feel like this hero... The, the talent change really crippled this hero quite a bit. The putting the outer dissimilaring level 20. Now we have to choose between the Astro Step and the Outer before you could get both. Uh, yeah. Rosie's stacking for himself, right? It's You're the thing you do well. with Kotto. But he is going to be out timed already. He's not going to get his 6 before PP, which means that. If you're just farming those stacks, you will kind of weaken your side lanes. You're not going to have a way to react with the uh, spirit form. Yeah, they also do, do have to be careful that it doesn't at one point possibly get stolen. But I don't think that should be the biggest problem. PP. Easy bottle refill coming through. The fact that he's universal, uh, I think... You know, Manta style, for instance, this game springs to mind on the Void Spirit. They did buff the Manta style slightly. Prata. And yeah, the Bat Rider tried to get some damage in, but nowhere near enough to get any kills secured in that bottom lane. Uh -huh. Kotto going for another set of stacks. So Rubuzi has uh, yet already farmed one and we'll have even bigger stacks. No. Reaction here from Finny. He should be able to eventually get it once he deals with the mid wave. Here he is almost at the same amount of creep kills as Adrian. And uh, speaking of Adrian, he is just getting bullied all the way back. Here he is, well. Jim Park is uh, loving life. Did miss a couple of creep kills because he was harassing them, though. Seven CS on the offlane tiny man. Yeah, that's not exactly that what you want to see happen. Absolutely brutal. Oh, that mid lane fight coming through Robo Z for Demon Trade. Prada is actually burning PP. Pee -pee. The creep soaks up the Aether so Remnants. Though. And PP's Pee on the run. Prada, can he catch up? Actually, the sticky napalm stacks are pretty high right now. There's going to be, oh, the blood grenade. That's something PP didn't see coming. Needs to jump back. Will be able to get back. Tiger oh, walks through. the bottle. Demon gets the rune as and, well. Yep, the, he can go back in. Spells are still on cooldown though. But it's already a 3k net with lead. Inkswell onto Adrian. He doesn't have cost. He didn't. Wow. Like a full minute, and he actually didn't get any experience in a minute time on the tiny. Because I saw he was at the same experience as a minute ago. Huh. That's really unfortunate. Yeah, Kiri is no, he's also still only level two. They are desperately in need. If they're both those experienced runes get picked up, I would just like GG out. <laughs> hey, well, you. there's no fury in this game, so it seems impossible for the radiant wisdom rune to be stolen. So. Oh no, Tiny has to is gonna pick up the oh. At least Kiri gets the experience for the second hand one, but that means that nothing goes to Prada. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Very true. He actually has a lot of experience on Prada. And Shido is even level 6 right now on the Sven. Yeah, we'll start the farming journey here. 
We'll see how how well he will be able to recover. But rotation here to get the stun on Adrian. That's an easy. Oh, not that easy actually. Yeah, yeah it's up. pretty easy. Center stampede as well. Chase for more. Kiri has no more leaps. They're not going to chase him down. Prada, though, Inkswell stun will not land. And Prada gets over the cliff with his firefly. They turn their attention towards the tier one tower. And Jim Park is almost done with the full Maelstrom after his Falcon Blade doesn't have boots yet, doesn't really need them at this stage. Fiery Soul gives you insane movement speed buffs. Yep, you're made of fire, you're already really quick. And PP will get back to the mid lane. Rune is gonna spawn, will he be lucky? No, he will not. No, actually he will. Because there's no one else here. <laughs> Ace rune top for PP. Need to be very careful if you're gonna go for a gank, which seems to be the case. Top side, they want to kill off Jim Park. Also gets that bloodlust buff from Tiger. Uh, walking up, Robo Z. There's gonna be the man fight. Ace rune being popped, but they kill off Jim Park. Three kill streak picked up. But PP with the Ace rune and the smoke. Will he go back in for the kill, for the fight? It is three Radiant Heroes, though. They find Robo Z. Inkswell. PP dives on top of Robo Z. Does he have the damage to kill him off? Robo Z actually is very survivable here. He's also got good stats with the Fluffy Hat and the Crown. Now PP only one more Astro step to try and get away. Astro is up. Does he get out of there or does he? Avalanche is available. No, there's a Centaur Stampede in response. Laguna Blade onto Adrian. Parker. But Parker, if he dies again, this is this is painful. Huh. Well, that's that's really weird. No Stampede. They <laughs> just TPs and dies again. This, this is going to set them back quite a bit, to be honest. That is a classic Parker move. No, just... Uh, absolutely stomp the lane and find ways to make his game a bit harder you know, that, that's how he improved right in, uh, it's, he's kind of like he's playing he's rock lee right now he has the weight and they will also find demon so somehow akatsuki finding a way back or maybe being given a way back this game that was actually one of the only possible references to naruto i would ever understand um, luckily enough, so I have weird. seen like, that clip. How, I how don't... do you call yourself a weeb and you don't know the narrator references, bro? No, I know that one. I specifically probably only know that one because yes. I have seen that clip, but I have not seen Naruto. I have not seen Naruto, One Piece, or Bleach. For too many episodes. Bleach doesn't have that many episodes. Nah, nah, I, I... True, but One Piece does have a lot, so I even even myself watch that, and I would never, I would probably never watch it. I'm a sucker of weird isekai shows. Okay, okay, yeah, I I do have friends that are into isekais. I I think I, I watch one, and then it feels like I've watched all of them. Classroom that's, of that's the Elite. Have you seen that one? Which one? Classroom of the Elite, that's the one I'm watching right now, the season oh, three. It's like high school, but they're like super try-hard kids. And like, it's weird. I can't, I can't do it justice in an explanation, but it is really cool. Okay, I'll, I'll keep it in mind as we do see the tier one tower fall in here. So Infinity, they do group up. Looks like the Gleipnir will be Jim Park's item of choice as he will show himself to the top lane. I mean, honestly, Robo Z is very farmed. I was not expecting him to get such an early vessel. His travels are already up to not that poor of a performance. I, he was being trash mid and he, I guess those tags helped a lot. Uh, the early poor pieces of the spirit vessel also gave him the HP for the fight to be able to stay alive. Mm -hmm. 12 so that's uh, pretty important. Shido, though, underneath Ward Vision, they know that he went towards oh. the ancient camp. Pipi walks yes. up, Shido says hi, and there's going to be the Silence Inkswell coming up on top. Stun, stun, stun. Healing coming! Lock, lock, lock. Will. Yeah, Robo Z is there. They won't be able to get the kill onto this vent. PP needs to disengage and 
Jim Park found Jim Park. Yeah, that's Two the last one. managed to get the kill. This is getting a little bit dicey. Demon stun will not be able to connect. Tiger is on the run. They're looking for. Now PP is going to TP out of there. And Infinity, they managed to get good leads and then go completely haywire in their approach afterwards. Robuzi is actually doing a really good job. He really is. I think Prada as well. Like, he's 3 1 and 5 in this game that looks absolutely dire for them. Still. Like, look at Adrian. He's 1,300 gold away from from PP. That was having an absolute blast in the mid lane. Like, he's it's like zero deaths. But this tiny had 7 CS mid at 7. Let's <laughs> see so somehow. Like, completely recovered. He still only have has 35. Yeah, he got some good kills. He is 200 gold away from a blink. Like, this is... Uh, like, not too far from a mid-tiny blink dagger, uh, right? He stopped for a Wraith ban, he stopped for a lot of intermediary items. Terrence is the lead in terms of experience on Akatsuki as well. Dyer's yeah. Top tower is under attack. And we have a game. It's two levels in experience. Uh, after, you know, Mirana, four minutes in the game, level two. Interestingly enough, PP not going for that universal hero type build we were talking about. He did go for a Kaya Sanj. Hey, well, man, style afterwards. Alright, we'll see. I mean, to, that is universal, the Kaya Sanj. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Look at PP. Manta style, get all the pieces, Shido in mid. Uh, it's, there's just no damage from PP yet. That's yeah. the big problem. They just don't have... They need the damage from Parker to kill anything. He, he doesn't have boots, by the way. He's now flying to him. But those travels, he gets severely delayed after he managed to die three times. Maybe with Oscar, they might have the damage required. They seem to know where Parker is. Or they're gonna oh going oh. up the triangle. This is a free smoke. It gets broken. Quick hook down from Oscar. They're gonna go in soul bind onto two and the Laguna blade as well. That's gonna be two the heroes quickly dead. God strength views. They will find Oscar. Jim Park actually needs to get out, but Shido will be. Oh no! Whoa! 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 whoa the heal! The heal! Oh, Robo Z's heal just turns that fight around. Heals Shido up enough to keep him alive. And now Tiger is gonna be arrowed up on the side. Robo Z is. Robo Z is carrying them hard on his back right now. On his little horse. Yep, this is absolutely insane as Robo Z finally dies, but they're gonna find Mr. P. <laughs> he actually exactly. got the kill with his own vessel. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, death from beyond, but uh, great fight from Akatsuki. It looked like it was gonna go perfectly for Infinity after that first two. Uh, Oscar. Heroes dying on the opener, and all of a sudden it uh, instantly turns around. Hero will land with the right to damage, three toss. I mean, this game is so weird. Like, this is a team wipe. Infinity lost all five heroes in the last minute. Yeah, this is uh, disastrous. Infinity. Okay. Seem to know where Blood Robos is going to be doing. Life near stun. Where's the follow up? Oh, lasso to but protect. The blink lasso reveal from Prada. It's going to get uh, taken care of pretty quickly, though, in response. Tiny with his own blink dagger. There is no spell available for PP, but they're not going to continue in for more tigers. She's actually chasing for the Radiant Heroes. No God Strength. Life near is back up. Jim Park's so and... aggressively positioned. Here. No. The rest of his team is not there. Arrows flying out. They find Kiri lack control onto Prada, and that's going to be kill number three for Infinity. So, you know, they turn it right back into their favor. All they need to do is kill off Robo Z, and they will be successful as they have definitely shown in that engagement. Yeah, and they do have the heroes and the items. Blink on Oscar. There's uh, Void Spirit being level 12, having the extra range on his Astro Stat. Especially the Kaya Sunge, just giving him that burst of damage. This is not gonna be an easy game, but like it felt like this game was gonna last 15 minutes. So, even if Infinity seemed to be 
in a better position now. This game still, like, there's definitely a chance for this Van to carry. He has a BKB already, I mean, at 17. And he's going for the Aghanim Scepter, so... We're gonna get Superman Sven chasing after the Lena, and it's gonna, yeah, Jim Park has no BKB queued up, so it's gonna take quite some time before he gets any way out of there. Mm -hmm. This is also gonna be a dispel for the Ink's Wealth on the Sven, a dispel for the Bloodlust. Definitely a, a decent Aghanim Scepter game here for Shido. As they are smoking, I guess, Moonlight Shadowing towards Mr. Jim Park. Oh, good awareness though. One direction, Jim Park the other. Have himself three nice little lotuses, but no one will be caught just yet. And like a creeping through the trees is going Hanamitis. So, probably the only hero that's allowed to get a Hanamitis still. Uh -huh. Oh, mid jump in onto Prada, bat right mid, taken down. Quick catch. Disengage. What you want to see on the infinity side, the having the damage actually kill someone off. Yeah, the supports can definitely die now. This void spirit starting to pop off again. They're going in. Adrian looking for a catch. They do have a shard now on demon, so they have a save. Hmm. There's a really good ward from the dire, just scouting where the Kato is, where the Sven was. They, oh, they know. They want to find Robozy. And they very quickly dunk on him. Instantly dead. Shido pops the god strength. Arrow is going to fly out. Oscar's going to get stunned. Oh. Great toss from Adrian. That's a double kill. Make that a triple onto Tiger. The BKP reveal as well. Jim Park is just continuing to farm a little bit underneath enemy ward vision. So he knows he needs to be careful. He is walking towards the other area so he doesn't get caught. And yeah, Jim Park playing it very safely yeah still like the infinity felt like they had the timing with the jump but they get punished really hard as gene park looking for adrian oh lasso into the cliffarino and tossed up and Jim park tp'd a little bit too soon his teammates weren't alive just yet huh. other death five deaths on parker so far Good war though. We're gonna find some heroes here. Soulbind onto two. Inkswell stun connects on two as well. Oscar gets a double kill with the double edge. And at least he'll find a response skill. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Amplify damage on PP. That's the dream for every Void Spirit player. A lot of great mix between physical and, da and magical damage. Just loves having that around. Cheeto is farmed. He really He's is. close to that Aghanim Scepter, and yeah, then you're gonna get Superman chasing after you. That's gonna be problematic for the Lena. If he wants, he can uh, disassemble the Egg Saber, actually have the Eggs, like, for the next fight. Wondering if he's gonna do exactly that and get it again, or just wait it out. They could also get some good shards. Dire side, as Ogre Shard is really good to have. Yeah, uh, this game's amazing. Against the Sven. It's a lifesaver, actually. Uh, the Centaur Shard is also pretty good. Uh, Radiant side. Marana's is actually better than it used to be. Eggs ready for Shido. Gets level 18 as well. And Parker is going for a staff then afterwards. BKB. Roshan hasn't been touched by either side just yet, but at worth wise. The Dyer overall are still looking good. Adrian is building up into the Echo Saber. Oh, he's looking to get the Kanda himself on the tiny. Jump in. Kill. Secure. They're really fast on both sides with these dives every single time. It's just a kill. And then look for more. And then half the time they overextend. They want to dive. They have that eggs on this fan. Oh, the they are playing. On it's gonna weaken their position. Yeah, the Marana ulti use uh, spooked them off of taking the Tormentor. Okay, they will do it. Want to make sure they get the shard. Ogre is the best, as you said, and they already have the green stroke one. Oh, that's unfortunate. 
It's not the worst. Yeah, good stats. Fine. He also has a shield as well. That's that's huge because it does slow down the the burst of Sim quite a lot. He needs to have BKB turned on to really output his max damage now. Pause. Uh, up arrow lands onto Oscar. Lasso drags back. Oscar's dead. Stampede was used. Demon's trying to run away, but Cheetah does a lot of damage. Can Demon Bam. get out of there? No, he cannot. That's a double kill for Shido that Sven is doing the heavy lifting here, but his teammates is really enabling him with the quick blinks on the bat and this uh, uh, tiny this game. Huh. SA is such a fun region. Like, you get game one, ends in 20 minutes. Team just absolutely storms. It feels like they are miles ahead better. And uh, they didn't have a game like this. <laughs> The same team just makes the most basic mistakes despite getting like, despite destroying the lanes and also getting like first blood. Yeah, they look really good in the laning stage and then afterwards they have had some issues. Uh, Jim Park just needs to get some farm going in his mind. I think that is the case as well. Roshan, once it goes dire side, Infinity might try and scoop it up. They have a pretty good lineup for it. They're actually going to smoke right now. Do they have an item why they want to smoke? Pike or? on Jim Park and Manta on Void Spirit. Uh, yeah. I mean, Pike doesn't really help you against the Sven. Uh, he does have God Strength again. Adrian is going to get taken down. Anything more spotted out? No, Marana Invis still going. Shido is looking for God Strength Charge on to BP. And he's actually going to get stunned up himself as the BKB. Can he get it popped in time? He does pop it right now, but the damage is clear from Jim Park coming through. And that is a little bit too late on the use. These three kills secured. Oscar gets himself out for the time being. And Kiri underneath the tower should drop to Jim Park. Right click, right click, kill secured. Double kill for Parker. And yeah. He flies with the hammer, to storm hammer, towards a voice spirit who obviously can dodge it with disseminate, and then yeah. doesn't pop the BKB once he pops up in front of him. Uh huh. Remember that, like we when we were casting uh, the one win tournament, we were very confused about Sven's actually not going for eggs multiple games. I think it was. Uh, Watson, Ramses, lo lots of different carry players weren't going for it. And I think that when you're against the Pucks and the Storms and the Void Spirits, you, like, Blink is better. Obviously, there are multiple arguments for the eggs this game. You know, dispelling the Bloodlust, the Ogre Shard, the Inkswell, but it is very easy for PP to dodge that and if you don't pop the BKB you can be heavily punished yeah you could also just toggle it off and not fly towards him but uh, I think the main target you need to try and nuke is Jim Park the problem is he's got the BKB now so even if you fly towards him he pops the BKB and then immediately turns around to her and fight himself away uh, he is gonna be out of range and Roche is even going to get taken care of right now. They're a little bit too slow on the radiant side, so that should be the first ages of the game for the lean. Uh, yeah, he made space in his inventory. Ooh, oh, have a toss. They managed to quickly get kill onto Demon, who's going to buy back. Shido, no. hit. Jim Park's going to man fight Shido, and because we know that man fight, turn attention to Prada behind the tower. Yep, that, that looks like they got full control of the game back. That was a uh, Sven God Strength bashing away at you, and you just took it like a champ. They were just slightly late there. It's just an awkward engage. They have no vision. The bat rider was supposed to get vision of the pit so that Sven could go in. Because he walks, he takes so much damage from Jim Park. He even has that Arbor Destruction to do some extra damage. And they didn't get their Tormentor, so this might be a tier 2 plus Tormentor, plus possible a Wisdom Rune if they keep controlling the Triangle area. Oh, that's going to be the Tormentor secured. Ogre Magi, is he going to be lucky this time around? It is going to be, yes indeed, you get Ooh. the Fire Shield, which is 
really just insane. Eighty-five percent damage absorbed from Sven, for instance. That is a uh, that's team fight winning. Yeah, can be dispelled though. So as long as uh, Sven stuns the target, he attacks. Uh, should be fine unless it gets cast afterwards, which is possible for sure. PP is level 19. God damn, he's gonna get these eggs in. Uh, honestly, both talents are great, but I think the Astro step talent is better. We just want to find the Kato and kill him multiple times. I get him set to know as well on the Void Spirit. Yeah, the problem with Kato is it does not scale. It's like really fast and strong in that early to mid game, and then late game. It's annoying, but that's all it really does. The healing is not going to be effective enough. The damage output from Kato late game is just non-existent. Yeah, it's a really weird hero. He he peaks really hard like minute seven, and then he kind of falls off. The when I see Kato's looking the best, they oh, oh it looks like she does yeah, that again. Stun knock. Kido also was 3k ahead of Jim Park, and now he's 3k behind Jim Park. Yeah, that deep ward uh, in the Ancient on the left side found him and just farmed it. Oh, Lasso. Lasso, he does have the Aegis. Also, the, the, a lot of HP. He's got 3k HP on Jim Park, and will lose his first life. And they might actually lose more if they're not careful. PP forces them back with that chase up, and Jim Park can just push up the high ground. There is no Lasso. Obviously, tossback play is still a thing, but there's also no Sven for 50 seconds. Yeah, no buy. They don't know, but they are definitely poking here, trying to figure out. They know there's also no lasso. Jump in. Oscar gets the sun onto Adrian Soulbind onto two, and the Holy. double Laguna Blade. Robozy is dead. Kiri inside the fountain will drop as well, and that is going to be a definitely full set of racks, maybe even more. Yeah, there's no time more like that. But yeah, they have even no if you buy back play. the Kato, I guess he does. He will have spirit form, so never mind. They could still fight. It's just awkward. You need the lasso as well. It's up in ten seconds. That is at least a big plus. But Infinity, uh, yeah, the, the, it was. They're recovering pretty nicely, I would say. Yeah, it looked very sketchy at some point but they did recover i think jim park definitely got his act together and this voice spirit from pp just having uh pretty much flawless game. it was a really good yeah he has been yeah. really good in all these matches that they played even against heroic he looked really good yeah, uh, on, uh, to, against heroic he played of course the uh, game one uh delina yeah. which was remarkably well done. Uh, game number two, drawing a bit of a blank here. He played, what was it? Was it, it was not Buck, it was... Oh, Lash the Lash, Rack. Rack. yeah, the Lash. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was the, the reason why they almost managed to win that game. Actually, both games were the, re he, what, he was almost the reason that they won. But they lost both games because Heroic is still a very good team. Lasso, oh, Lincoln's. Lincoln's reveal coming out, and that's Holy. DK Pop as well. Yeah, they're just getting mowed down right now. Shido is being taken care of. They don't even need Parker to kill off Shido. GG cold. Huh. And that is going to be Akatsuki tapping out and being eliminated from the Dream League 23 close qualifiers. I mean. No idea what Menos Mal yeah, or... he said. Uh, too bad I can't play Dota. I guess there was some. Some, yeah, probably pub some messages. Beef. Yep, yep, Thrown yep, in yep. there. PP probably played with a couple of their players. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone's played with each other in different teams in South America anyway. So they At got their stage. little cliques of, I hate that guy. And other cliques have, I hate that guy. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, that's the result we expected. Uh, I thought it was going to be a 2-0, not to this degree. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, they, they, they were definitely a bit shaky on Infinity. They, they had moments that uh, I'm pretty sure other teams would have explored. But so far, they, they will 
advance on a 2-0. Uh, who are they playing? Who? How is the other match going? Uh, that is a good question. I will quickly it's check. One, it is going one. to... Yeah, it's a three-mapper in that series. Okay. And uh, yeah, we don't know exactly how far they will be headed uh, just yet. And actually, I think they won't be facing either of those because the next round, uh, the winner of this round faces up against... Infinity True. will face up against either Boom or Beast Ghost. Yeah, two very formidable opponents. The Beast Coast, the two zero Starbacks. We were kind of surprised about that, but now they have the opponents that they faced into the Elite League qualifiers. They lost three zero to Boom, so it's going to be a test here for Beast Coast to see if they learn something. But even if they lose that series, they still have the lifeline of playing Infinity team that is looking pretty solid, nonetheless. Yep, but that does, of course, conclude this stream for the evening. Uh, yeah, any last words for the viewers at home? Uh, yeah, guys, follow the channel. Stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of SA Dota here. Uh, Heroic this time. They will have to also face some tough competition. Probably the best competition that they, they had so far. I think, you know, a lot of the new teams... Uh, that formed were in between the qualification of Dream League S23. We have Midas Club, we have uh, even some new Peruvian stacks with Dark Mago and Parker. It's, it's going to be awesome. Stay tuned and we will be back for, for the final day. We're not going to be casting the finals, but we're going to be casting two series, I think. Uh, one. We're casting the lower bracket finals on the uh, on Sunday, so especially be here for that match. Um, mm -hmm. But don't forget to check out the other matches. There is still one going on, as mentioned. It is Lava Esports versus Starbucks, and it's on ESL TV. My name was DK Truman. I was joined by the lovely Bowie. Have a wonderful evening, and in case we don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.